Warning, the video you're about to see is see on YouTube, disturbing, viewer discretion is advised. Hello my dear viewer, today I have prepared something special for you. Today's video is all about the Surreal Gaming Iceberg Chart. This video was a project for almost 3 months on my channel. This iceberg features over 400 entries. Yes, you heard me right. So what can you expect to see today? Well, this chart features surreal and obscure games, but the fun doesn't stop there. We're gonna cover some lost and forgotten games and certain gaming categories, but also some wacky developers with very weird concepts of what games should be like. This iceberg has all that your heart desires if you wanna dig deep into the gaming world. There will be beautiful walking sims, but also some very dark and unsettling stuff. You probably already knew how iceberg charts work. Layer 1 is about known games, but with each layer it gets darker and more surreal. There is also an extra layer added, which includes the suggestions of my dear subscribers. So if you wanna partake in things like this and see more videos like this one, remember to subscribe, because somehow 88% of you watching are not subscribed. So let's change that. But a like would also be a huge help. So you know what's coming up in this video. To not waste any time, please make yourself comfortable grab something to drink and snack and let's dive into this rabbit hole together and just one small thing before we start thank you so much for tuning in and i hope you will enjoy this video enjoy We are going to start layer 1 with a game called Yume Niki. It's a game made in the RPG Maker, like some other games found in this list, but this isn't a bad thing at all. The game has no clear objection or narrative, and the player is free to explore and interact with the various dreamscapes that Madatsuki experience. These dreamscapes are often bizarre and unsettling and features various characters and environments that are open to interpretation. And that is one more unique thing about this game. The fact that the game leaves you alone with your thoughts really helps to suck the player into the world and how the visuals blend with the music connects with you even more. The story is based on visual storytelling and the game is free on Steam and it's a great way to start this list. Popular RPG Horror Games This entry is about a huge list of games that are made in the RPG Maker. This is a rabbit hole to dive in if you want, because you will see many bad games, but also many creative minds who put some great games together. Like I said, one of the first games on the list was made in the RPG Maker. The most popular you need to try out if you want to dive into horror games, and you probably are, are definitely Corpse Party because, of course, Omori and definitely check out Dreaming Mary if you didn't. LS Dream Emulator. So this entry has every right to be on the list. At this point, if you're into weird and obscure games, there is no chance you missed this. And if you didn't, let me explain you the Dream Simulator. To understand the game a bit more, we need to talk about the creator Osamu Sato. Now what is special about him? He rejected the idea of games and gaming in general. He was a guy who wanted to create art, mostly based on photography, but he got interested into CD technology. Osamu Sato said, in life there isn't any clear objective on what to do and the game follows the same way, with just sheer randomness, which was put together with the help of the Dream Diary by Asmic Ace, an employee of the studio. To talk about the gameplay, I mean, are you seeing the gameplay? Can you explain it? Well, if no, I need to tell you that my answer is also no. You need to think about Dream Simulator more as an experience as a game, which isn't a bad thing at all. WarioWare Well, WarioWare isn't the most unknown game for sure, but its wacky style helps it to be on the list. 
The game is basically a collection of minigames where you play as Vario and his friends. The game shows you bizarre quick reaction games where you need to quickly find a way to win. And that's the whole gimmick about the game. If you didn't try this series already, I would definitely recommend it because it's very fun in short bursts. Omori. Omori is a game that I talked about on my other list which I mentioned in the beginning. It's a game that lets you dive into a dark world where friendship is important. Even the game is a homage to Earthbound, but it's much more mature oriented. The simple fact that the only way for Mori to wake up from the dream world is to stab himself with a knife tells you something about the game. And it's a game like Yumi Nikki where you play in the real world when you awake, but also in a dark world in your dreams. Even if the game has a cute art style, it deals with heavy stuff like the scene where you attack one girl who attacked your friend with the same knife you used to wake up, but this time it was not a dream. Earthbound Earthbound is beaten to death with reviews until this point. Don't get me wrong, it's definitely a revolutionary game for its time. As it put a twist on classic Dungeons and Dragons formula RPG style of games, it has inspired so many games over the years. And it's a Japanese RPG with American like settings, which was also new for the time. The game didn't take itself too seriously. It resolves around a kid who needs to save the future from an evil race. Well, this is an oversimplification of the plot, obviously. Plus there is a weird conspiracy theory floating around about the end of the game and its representations, which I already talked about in my other icebook chart. Desert Pass Desert Pass is a quite interesting game for what it is. Okay, I'm completely lying, but the backstory is quite interesting. So it's supposed to be a part of the Pen and Teller Smoke and Mirrors game, which was released on the Sega CD in 1995. Pen and Teller was a popular TV show where magicians would come to the show and try to fool Pen and Teller. But back to the game. The objective of the game is simple. It is to drive a bus from Tucson, Arizona to Las Vegas, Nevada. But there is a catch. You need to drive it in real time. Because the maximum speed of the bus is 45 miles per hour or 72 kilometers per hour. To complete the game, you need to play it for 8 hours straight and the best thing is, there is no interaction whatsoever. This is the ultimate test of patience, which I don't recommend at all. Undertale Undertale is a classic game at this point and it's hard to imagine you didn't hear somewhere about it. The game has a unique thing where you can choose whatever you will, fight with your opponent or leave them alone. This affects the whole game around you and how the story will proceed. It is easily seen how it draw inspiration from Earthbound, but it doesn't try to hide it, but embrace it. It loves to play with your morals and how you act with the world around you. With its quirky art style, it is a game worth being on the list. Jazzpunk Jazzpunk is a 2 hour single player game that allows the player to interact with the world in any order they like. What makes this game surreal is how the game feels and looks. I mean the fact you are shipped in a human shaped box into a spy agency where you talk to a guy who gives you certain pills so you can start your first mission is already kind of weird. You will need to collect organs, steal pigeons, fight zombies made of pepperoni in a pizza world. Simply to put it, you will never know what you will account next in this game. Katamari Dimasi Katamari Dimas is a game that I discovered very late in my life. Sadly I didn't grow up with the PlayStation 2 release, but I got it on my PlayStation Vita. Why is Katamari on the list? Well it's simple. The weird and funny Japanese humor is one thing, but the fact you're a small guy who keeps his ball rolling and devouring other objects into his ball to make it more bigger is more fun than it sounds. Trust me. The point of the game is simple, you need to swallow so many objects around you until you become a star. Again, oversimplification of the plot for the sake of the video. Silent Hill series Silent Hill games are an obvious pick for this list. There is so much talk about this series here. There are games that love to play psychological games with you, love to portray the mental state of the player in various creatures you will meet on the way. Often bleeding the real world with the other dimensions leaves the player completely clueless about what is going on. 
Silent Hill knew what it was and it's sad to see we didn't see a new game in the franchise for a long time. I played Silent Hill Rome for a review video on my channel a few years ago where we were still locked up because of the pandemic going on and it just hit home so hard I can't even explain it even being the worst Silent Hill game in the series. And also a thing I like to mention about Silent Hill is how they use Tentis tool in the soundtrack to make the sounds even more obscure. I hope this description of the game will satisfy you. Harvester Harvester is a classic point and click game from the 90s. It's obvious why it's landed on the list. As the game starts, you wake up in a small town called Harvester. You are a 18 years old lad and you lost your memory and need to find out what the heck is going on. Easier said than done. The setting is in the 1950s and you know your name is Steve and you have always be a kidder. After you visit the butcher, the game gets a bit darker and everything feels somewhat weird and out of place. But before you realize it, the game just goes overboard. The game loves to tell you about the role of violence in society. Sex is also taboo in the game, not because it's bad, but mostly because the women in the game will usually hurt their male partners so hard they throw them into hospital beds afterward. Also, the scene where the zombies, excuse me, zombie kids eat their mother is just again a sheer randomness of the game. It is a game that tries to visualize a theme of violence in popular media. It is a game that gets crazier by the minute when it goes off, with a satisfying end to it. Xenoclash Xenoclash is a sort of a fighting game in a FPS, released in 2009 on Steam. It's essentially like a first person virtual fight club game. And please remake this game for VR because it looks kind of fun. So it's a game where the whole action revolves around first person brawling and timing your punches, landing kicks and dodging. And the game is based on the same engine as the Dark Messiahs of Might and Magic. The story is quite complicated to explain, but in few short sentences, you are a young man named Gat who seeks revenge because his family was killed by a tall creature that spawns humans and animal-like human children. Another fun fact of the game is that the development started in the 1990s. Puppet Combo Games Puppet Combo Games isn't a game but a studio that makes obscure games you wanna check out. The games are unsettling and disturbing. A way to describe them would be, they are like PlayStation 1 slash PlayStation 2 games with a 80s VHS style overlay to them. They are a low tribute to the 80s. Many of the games were inspired by old slash movies. One bizarre mention is the Christmas Massacre, where you play as Blood Mania and go on a killing spree with a knife. There is even a point in the game where you go to a school. But thanks to god you didn't have a knife at that point but a goddamn flamethrower instead. Yep, pushing some buttons right there. Well, they have a bunch of games like this, so you can check them out if you want to. And I know I sure will. Post Void Post Void is best described if Hotline Miami and Doom had a love child, minus the awesome soundtrack from both games, at least at first glance. The game is a quick FPS where every shot needs to count because if you don't kill enough enemies your time will run up and you will die. So you need to kill to survive. It has a vivid color palette and a hectic soundtrack. And my opinion is that the game is best at short gaming sessions because if you play this game more than a half an hour you probably get a headache. American McGee's Alice American McGee's Alice is a quite unique game. It has a distinct art style and its story is great, giving you small pieces at a time as you try to connect the dots of what actually is happening. It's a quite morbid game as right at the beginning of the game your parents die. The level design is great, but it has some roughness around the edges and you need to do some research for yourself to get a better experience. I mean Alice in Wonderland is a pretty amazing story and this game has a dark twist on it. I mean, can it get any better? But you need to be warned because there are some control issues you need to face if you want to jump back to play this game. Just a small heads up. Kong Kong 97 
Hong Kong 97 is an unlicensed game from the Famicom from the year 1995 developed by Hepsop. There is apparently also some hard copies of the game where there are like 30 games floating around somewhere and the chance you will see one of them or get is zero to none if they even exist. So there is only one way to play this game and you probably knew which way. What I need to mention is also that the game dropped a f-bomb in the intro. Imagine that in a game from 1994 and on the Super Famicom. It's a parody where Jackie Chan, the cousin of Bruce Lee, wipes out 1.2 million communists. Yeah, the gameplay is also pretty basic as you expected and apparently the game was made in two days. One thing I want to mention also about Hong Kong 97 is the infamous dead screen at the end of the game. It's part of the whole investigation around the world about the corpse we see at the end screen. Some have theorized maybe it belonged to a kickboxer from Poland, but some speculate that the corpse belonged to a man from the Bosnian war which was recorded at the time. And this is a pretty disturbing rabbit hole to dive in if you dare. Deadly Premonition Deadly Premonition is written off as a rip-off of Silent Hill. Some gamers claim this is the best game ever and some say that it's the worst game ever. It can be easily written off as cheesy. But hey, any game which gives you money for shaving beard is a good game, I guess. It's like a B-movie in a game. It's simple, if you love Resi, Silent Hill and the Clock Tower, you will probably enjoy this game. The story follows the injured Francis York Morgan, which is a FBI investigator who gets involved in a case of murder of young girls. He also got a split personality called Zack, with which he talks frequently and openly in front of other people. Plus, of course, the game has many bizarre monsters you need to fight. Pony Island Of course, Pony Island needs to be on this list. In this game you will play as a hard working programmer but also as a cute little pony. It seems like you're playing an arcade game but you get sucked into one. The game loves to play with the fourth wall and as you play along you will discover the sinister mean behind the game. It has some cool vibes going on but I don't wanna spoil too much because this game even if it's a little bit forgotten it's quite interesting and fun. Stanley Parable Stanley Parable can be described as an open-ended walking simulator with multiple endings waiting for you. But it's more than that. It's a game based on a popular Half-Life engine which goes under the name The Source Engine. It is a game made with love and it's well thought out. The game takes you control of Stanley, an office worker. It is a game that can be beaten in 5 minutes if you follow the protocol which are given to you. Or you go to the other route and see what awaits you. The game director stated that the games are just set of decisions you make and this game is just based on that. Binding of Isaac Binding of Isaac confronts you with some depressive stuff. It paints you a picture of you being in a lovely family but then suddenly your parents are getting divorced and you are left alone with your mother. As time passes by you saw that your mother is acting strange. One day after your mother watches the religious channel a voice speaks to her and it said she needs to purify you. Taking away everything in your possession to top it all off even your clothes and your left naked. The second time the voice speaks to her telling her there is only one true way to purify you and that's by killing you. Your mother goes to the kitchen and takes a knife and starts pursuing you around the house. Then you crawl into a small chest in your room and that's where many different theories start to pop up of what actually happened. The creator of this game also suffered abuse as a child and this is a way how he channeled his thoughts into making this game. It is a game that addresses abuse and religious content and it's definitely a game you need to try out if you didn't play it. Pikmin Why Pikmin is on the list is a good question. But it's unfair to skip it, so let's talk about it. Pikmin is made by the man himself, Shigeru Miyamoto, and the game has 5 sequels. Pikmin isn't a horror game, but rather a real time strategy game, sort of. Sadly I didn't play Pikmin, but it reminded me of a similar game this time, which is called Overlord, found on PC and Xbox 360. The basic premise of Pikmin, like in Overlord, is that you have different types of Pikmins, so you can use them to perform different tasks for you, so you can finish the mission and move on. Tomodachi Life 
Tomodachi Life is a social simulation video game developed by Nintendo that I didn't experience at all. It was released on the Nintendo 3DS. The game takes advantage of the Miis, in which you can create your custom character and interact with other characters online. Again, maybe like Pikmin, it is not the best pick for the list, but sure, I'm up for everything. But if I would take a wild guess why this game is on the list, it's probably because you can create and do some wacky stuff with the game. Nobi Nobi Boy Nobi Nobi Boy is a PlayStation 3 game which was created by the Katamari creator Kaita Takashi. This game was made as an exclusive title for the PlayStation Network. Nobi actually means stretch in Japanese, but as far as I understand it can also mean carefree. The game features the distinct art style of Katamari which is expected. It has some weird control settings, it's definitely a weird game but it wasn't praised so much as Katamari, mostly because of the control scheme. There isn't much to talk about here, so let's jump to the entry number 25. Delta Rune. The entry 25 on our list is the game called Delta Rune. It is the game behind the studio from Undertale and it follows a similar fashion. The world of Deltarune is like the world of Undertale, a pretty weird world. And it's supposed to be the parallel world to Undertale. It's definitely sticking to the same art style which isn't a bad thing at all. You will see various interesting looking characters on your adventure. The game is pretty unpredictable and will confuse you from time to time. But the game also has its dark side. Simply to put, if you love Undertale, this is the next step. Golden Light Golden Light is messed up and the best explanation of the game is that you are diving into an obscure meat world. The intro says that you are with your girlfriend called She and after you wanna pick up a rose as a present for her, she got sucked into a huge hole like me thing looking like a, well, yes. As you walk into the gut and that's how the first level is called, you will slowly start to realize that everything around you is made from meat. The story will also slowly reveal the relationship with she. While you enjoy the cutscenes and the story part, you will also have other things to do, and that is to kill a whole bunch of weird looking creatures. However, this game is pretty decent as I saw, and it's a pretty good game if you wanna dive deeper. There are weapons, upgrades and all that good stuff. Lisa series. Lisa series has three games in the main entry and I already talked about one of them and that's the Lisa Painful. It's a post-apocalyptic game per se where in a weird flash all the women in the world disappear. This led that all men who were left alone would turn to violent behavior. They found a substance that if they overdose on it would turn them into horrific creatures. But your character suddenly finds in the middle of nowhere a little girl. Because he's afraid of what would happen to the girl if the other sees them. He gives her shelter and protects her despite he is also suffering from the substance addiction. But sadly she was taken away from him and he would do everything he can to get her back. The game is also pretty sad but also disturbing in some parts. Passat. Passat is a weird looking and forgotten game from 2005. It's an AI text based game. The game has a weird settings where you are set in an apartment with a couple. Well ok that's not the weird thing, but what is, is how the weird couple is looking at you the whole time and waiting for you to start writing something so you can interact with them. Think about the game as a beta chat GPT game with a predetermined path. It was a free game and still is and you can download it if you feel lonely and you got bored with chat GPT. Super liminal. If you wanna blow your mind but in a good way, it's a puzzle game which plays with reality. You're a patient which participate in a dream therapy program. And I don't wanna even start how dreams sometimes make no sense. Well, this game doesn't go overboard with this idea, but still. The gameplay is based around perception of objects and how you can interact with them. Gamers who play Portal and Stanley Parable will connect the dots fast and see how this game was inspired by it. Some objects, if you throw them at your feet, will become smaller so you can use them in a way to progress the level, and vice versa. It's a short and interesting game. Red Bow. 
Brand Bow is a pretty interesting game. The name of the title is also the name of your female protagonist, which is a young girl. At the beginning of the game, it takes immediately a dark twist as the girl discovers her parents were sliced up into tiny pieces by a cult. Because of that, she ends up in a mental institution, because of obvious reasons. After she's been hospitalized, she has only one wish, and that's to go back to her granny and be at peace and to recover from the terrible things she witnesses. But easier said than done. Because the doctor simply disagrees with her and the only way he thinks she can heal is to take pills. Because friend is suffering from the pressure and she was yeah. After taking the pills, the world takes an even weirder and darker twist. The game won't tell you if the things the young girl witnesses are the side effects of the pills or actually how she sees the world because of her illness. The only way to find the truth is to talk to a demons, like always. Because talking to them will reveal the truth. But beware, because the same demon will tell you that you need to end it all to be finally happy. Antichamber Now Antichamber is a game that demands something from you that I don't have much, and that's patience. It's a puzzle game about logic and an open mind and your love for experimentation. Also, you're dropped into the game without a tutorial, so you need to figure out stuff for yourself. Antichamber doesn't waste time before presenting you with mind-boggling puzzles. So if this sounds fun to you, hey, you found a game for a good pastime. The game has really charm, and it feels rewarding after you solve the puzzles. But this isn't everybody's cup of tea. The strategic use of visuals in Antichamber encourages exploration and guides the player through the mind-bending puzzles. Despite the game is predominantly black and white in aesthetics, the game clearly employs bursts of color to provide hints and tips on how to progress. Why is it on the list? Well, are you looking at the gameplay? Does it need more explanation? It's a trippy game with good puzzles and good soundtrack. Limbo Limbo is a master of its art and knows how to use visuals and sounds to present us a story without words. In Limbo you're playing as a small young boy. The game is pretty dark in tone and definitely deserves a spotlight on this list. Throughout the eyes of a kid the whole world looks different and that's one of the things Limbo is trying to show us. You need to watch every step you take because there are many scary and disturbing things awaiting you that will rip you to shreds and torn you apart if you're not careful. There are also many crazy theories about the small worms that can be found in Limbo and how the game Limbo is connected with the game inside, but I leave that for another video. Layer 2 Space Funeral Starting this layer with a RPG from 2003, made again in the RPG Maker. Maybe not the prettiest game out there, but it's disturbing. And that counts also, am I right? Play as Phil, a boy wearing pajamas for whatever reason and you're crying all the time. Because the world is suddenly turned into a rotten and a ruined version of the normal world, he tries to fix the situation. The game features standard RPG fights and it has some wacky dialogue. So be prepared for some weird NPC conversations. Because there isn't too much to talk about here, let's go to the next entry. Juice Galaxy Juice Galaxy is a total trip. So you're a guy made of juice in a juice galaxy and you need to collect juice. Yeah, everything in the juice galaxy revolves around juice. Weird, I know. Even weirder is your character and his proportions. But the game is also weird in the same way. The plot is all over the place, but that's how just the game is. Don't expect anything too serious here. And also the game has many characters that can be real nightmare fuel. It is really hard to describe this game, but I'm trying, okay? Juice. Cruelty Squad. Imagine you go fishing, but instead of choosing a lake or a river, you go to the sewers. You sell to gain money to invest in a stock market. Do you think this could work as a plot for a game? Well, that's not the only plot of the game, but hey. There are a few more things to do in this game. It's like Hitman meets Deus Ex. You are a Hitman for a squad. It is an unforgiving game that loves to mess with the player and loves to put dead traps all over the place. Graphically, well, it's hard to describe. 
I will quote the YouTuber G-Man Lives on this and say that the game looks like your PC didn't properly load your textures. I mean you can also write the graphics off as aesthetic or just lazy. It's for you to decide. But that's Cruelty Squad in short. Megami Tensei 1987 Megami Tensei is a game from Atlus from way back. We are talking about 1987. If you're not familiar with Atlas, they're the studio behind the Persona series, which is quite popular today. This game is a bizarre dungeon crawl with elements like Pokemon, where you can catch demons by pursuing them to join your party. The story is a classic Shin Megami Tensei story where a bunch of Japanese high school students join forces to fight Lucifer. You will meet and fight weird characters along your way in an old labyrinth. It's definitely forgotten and buried under so many games that they have released over the years, like for example the Persona series, Devil Summoner and so on. The Neverhood. So The Neverhood is a point and click adventure game published by Dreamworld Interactive. It is a clay animation and ugh, I hate clay animation, I don't know why, it grosses me out. I know many people love it. And that's also why this game is quite popular despite its low sales number because everything in the game was done with clay animations which I still respect in some way. The Neverhood follows the adventure of Clayman, I know, how original, who wakes up in a strange clay animation world called the Neverhood with no memory of his past. He discovers that he is the chosen one and must save the Neverhood from the evil clock. Who has turned against its inhabitants. To stop Clog, Clayman must solve puzzles, uncover the secrets of his own identity and the history of the neighborhood. I'm scared. This is an indie game released in 2013 and it's by some considered a virus, because the game has some cryptic nature to it and in which the game breaks the fourth wall and you need to move some files on your desktop to progress. Even all this, before you begin, the game even warns you that it will try to trick you. It's a game that has low poly aesthetics and it's a puzzle game where the player wakes up with no plot to start. The only thing you know is that you need to find a way out of your room. It's a game that succeeds in making a good horror atmosphere without screams and cheap jump scares. Walking Simulators Dreamwalkers Again this entry on this list is like on the previous video, a category of games. This type of games doesn't have any deeper gameplay segment. And if they do, then the gameplay besides walking of course would be solving puzzles and mysteries. There are many great walking simulators out there. I started only a few months ago the vanishing of Ethan Carter and I was amazed how the game was so good and why I waited until 2023 to try this game out. To mention a few more walking simulators for you to try it out. Besides the version of Eden Carter, I would recommend Remains of Eden Finch, The Unfinished and definitely Soma. Sit and Spin Adventure 1 and 2 So number 10 is a bizarre point and click adventure game. So in the game you are sit and spin. Developer of the game stated that everything he used in the game was ripped off from the internet and compiled to make this game. It was more an experiment than a real game. But the second game builds and upgrades on the first game. The developer also needed 3 months to finish this game. Well, a quite bizarre game and we are only on the second tier of the iceberg. Worlds.com This is a game slash chat room that was launched in 1995. It plays like an early Doom game but without any weapons or anything else actually. The game is quite popular and it gets some attention over the years. Not because of the weird looks, but because of the sinister nature. Because the game got some really weird stuff going on. Like there is some conspiracy theories about cult members that would gather in the game. And also other questionable people to regroup and make plans. It's kind of an interesting rabbit hole to dive in honestly. If you're interested into this topic, I would also like to make a video about this. Just comment down below and I will try to make it happen. Toilet in Wonderland We had Alice in Wonderland and why not to have Toilet in Wonderland? Again, a RPG maker game. Well, now here is a game with a great plot. Okay, please bear with me, okay? So the game follows a young girl who has a constipation and you need to find laxatives. 
These are indeed. Some of the characters will be weird looking crabs and fish, but the highlight besides the toilet humor, pun intended, is how you are at one point locked up in a house and you're chased by Super Mario for some reason. Please, go play the game and see the shenanigans for yourself. Yutah not Otari is a horror based game again in the RPG maker. Because the game is only Japanese, it is hard to describe it. From the looks, you play a black haired girl in a haunted building. I found out that the maker of the game was a high school student at the time, which is kind of impressive. And through digging through the comments on the Japanese side, the people will generally talk good things about the game. I would like to give you more information about this, but sadly I hit a wall. I also know there is an English patch in making, but I don't know if it's complete. Soda Drinker Pro Now this is a surreal game. Like the name says, it's a game about drinking soda, but not only that, it claims to be the most advanced soda drinking simulation ever. After the first demo was released and made in 5 days, it gained traction in the Soda Lover Gathering. In the game you play with your mouse and keyboard to drink soda. There are different types of soda in the game and you need to watch out for two things. First, be careful that your soda meter doesn't go too low. Second, you need to bring the soda to your mouth before drinking. The game even features 100 levels about drinking soda. You will walk around and see some bizarre worlds while you're drinking soda. It is what it is. Revenge of the Sunfish this game was quite big like over 10 years ago. It's a game created by a guy named Jay Byzinski, and I probably butchered that name, which was released in April 2007, and it gained cult like following since then. The game was made in Microsoft Paint, but also to note the game was partially lost due to a hard drive malfunction, and the game which is currently online is just a fraction of the real game. The game is a mix of various games like puzzles, shoot em ups and so on. Also to progress the level you don't need actually to beat the level. Because if you die it will take you to the next level and it is considered a feature by the developer. This game is one of those bizarre games that are so bad they end up being good. As far as I've seen it, it's pretty weird and annoying sometimes. The only reason why somebody would play this is probably because they are curious about what the hell is gonna come up next. Everhood Finally a bizarre game which is also good. Everhood can be considered an adventure rhythm game. The game is pretty lengthy and filled with dozens of weird characters. The whole game is set in a psychedelic dream world and of course it doesn't lack in the most important aspect of the game and that's the music. It features a really great soundtrack which will keep the game but also the core gameplay going. In the game you take the role of Red, a wooden doll who is on a quest to retrieve his stolen arm from the golden pig. This makes perfect sense, am I right? What is important that the game throws you into bizarre scenarios and it has a sense of humor. And the gameplay is quite interesting and progressive over the time to give you a proper challenge. A charming indie game indeed. Hype on Space Outlaw This is a game that lets you explore something which some of you already experienced in the 1990s. And that's the internet. It is set in an alternative reality which the users can access in their sleep via electronic headband. Because we are talking of the 1990s, say welcome to neon fonts, weird music and low quality GIFs. And of course crude animations. Just perfect. But this is not a simulation that lets you explore an almost now ancient form of the internet, but rather a game where you work for a company called Merchantsoft and you need to browse the internet and report to your company. You will hunt down for illegal stuff, copyrighted material and viruses. But besides that you will also gain money which can be used to buy various things and goodies for your desktop, from stickers, wallpapers to programs. If you had the pleasure to explore the late 90s internet, you need to try this game out, trust me. Middens This is a game made in 2013. You play as a guy simply named Nomad, who flees to another dimension because his culture dies due to a simulation, and you'll end up in a rift. It's a dimension 
were all outcast land up after they escape their dimensions but also take a chunk of their dimensions with them to the rift. So the whole dimension of the rift looks very surreal. It's a chaotic mishmash of things. Some parts look like taken from old classical paintings, others resemble old video game sprites and so on. Also I forgot to mention that the game is made in RPG Maker and you will probably know how the gameplay looks like. The game is definitely not for everyone, it is more a profound dream and an experience than a game. Human Nikki fan games. This touches on the previous layer where we talk about Human Nikki and this entry is all about the games that continue on the story of Human Nikki or expand it and some of them do a new take on the game. Some of those games are Dot Flow and 2KKI. Rep M. Heru. Again, this is a game made in the RPG Maker from 1998, created by Makoto Yataoni. It's a game based on an Egyptian Book of the Dead. So the title of the game means the Book of the Dead for the Prisoners. The story of the game follows the professor Tsehida, a leading expert in archaeology, who goes into an unknown lower levels of the Great Pyramid of Giza with his assistant Koji Korua. They soon realize that the underground ruins are full of death traps. Inside the pyramid, one by one, the members of the group become subject to Kafulu's punishment for their faults. But the professor insists on heading deeper into the complex, despite knowing the fatal dangers of the environment. It's a graphic game that focuses more on the story and puzzles than on the combat. It's definitely worth trying out. Also, I think I failed to mention is in the game, you will need to decide which of your party is worth saving. So you will have also moral choices in the game. Off. This game was posted on a French RPG Maker website in 2008. The game did get a fan translation over the years to be more available for the public. The game is pretty standard as it goes. You're a guy in a baseball uniform, but here is the catch. You're on a mission to purify the world. You will need to access four zones which are guarded by specters and you need to kill them to proceed. There are puzzles in the game that are also not too complicated, but provide joy to solve them. And we can say some of them are pretty creative. Also, the game features a somewhat psychedelic soundtrack that allows to give you hints through whispers. Yuppie Psycho. The next one on this list is quite interesting game. It's a 2D survival horror game. You play as Brian Pasternak, a young man from the suburbs who's been given a chance to make a name for himself in a big city. A story that feels at home to some of us. Brian lives in a not so great version of the 1990s, but he suddenly gets a way out. Or maybe not. You see, he gets a mysterious letter where he was invited to work for a company known as the Sintra Corp. But before you know, the whole story gets another dark twist. The game reveals you need to find and kill a witch, because it's your first day at work and you try to keep this a secret from your other co-workers. And you start the game with a hunt. The game has a 90s pixel art style, limited saves and a great vibe. And it's a solid game overall. Bear Band. This is a first person game set in a cyberpunk city. And you're an alien. The game features also low res graphics. It's pretty simple, there isn't much going on, like shooting or complicated puzzles to solve. It is like a walking simulator, let's say. The alien city which you discover is full of life and odd stuff to explore. There is something to the simple design of this game which makes it an interesting game. It is a simple free game you can enjoy if you want. Sonic Dream Collection This is an unofficial game released in 2015. The backstory was that this collection compiles with the unfinished minigames from the original games. First, there was a rumor that the game was made by a small studio that worked for a Dreamcast port, but it was later revealed that was not true. The game was developed by Arcane Kids, which are known for copyright infringement. The collection is split into three parts. Make My Sonic 96, Eggman Origin 97, Sonic Movie Maker 98, and finally 
my roommate Sonic99. Make My Sonic is a parody of the Sonic history and fandom, but the games will throw you into all sort of stuff from seeing Sonic in diapers, under a car, but also a scene where you need to perform certain acts on Sonic. Plus there is also a part where Sonic is giving birth. There are also a scene where a group of Sonics are partaking in certain acts and you need to film them. The third game is also a VR simulation where you chill with Sonic in your apartment. And before you know it, things get heated. The game is not only weird and surreal, but also pretty disturbing. No wonder it's on the list. This game is a great parody of Sonic in general. Seaman. 25 on the list is the iconic Seaman. It's a game released for the Sega Dreamcast and the game gained a cult-like following over the time. Because the game uses a microphone that attaches to the Dreamcast controller, it allows you to speak with the Seaman. The game is quite bizarre. It's it is a game like Tamagotchi, so to say, but hold up, it gets much more bizarre. Seaman is actually a fish with a human face. The game has a crazy backstory about species and how the seamen came from Egypt and it has also something to do with pharaohs. But I won't bother with that too much. What is important is that seamen is quite rude and has dark humor. The game is quite funny actually but also hideous at the same time. The Battle Cats The Battle Cats is a game released for the iOS. It's a tower defense game. In the game you have a cat base that you need to defend. Over the time you play you will gain new cats which can be used to help you in your quest to defend your base. Let's move to the next one please. Hylix Was released in 2015. This game features clay animations, which this time I somehow don't dislike. What you need to know the only normal thing about this game is your name. You take the role of Wayne, a human-like character with big horns. The gameplay is like a standard RPG game, but what bizarre is, aside from the art style, is that the NPC dialogue is randomly generated. The game also shifts to a first-person view when you're in a battle. I mean if you're looking at the footage, it looks unique and bizarre, like a trip version of games like Earthbound and Dragon Quest. The great thing is that the game doesn't hold your hand and you're immersed in an acid-like world. You're simply following your instincts and you're seeing how the story unfolds. No delivery. This is a pizza delivery simulation game set in a RPG settings, let's say, where you need to deliver pizzas so you can make a few bucks on the side. But to get even a few more bucks, you accept the night shift, where you meet all sorts of crazy characters. The game is a roguelike game and features a dungeon-like system to it. As you progress through the map, there are also places you shouldn't go, and that's where the dungeon part comes in, where you encounter enemies, which you need to fight. Mega Man Sprite Game The next game got released as an unofficial game made in the RPG Maker and it follows the story about Mega Man and Zero. You are on an adventure to obtain magical b-balls and mystical items that will grant a wish when you obtain them. A weird thing about the game that all characters almost feature a weird and surprised facial expression. There isn't any real plot and that's not the reason why you won't play this. To talk about more about the game, you attack people with your punches and I know it's very really original for a game to do that, but you can also hit people with basketballs. You will find mountains, sand and so on. Well, you get the idea of the game, I hope. Johnny series The Johnny series featured 21 games in the franchise. At least that's what the wiki page says which was linked in the iceberg chart. I tried to dig up some gameplay or something actually about the game, but every time I tried to google Johnny on YouTube, I ended up only seeing videos from a great YouTuber called Some Call Me Johnny. I would definitely recommend checking out his channel if you're into gaming. But back to the game, I only saw that the game has bad graphics and bad gameplay, at least that's what the iceberg creator hinted on the iceberg chart. Total Distortion This game dates back to an era that used full motion videos. 
taking place in an alternative historical setting where mystery devices have suddenly appeared on Earth that scientists have found to be useful to teleporters. It's a game where you need to make music videos. Also a thing you need to watch out for is your dreams. Because if you have a nightmare and you fail to win a minigame, you will lose mental skills. It's basically an MTV video creator. It's a crazy game, which has an alien story tied to the plot and the game often reference pop culture. Gregory Horror Show This is a game I wanted to check out for quite some time. And now it pops up on the iceberg, so let's talk about it. This is a mysterious survival game made by Namco in 2003 for the PlayStation 2. It is based on a show with the same name. You need to explore a haunted house which is filled with some monsters. It looks like a kid-friendly version of Silent Hill at first glance. And I think this is even more disturbing. You will need to learn about the backstory and why are you in the hotel and why are the creatures there. You will need to find the souls to help some creatures to progress. If the player is caught, the mental state of the player lowers and it ends up in a FMV where the player watches a video of himself being caught. Over the time, there will be more and more guests in the house. Some will be hostile, but some will give you hits on how to obtain the other souls. So it's a business RPG. Again, RPG Maker game, which is black and white and hand drawn, created in 2016. The game is a parody of real life corporate life, where you can be punished even if you don't want a certain item be advertised to you. The game also features your standard RPG Maker fights. The bizarre thing about the game is how the NPCs usually don't possess any facial expressions but are just blank and combined with the black and white art style it gives you a really depressive look at the world. But that's the point the game tries to push I guess. Broken Reality This is a game like Second Life. It's a virtual chat room game set in an age of 2045. It has a distinct 90s nostalgic look to it with vaporwave aesthetics. The game nailed the aesthetics and the vibe perfectly in my opinion. It's a game about you trying to reach fame and get as many likes as you can. So as we're already talking about likes, I hope you smash that like button under the video. Thank you very much. But back to the game. The game tries to show you a broken reality in which we are living today and believe it's the real world. The whole game is based on likes and completing missions to get likes. They can be also found on the ground and hidden away. And you will use them for basically anything in the game. But the game starts asking a question. Are the things you are doing for the likes even worth it? Well, it's a game you want to give it a go, trust me. Stray Cat Crossing The game follows a story about a girl who ends up in a house to find her lost scarf. After she led her scarf to a small girl who took off and went to a haunted looking house. Basically after you enter the house you will find very very characters bound to the house. And many other strange things will happen. The game is about dealing with trauma. Again, it's more like experiments than a real game. The game has a special ending which can be annoying to someone because it's based on repetition but because it tries to prove a point and show you what the game is really about. Plus, it's a very short game and you can beat it around 2 hours. Jinjiva Again, we are diving into a surreal world. It's created by the same creator that made Middens. It is set in the same settings as that game. It has a true outer world design and odd writing. You play as Jinjiva, a young woman with an old fashioned clock winding key for its head, who is essentially enslaved automat factory worker. The story begins with the Holy Mother Most High requesting your presence. When you speak to her, she accuses you of slacking off at your work and has you thrown into prison. But the Chatter Teeth suddenly appears and helps you to escape. And now you are on the run from the evil corporate executives. Anna Dream 
Dream Barbecue is an upcoming episode and interactive video game in the ANR series. It's considered the beginning of a new season of the series. And this also marks the beginning of the new season for the game. Anna is a Peruvian animated series created by Joel Gurel. The game features both 2D and 3D animation, forming a unique world that is inhabited by weird characters. And it is just like the series. Perfect Vermin This is a short indie horror game released in 2020. You got a sledgehammer and you need to destroy things in our office. But why? Well, you have no time, you need to start smashing. After you start smashing things around, you realize that the things you smash are made of blood and organs. And you will see a reporter which will talk to you after every level is completed. But also, after every level is completed, and the rooms are also more weirder, the game has a pretty creepy vibe going on. And the game starts showing a bunch of non-smoking signs and the reporter is then suddenly completely deformed and you land up then in a doctor's office. But I wanna stop it here because I don't wanna spoil the final twist in the game for you, so you can enjoy it for yourself. Plug and Play This is an interactive animation game created by Michael Frey in 2015. The game will let you play as plugs, where the plugs are basically human heads. It's quite bizarre and the game has definitely creepy music. I don't know what to think about the game, but hey, that's what you get in this iceberg chart, I guess. Remediation, a dream emulator demo. It is clear from where this game draws inspiration. Of course, the LSD dream emulator from the PlayStation 1. It's a walking emulator where you find yourself in a dream world or a dreamlike state. And it's much like LSD emulator, you will walk through some weird levels. The game is exploration through spaces, some inspired by real dreams, all with the ambition of creating a sense of loneliness. Well, what do I need to say more about this game? It is embracing dreams from a simple state of mind, and it is what it is, I guess. 21. The World This game and the previous one on the list have the same inspiration. The World is a surreal exploration game based on the creator's dream journal which he kept for years apparently. The creator wants to disturb, calm, but also shock the player. The beginning of the game is set in a bedroom, where you have few masks mounted on the wall and one of them is that from the predator, for whatever reason. And then you suddenly go to a dream state and from there all boundaries of dreams and reality mix together. I mean it has a scene on a dance floor filled with dancing frogs and I Animal Girl and J-Pop. What do you need more in your life? Think about it. Damashi A spiritual journey into the pit of all that is vile and evil. At least this is the comment from the game. Again, it's an indie game and of course a horror game. The game starts and throws you in with no warnings, where you meet a godlike creature that tells you you need to cleanse his corrupted temple. Then the game switches to a puzzle platformer and you start your adventure. The game loves to play tricks on you and loves to play with the music because it doesn't give you hints about what's gonna happen and the game tries to keep you on the edge the whole time. M State The game features that art style that everybody tries to recreate and that's the classic PlayStation 1 style of graphics. So what's your deal in the game? Well, you play a guy working for a big company in a big city. Pretty interesting, am I right? But you're probably interested some more about the game. So after you meet the owner, Amstein, well, you will see how he has a dark secret. And before you know it, you find out that he wants you to be the next victim for his sacrifice in his cult rituals. The game has also a few endings you can explore and it's a pretty short game. Insomnia It is another walking simulator game. It has a Silent Hill vibe to it. There are also 5 dreams where you experience 5 different theme nightmares. Each nightmare has its own chapter and some are much more horrifying than the other. If you don't have enough of your nightmares, here is a simple way to explore 5 more. I mean, why not? A quote for the game goes like this. 
we all experience it, some frequently, some rarely, some for the better, some for the worse. Neko Yume Neko Yume is a haunted PlayStation 1 game themed ambient exploration game. Now, why is this game a bit different than the others we already saw on this list? Well, it has cats in it. That counts for something. The game has also a day and night cycle and often the areas you already visited aren't the same way they used to be. And I need to say that the cats in the game can be disturbing. The game is also like Insomnia, a part of the haunted PlayStation 1 demo disc. And I hope I don't need to explain what are demo discs. Neko Yume is a demo game. Well, if you wanna explore a bizarre cat filled dream world, here we go. You left me. You wake up in a different world. You have until night time to escape. Why are you here? You forgot something important. But what? Remember before it's too late and you're lost forever. You Left Me is a game that deals with loneliness and loss. The game is pretty serious. There are some real thoughts put into this game. You Left Me is a beautiful artistic game that explores the effect that losing a loved one has on a person. It is easily seen how care and thought were put into this game and definitely it's worth checking out. Tulip. This little PlayStation 2 game is an adventure game developed by Punchline and released in 2002 in Japan, but later also ported to America in 2007. Tulip puts the player into a role of a young man who just moved to a new town and his neighbor next door is a girl of his dreams. Although she wants nothing to do with him due to his family's poor economic status, he decides to write her a heartfelt love letter. When the letter is stolen, it is up to you to travel around the village and retrieve all of the pieces. The gameplay of Cholip revolves around improving the player's reputation with the citizens in order to access all parts of the town. To do this, the player must impress each member of the community and then kiss them for some reason. Why the game is so real, I'm not quite sure, but hey, it's on the list. Cosmo D Games Cosmo D is a developer that makes bizarre games. Some of the games are Betray at the Club Low, Saturn V and the Norwood Suite. They're mostly musically driven adventure games. And sometimes they're looking like cheap Unity games. Also, you can check out how the developer made the games on YouTube. There is a comp I mean, if you're interested in the game, how they work internally. The channel is called Cosmo Triple D. And plus you can enjoy his awesome soundtrack some more. Okay, normal. Again, this is a game that has that low poly PlayStation 1 style. And it does it quite well. It has also a touch of vaporware and glitch art aesthetics. It is a weird adventure dreamlike game. It starts slow, but you feel that something sinister is hidden in the game. There are also mazes where you sometimes go in a loop and you end up in a dead end. So you never know if the game is messing with you or not. Sludge Life This one, yet again, is a surreal game where you are set on an island full of junk pollution. It is an exploration game, where you take a role of a character named Ghost who is a graffiti artist. You will meet many weird characters on the island and that's also a way how you interact with the story because there isn't a real quest to follow. The game also focuses on how big companies influence the island, but it's said not diving too deep in this theme. It's an exploration game where you need to take your 100 ghost tags over the island and hear what the NPCs have to say, without ever covering the topic of pollution in any serious way. Monument Valley We are looking at the game from the year 2014. This is a quite interesting game with an amazing art style. It has a good presentation combined with good puzzles. It is a pretty minimalistic in art style and it was a joy to look at. The game was released on the iOS. The puzzles are mostly based on optical illusions and it has an isometric view. And if it's surreal, I will let you to decide. Mario 64 Build 3313 This is a ROM hack also called Super Mario Internal Plexus. 
made by Chris Brutal Aggression and his dev team. This is one of the biggest ROM hacks out there. They are still updating this game. The ROM hack is based on a theory of how the Mario brothers are stuck in the castle and how the castle is a version of its own entity which is a brain that doesn't let Mario brothers out of the castle. The ROM hack is based on the beta release of the Mario 64 game and you have many things to discover and also Luigi is featured in this version of the game. Most of the ROM hack is based on early builds of the game which didn't land in the final release so some of the levels are prototypes but some are also completely new levels made by the team using those files. The ROM is also known for its confusing progressive nature of the game. Strangeland The game is a point and click adventure game from 2021. The game is set in a weird carnivore world which is floating into an unknown void. The game has body grotesque imagery in the game, from body mutilation and so on. But even if the game is disturbing, the game still manages to prove a story behind everything that it shows to you. The game will have you to resolve issues for characters you meet along the way, mostly based on puzzles. The game has an odd music which helps to connect with the world. Even if the game can be a drag sometimes, it's overall a good game. Ethering Games The games are made by an Estonian indie developer. There are 5 games in total and the game features solid writing and good atmosphere and overall the games are met with good criticism by the fans. Who is Lila? Do you know who is Lila? Lila is a game. It's a horror game. So how do you play this game? Well, you need to drive facial expressions on your character and that's your way how you interact in the game. It's a quite interesting concept and the game features a odd style but I adore it. And when you start making expression the game tends to be something disturbing. It's quite a bizarre game which definitely deserves a place on this iceberg. Anodyne Was originally released in 2013 for the PC. The game has an obvious influence from the early Legend of Zelda games and the game doesn't try to hide it but more embrace it. The game lets you explore so quite interesting settings as the world you explore is set in a character's subconscious which leads the player to explore the surreal world. In the game you take a role of the character named Young and your weapon of choice is a broom. Basically, you are the chosen one and you need to protect the land from the darkness. It's a quite cute game, but it gets dark sometimes. The game has some flaws here and there, mostly because of the writing and the level designs. But if you think you'll see a game that has Zelda standards here, you won't. Just to make it clear. Bad Mojo This is a game that sits way too long on my shelf just waiting to be played because I heard some interesting things about it. So Bad Mojo is also described as a roach simulation game. The game is from 1996. You play as a metamorphosized version of Roger Sams. The guy did something bad and you transform into a roach so you need to help him to restore his memory while avoiding different creatures that want to kill you and you will also need to face various obstacles. The game is quite disturbing at times, just to be warned, and if you hate bugs, I mean this isn't probably the best game to play. Death Flush So what is Death Flush? Oh boy. Well, you take a control of a guy named Ronnie, who witnesses the murder of his grandpa. Now comes the bizarre part, because you witnesses how your grandpa died by having a piss, you develop a phobia of going to the toilet. And the one time you did use the toilet in the game, you were kidnapped by the same killer that killed your grandpa and he drags you into the toilet with him. This is totally bonkers but hey that's the plot of the game. You will play as Ronnie's girlfriend but also him to try to rescue or escape the killer. Bizarre indeed if you ask me but the game is fun. Siphonopolis Well how to describe Siphonopolis? Does anyone remember Echo the Dolphin? Well, this is the rotten counterpart to that game. The game is sometimes hard to look at because of the art style, which can be off-putting to some of you. 
but it managed to pull off that rotten art style. It has a really dark and gritty atmosphere because of it. It is a 2D game where you use your mouse to control the small bird-like creature and shoot and fight your way through the levels. What is also amazing about the game is the atmospheric music in it. It really gives you an extra layer of depth and the game is fairly cheap if you want to try it out. Lost in Vivo Lost in Vivo is something you need to try out if you enjoy the Silent Hill series. So this is a game like Silent Hill but in a first person view. The game was revealed in 2018 and you have a cute dog and that makes it a immediate 10 of a 10 game. Good dog, good game. Ok, jokes aside. The game sets you into the shoes of a guy who lost his beloved pet in the sewers and you need to of course find it. To give the game a certain edge, you are suffering from claustrophobia. Claustrophobia is, for you who don't know, a fear of small and closed rooms. The game will confront you with trauma and dealing with problems. It's a FPS game and the music will remind you of Silent Hill, especially Silent Hill 2. I will probably dive into this game when I get some extra time on my hands. I have no mouth, but I must scream. Besides bad mode on my shelf lies this gem of a game, with probably the most disturbing title on my whole gaming shelf. This is a game that is really hard to describe into a few sentences, and I feel if I do so, I will do it no honor. And I also wanted to dedicate a whole video about this game, even though I didn't play it actually but only research it. It is based on a theory of what if. What if something happens? This is a game based off a book of the same name. It tells a story of 5 surviving humans after a world war 3 destroyed all of humankind. But there is a MI, Elliot Master Computer, because the MI has no purpose because the humans destroyed everything, he uses them for his games. From eating rotting food, sleep deprivation and so on. To not continue and make this a review of the game, I will stop here. And at some later point in time, I will try to dedicate a video about this game, if you want to hear me to talk about the game some more. Bad day on the midway. This game is about a carnival. Of course, it's a horror game, but also a point and click adventure game. The theme park is named The Midway. You will play as a kid, but also you will take control of other characters so you can view the story from their eyes. It's a pretty bizarre game, and it has some German ideologies spring here and there, just to warn you. You'll definitely see many misfits and creeps here, with bizarre stories combined with a style and presentation that is quite interesting. Plus the game is short and it has multiple routes to play this game to have different endings. Illbleed Illbleed is a survival horror game developed by Crazy Games and released from the Dreamcast in 2001. The game follows Eriko Christie, a high school student exploring a horror-themed amusement park to find his missing friends. This game is quite weird because you will have 5 different meters and it's pretty confusing. You need to watch out for your hard meter and watch out your other meters don't go up because if you get too scared you can die from a stroke basically. <laughs> But this is a pretty quirky and weird game so to say. Employee of the month. Again, one more low poly focus game with monsters in it. The publisher of this game is Project Skeletons. The game is both funny and scary at the same time. So you're working in a grocery store and you need to restock DVDs and the toilet paper. And of course clean the whole place. You will do various so to say puzzles to progress and weird shenanigans will happen throughout the game. But the most important thing is that the game doesn't take itself too seriously. And it's a pretty short game. Killer 7 And finally the last game on the second layer is a game from 2005. Killer 7 has a bizarre art style. It looks something you can write up as cheap. But the game is quite deep if you dig under the surface. It dives into political manipulation and so on. It is set in an alternative reality where all world conflicts are resolved. The game follows the adventures of the Killer 7, a group of skilled assassins led by a man named Harman Smith. These assassins work for the US government and take on dangerous missions. As they carry out their assignments, 
They stumble upon a thrilling conspiracy involving Japanese role in American politics. The game features a mix of first-person shooting and unique controls, creating captive gameplay experiments. It's a game not for everyone, that's for sure. But if this sounds interesting to you, you can give it a go. There is also a remaster of this game, which was released a few years ago. Mario The Music Box This layer starts again with the RPG Maker game. This obviously means that the game is an unlicensed game, and I hope that Nintendo don't try to sue the guy who made this game. But back to Mario, the music box is one of the best out there apparently. In the story Mario finds a mansion, in which people who go inside never come back. Mario and Princess Peach were supposed to investigate a strange place, but Mario decided to go alone. Inside the home he finds a strange music box that was playing by itself. A little does he know that the harmless music box would cause the home to try to eat him alive. The gameplay focuses heavily on exploration, puzzle solving and clue gathering. The game was inspired by Corpse Party. The game has also a ton of illustrations of Mario, which makes the game feel like a proper title. But also I need to warn you because it's a bit graphic. Please keep in mind that this game isn't perfect, but again if this game sounds interesting it's free and you can try it out if you wanna. Crypt Worlds This creator stated that in our world you can die at any time, for no reason whatsoever. That single fact has acted as the primary inspiration for the game. This is a game where you're gonna meet Indiana Jones and you will wonder what the hell is going on. I mean this will be an ongoing thing from now on I think. The plot of the game is you will need to find certain relics, 5 in total and bring them back to the unicorn goddess, so you can defeat a creature called Dendigar. The game has an old look to it but it looks clean. The game is also a quiet adventure to dive in if you are into weird games, but you probably are if you clicked on this video, so let's go to the next one. Everything is going to be okay. The first thing is a warning for you guys who are maybe sensitive to bright lights but also flashing lights because this game will push some triggers in that department. Now to the game. Well imagine a desktop that offers you an array of out of order interactive pages. The game even if it's called everything is going to be okay is more about how the creator of the game knows that you are not so okay. The game is abstract and weird in many ways. Some of the scenes are actually based on traumas that the creator went through. The game truly makes you feel understood. La Fantabulous Game and Other Egg Likes This is about games that are considered egg likes, so this was completely new for me. To make you more familiar with the subject of egg likes, well it's pretty simple. They are walking simulators, but worse, and they are egg-like. The LS3 emulator can be described as an egg-like game. La Fantabulous game was released in 2013, which was self-identified as an egg-like game. Egg-like game defines that games possesses a full bag of weirdness, and they often use references about pop culture and memes all over the place, and pursuing the player to look for more references. Bad Castle This game is a Zelda-like game. Bad Castle is an indie game created by Alex Porter using again RPG Maker. The game tries to tackle the typical stereotype found in the RPG Maker community and it tries to offer a unique and innovating gaming experience, like many others on this list I guess. The story of Bad Castle revolves around romance, revenge and potential redemption. The exact agenda and motives of the character Bab are shrouded in mystery, adding intrigue and suspense to the storyline. Bad Castle aims to be a true art game, offering a fresh perspective and pushing the boundaries of what can be achieved with the RPG Maker. Goblet Grotto is a game created by Irish developer The Catamatis. The game was hand driven with a pencil scribble graphics so to say and almost everything is black and white. Everything you see looks like a cardboard cutout, so basically it's 2D. The grotto 
story is weird and it's utterly insane mashup of areas that make little to no sense on their own. The gameplay is pretty simple. You play with a character limited with a single attack, only capable of asking questions but not talking back and lacking any shops, inventory or even a map. However, this is compensated by the game's world being absolutely huge and bizarre and full of random stacks that rarely, if even, matches up with each other but stays memorable regardless. <laughs> funny pizza land. This game was made in 2002, but there are some claims that this game was made between 2012 and 2015 and was made a retro looking game that adopted a weird retro style. To be ahead so to say of the boom of the retro looking indie games, the game is supposed to be an interactive painting. It's marketed as a surreal adventure game with a dark atmosphere. Boo hoo. The game is also quite short and you can finish it in 30 minutes. The game is really clunky and hard to look at. If you wanna call it artistic, I don't know, it's up to you. Overall, it's a third person walking simulator set in a weird world with a numbing loop soundtrack. Magic Dreamdos Games This is a list of surreal games released for various consoles. The games are quite bizarre and weird. There aren't any other explanations. And there is a whole bunch of them. This is a quite a rabbit hole to dive in. It is interesting how some of the entries are a rabbit hole to dive in. I mean there is a game called Ticket where you play as a shoe looking like a 2D Mario game. Which has also a disturbing cry featured in the game for whatever reason. The games also look like they are made in paint. The gameplay isn't the most original, but the puzzles are somewhat interesting. And the one thing that keeps the game going is the fact that the shoe needs to fight his nemesis. And that's the devil. Again, this looks like an interesting rabbit hole to dive in. Blom Course Games Like the previous guy on the list, Blom Course Games is another developer who makes games. Again, there are a few games on the list so you can check them out. One of them was quite interesting and that's Beamis, The Curse of God, where you play a cute looking bee. Even again, the game looks like it was made in paint, but this time I found the art style to be nice. It's a 2D shoot em up game. The game can be annoying because there isn't any out of fire button and you need to press shoot like a lunatic, but again, the game is quite good. Another game from the list is a weird game that makes you, let's say, play a classic NFL game. It has even featured the classic EA intro, but of course it's a parody. It's quite a bizarre game and it features a pretty nostalgic soundtrack. Museum of Anything Goes This is an educational game slash project that was made in 1995, but sadly it was lost in time. Developed by Mikhail Markovsky and Maxwell S. Robinson, this was an interactive showcase for PC and Mac and it's truly a relic of the past. Having little to no web presence only makes this strange project even weirder. The game is wacky, it's a first person walking simulator where you explore various places around the museum and play various minigames that are built in. Generally the interaction in the games consists of clicking on paintings, watching compressed animations, cutscenes, dragging things around, doing activities and listening to sound clips. But again, the game is very bizarre and it has a special vibe to it like no other game. The game was also featured in an infamous stream even put on YouTube where the popular YouTuber Vine Sauce was in a rather bad situation. And that's because the game has a certain scene that shows a dead body. Well, some claim that the carcass were just dead of a pig, but some claim it was of a human. But it's hard to be sure. Go home. This game is something special. The game was made in 2009, but the settings is in the early 2000s. Go Home is a survival game in which the player takes the role of a 7 year old Mosakyo Suzuki who has been separated from her parents during a family during a time where the family was going to a local shrine and she needs to find her way home, which of course isn't an easy task. 
The weird thing is also that the faces of the young Musakio are blurred, which is so odd I can't really describe it. I somehow dig the cool art style, but the game is hard, but more unforgiving because death lurks behind every corner. Milk inside a bag of milk inside a bag of milk. I know this sounds already quite weird, but this is actually the name of the next game we are going to talk about. This is a visual novel inside a game, clocking it about 20 minutes. The objective is simple, it's a visual novel game where you play as a girl who is going to the store to buy milk. This is the simplest way to describe the game, but there is a twist to the game. The game is about mental illnesses and also lactose intolerance. Everything you see, you see through the protagonist's eyes and colors and shapes are distorted and often blurring together with other items. The game overall tone has a very distressing vibe and it's pretty unsettling. It's a game that really sets you into the shoes of a character in the right way. Sadly it portrays you how tough it can be to somebody to complete even the easiest tasks. Insert coin maze this is about a game where you play a cube trapped in a maze and you need to figure your way out. And that's it more or less. I would tell you that the game has a sinister level hidden deep away, but I couldn't find anything, so I'm not sure why the game is so deep. If anyone has some more info about the game, comment down below guys. You are my home. Hmm. The game revolves that you're finding a game or better to say an unlabeled cartridge in front of your door and the only thing on your mind is of course to put the game in your console and to play the game and see what it is about. Suddenly on the screen appears a pixelated animal girl with a bunch of personal questions like do you know your life shouldn't be this way and are you even happy? I mean it's weird, after you complete the mini games, the girl will ask you to go out. And the more you play you actually realize that the game is more about stalking. How the girl is breaking into the house and tries to steal a baby. The game dives into the creepypasta element and it's disturbing for sure. Chizo Mythos Series The Chizo Mythos Series is a collective title given to a series of four amateur adventure games created by Ben Crossell using the Adventure Game Studio development tool. The games in order are 5 Days a Stranger, 7 Days a Skeptic, Tribly's Nose and 6 Days a Sacrifice. They are freeware adventure horror games and they are all connected in some ways. In 5 Days Stranger, players control the cat burglar Tribly, who encounters a demonic force resembling a masked killer, trapped in a abandoned mansion with a group of strangers, inspired by Nocturne Illusion. They are targeted one by one. Seven Days Skeptic emulates the claustrophobic horror of Alien, with a spaceship crew discovering artifacts from the first game 400 years later. Tribly Notes takes place in a hotel existing in both the real world and the terrifying alternative dimension, exploring the origin of the cursed African idol. While the first two games use point and click interfaces, Tribly Notes requires keyboard movement and text based comments. Six Day A Sacrifice completes the set chronologically, it's set between 5 days and 7 days. And Tribly The Art of Death, a later game featured the characters earlier exploits but story wise and gameplay wise separated from the other series. Again, a quite interesting rabbit hole. Space Kids This little gem is from 1994 and it's a MS-DOS game. The game is basically a collection of mini games. Something like the Wario games, which we already covered, but these mini games don't have any set time limit. This is a kid's game, but it's quite bizarre. I would definitely get nightmares as a kid from these characters, especially from the moon. It has just a weird stare. The game revolves around two characters named Zidl and Deet, who embark on a journey to Earth in a living UFO to locate their famous grandfather, a space explorer who ventured to Earth without them. As they navigate through the game, their spaceship named Saucer encounters various characters and sceneries. This game has also branching paths, which can lead to different endings. 50 Short Games It 
it is hard to guess or even get a grasp of what this game is. I mean I had that problem and I started googling around and I was amazed to see that the collection of 50 short mini games, it was a game made by the same developer we talked about on this layer called Kenamite, which made the game Goblet, Growler and Space Funeral. So how to describe this game collection? It's weird, randomly, chaotic and sometimes not even playable. A hand draw is the art direction and sometimes the game has weird and aggressive music. I don't know if you want to play this or not, it is what it is. Cookies. The previous game wasn't self-explanatory and this game isn't also. You don't play as a cookie to our disappointment, but it's equally good. The game Cookie sets you in the shoes of a paranoid drug dealer wandering the walls of an old apartment building after evading cops. Well hey, almost good as playing as a cookie. The game has also a warning that the game includes some violence and other stuff in it, just to be warned. Cookies has the filthy PlayStation 1 aesthetic to it, however its filthiness extends beyond its visuals. Within the game every character you encounter is either exploiting others or being exploited. This game is really something you wanna check out, especially for its low price of zero dollars. Pennsylvania Gigglebone Gang Games like the Museum of Anything Goes, this is also a series of educational games from the 1990s. The first game in the series was Elroy Goes Bugzerg, 1995. PC Gamer US named Elroy Goes Bugzerg the best educational product of 1995. The editors wrote, The game's sense of humor is perfectly aimed as its intended audience, and the story is well written and engaging. Elroy Ghost Bugser does a better job of hiding educational content in an entertaining game than any other title from 1995. Pennsylvania is hard to describe. I mean, yes, you can learn something from the game and it can be helpful, but I guess the distinct 90s vibe in the game is the reason why this game is worth being on the list. Serial Experiments Lion. I'm a huge PlayStation 1 fan, I mean that's the reason why I started this channel, it is also the system I grew up with and I love how I stumble upon games that I didn't know about. And Serial Experiments Lion is just that, one obscure and surreal game released on November 26, 1998 for the PlayStation 1. Utakata is a network simulator designed by Konaka and Yasayuki as an interactive experiment to explore a Leyen story. While the creators didn't classify it as a game, they referred to it as a psycho stretch where the objective was to immerse the player into the sensation of navigation through vast amounts of information and having to make sense of it with limited resources. Similar to the anime, the primary intention of the creative team was to evoke emotional connections to Leon, understanding his struggles and fostered a sense of affection for her character. The gameplay is close to a visual novel and the player is limited to unlocking piece of information and then reading, viewing, listening to them with little or no puzzles needed to unlock. Mitosa. This is a weird one. The best way to describe this game is about a journey which begins with a simple seed and in each round you are faced with two options. The fate of this ordinary seed is shaped by the choices you make. Your decisions determine how the seed evolves or, to put it in another way, undergoes a transformation. Regardless of the path you choose, the culmination of your choices results in unique creatures that ultimately reverts back to being a seed again. I guess this is how you can describe this game. And there are so many different choices that it's a quite fun game to play around with the options you're presented. It's a good time killer. And roll is a adventure RPG game by Segawa made in the RPG Maker 2000. It has turn-based battles, three endings, besides that it is also a horror game and it's more creepy and disturbing. You play as a 14 year old girl in a process of self-discovery. The game delves into themes of trauma, identity and the friendship.
fragility of the human mind. The disturbing elements serve to create an atmosphere of tension and unease, keeping the player on the edge as they unravel the truth behind Alex's existence and the twisted nature of the end role. Throughout the eerie atmosphere, haunting visuals and the narrative that challenges perceptions, end role is definitely a deep and unsettling psychological experience that explores the darker aspects of human psyche. Four Winds Fantasy This is an indie game that was released on the Xbox Live under the indie category. The game actually looks and sounds like garbage. I mean, it's a pretty good description of the game, but we need to take a closer look. Four Winds Fantasy isn't about being a chosen hero saving the world in the name of justice and peace. No, you just have to settle some matters with your son. I mean, that's also important. A very good thing is that the game isn't very long and the gameplay is far from memorable. It's really just a weird action RPG. Also, weird looking characters will speak seemingly deep but nonsensical lines. I mean, it's a $1 game. It also has some bugs in the game and bad collision detection. So it's hard for me to tell if this game is generally some artistic masterpiece or really just garbage. Strange Telephone this game was first released as a mobile game released in 2016 but later added on Steam with some extras. You take the control of a girl named Jill, trapped in a room with a locked door, accompanied by only a floating telephone called Graham. Dial any 6 digit number on Graham and you're transported to another world. With each world you visit, you will find new items and new numbers which can help you to travel to new dimensions. The game has some, let's say, bulky art style and it's definitely bizarre. Also, the game has 11 different endings which you can explore. Of the Killer series Man, this series. So all the games of this series created by the Garment Districts are named the same way like the heart of the killer, the blood of the killer, and so on, you get the idea. You play as a journalist and you keep track of all the weird things happening around you for your magazine. The games look like they are made in paint, but not in a bad way. And the game looks pretty cute overall, and it also uses 2D images in a 3D space. And the game has a lovely soundtrack, and from time to time it feels a bit nostalgic. If we are talking about the game Blood of the Killer. Barclay, Shut Up and Jam Gaiden. So this game is an unofficial sequel to the Barclay Shut Up and Jam basketball game for the Sega Genesis. Barclay Shut Up and Jam Gaiden is an indie RPG game that combines elements of basketball and fantasy role-playing. It is set in a post-apocalyptic world where basketball has been banned and Charles Barclay, the legendary basketball player, is blamed for a catastrophic event known as the Chaos Dunk where he killed a bunch of people. I mean, it's totally absurd, but that's the plot. There are a lot of things going on, from you being chased by Michael Jordan to many other things. And the game is something like a Super Mario RPG game. But why this game is so deep on the list, I don't know. I would guess because of the story. Puss is a game where you play as a cat that is trapped in another dimension. The game has vaporware glitch art aesthetics, which is always good, I guess. The game was released in 2018 and released by the team Coiler. In the game, you play as a small cat and you need to reach the end of the labyrinth without touching walls. After you accidentally touch the edges of a level, the game will start to glitch and the little cat will lose one of her nine lives. If we need to put this game in the category, I would say it's a maze-like slash roguelike game. It's quite bizarre, fun and it's a good game to pass your time. Death of the Brain this game is explicit and has gory visuals. It's a novel game that falls into the horror genre. It follows a plot-driven storyline with elements inspired by 80s films. The original Death of the Brain was released for PC in 1992 with a sequel the following year on the PC Engine. 
By the time the port surfaced in 1999, the PC Engine market was long dead. I definitely adored the pixelated art style. The game explores themes of survival, moral dilemmas and the length people are willing to go to stay alive in a world overrun by the undead. It delves into the darker aspects of human nature and tests the player's decision making skills in high stakes situations. It's a hidden gem so to say and definitely worth checking out if you're into point and click adventure games and lowsome classic horror games. Kitty Horror Show Games So the next one on this list is Kitty Horror Show Games. So how can I describe this series? Well, Kitty Horror Show is an independent game developer known for creating unique atmospheric horror games. The game features minimalistic graphics and immersive sound design, focusing on creating a sense of unease, dread, rather than relying on jump scares or excessive gore. Kitty Horror Show games are known for the surreal and abstract storytelling, exploring themes such as isolation, existentialism and the unknown. Kitty's unique approach to horror has gathered a dedicated following and has been praised for its distinct style and immersive atmosphere. Alice is Dead Alice is Dead is a well-known flash game trilogy available on platforms like the New Grams, released in 2009, developed by Lore Storm Games. The game tries to take a fresh take on the classic Alice in Wonderland story like American McGee's Alice. I mean it's not the first game to try this out, but it's always good when people have new inspiration to this story. After all, Alice in Wonderland is in the public domain. It combines beautiful drawn artwork with a cinematic atmosphere. Alice is Dead captures that old school Disney movie blending with elements of enchantment and unease. With a distinct visual style, atmospheric music and clever reimagining of the beloved fairy tale, Alice is Dead has gained popularity among players who enjoy a mix of fantasy, wonder and creepy horror. Punk of the Fat Man The game was released in 1989 and published by Activision. The game was released for the Sega Genesis and Commodore 64 but also MS-DOS. The game takes place in a futuristic arena where bizarre fighters from different galaxies gather to battle each other. The characters are grotesque and exaggerated, each with its own distinct fighting style and abilities. From mutants to aliens, to the roster of the fighters is diverse and very weird. The in-game currency is earned by completing a match and the money earned can be increased through wagering. The game got much bad press back in the day and the PC gamer listed this game one of the 15 weirdest game of all time. Hylix 2 this is the sequel to Hylix 1, which we covered in the last year I think. It's definitely your not everyday RPG game, or something you would see too often. Like in the previous layer, I said that the game is bizarre and that's the strong point of this game. Our style is once again the same way the collage of 3D scanned clay models and animations combined with the fuzzy rock soundtrack. This game is really stunting and like the previous game is definitely worth checking out, but this time this game cranks everything from the previous game to an 11, it's just better in every way. Just check the game out and immerse yourself in this beautiful game. Red Tape Red Tape is quite a funny game in which you are an office worker in hell. And I don't know if there is some propaganda behind this game, but you are forced to find people and make the same your petition. Before you realize, your plot reveals that you are representative of an oil company and because the devil's son didn't read the contract, you can start extracting oil from hell. And the oil company even buys all of hell and destroys all buildings in hell so they can extract even more oil. Uh, quite weird, but the game is a bit tedious. I love the idea how they turn hell into a boring office. The art style is also quite good because it blends 2D characters with a 3D environment and the game also features some pop culture references sprinkled throughout the game and it has also some references to the best series out there, The Office. Life tastes like a cardboard. This game 
could be described as a walking simulator. Life Tastes Like Cardboard has pretty good reviews. In the game you take the role of John and battle with self-pity and the game puts you in the head and heart of its creator. The game deals also with a life of repetition on boredom. A life tastes like cardboard feels very relatable. The game feels like many games in the indie genre which deal with heavy subjects, just to be warned. The game also has a great soundtrack that really helps you to dive into the world of the game. Maybe some of you will dislike the somewhat simpler art style, but the game's story and music are worth trying this game out. A Date in the Park This is a free Brazilian point-and-click psychological game made by Clock and Dagger, the same developer behind A Terrible Old Man. The game is inspired by the feeling of oddness in the everyday situation. You play as Lou, a British newcomer in Lisbon. After a chance, you encounter the woman of your dreams and she invites you to meet her at a nearby park. You can say it's a date in the park. Ha. Also, the game seems to be partially autobiographical as the park really exists, but it's all fun and games until you found one box in which you find a human head. I mean, not the best gift to get. And then you start to realize that you're a hunt for a serial killer rather than a girlfriend. Also, there is a language barrier in the game because some of the characters speak Portuguese even if the game is basically in English. And there is a plot twist at the end which I won't spoil but it's quite good. Tetragedon This game is a bit hard to describe, it's more like a rabbit hole than a game. It's very chaotic let's say. The game is a website where you can dive into other bizarre websites. The game takes place in a fictional operating system. It is created by Natalie Lowhead. And I need to give credit to Natalie for creating a very weird game. I don't know what else to say. This is Infinity. This is a very abstract game about exploring rules, graphics, goals, behavior and interaction, created by Ludum Dare 16 with a team of exploration, made in about 36 hours in 2009. And if you wanna have a seizure, here's a game for you. So if you're sensitive to flashing lights, this isn't the best game for you. Plus the game is more basically creative experiments dressed up as a game. Ivan Zanotini Games Once again we are talking about a collection of games this time created by Ivan Zanotini. If you're into weird and spooky, this is the right place for you. One of the games we already mentioned of this iceberg and that's a simple game called I am scared. Pretty simple. Go to his site, check the games out, share the word. So it's absolute power. This is a sequel to a game we already talked about and that's the game Suits. Suits Absolute Power takes once again that great hand-driven style and brings it to life in this sequel. It's a worthy follow-up to the previous game. It's improving in every way. Better story, more complex situations, characters and a great soundtrack. Sadly, this is a very overlooked game. It's definitely more edgy, but in a good way. Happy World is a game released by Jimmy Masurak. Maybe the game doesn't look too special at first glance. I mean you're a blue disc with a face trying to restore happiness to the world. How charming. But the game has adorable, simplistic art style and funny conversations between the player and the characters. But not everything is so happy after all. The game gets a twist and it has a darker tone later on. The game has great soundtrack just to mention and it sets a really great vibe. Trio The Punch Back in the day, to be more precise, April 1990, the game Three of The Punch was released. It was an arcade game released by Data East. It plays like a classic beat-em up, where you fight your way through one side of the screen to another. You can choose three different characters, I mean that's why it's called Three of The Punch and not Duo or something else. The game does feature some weird characters, but if the game is so deep, I don't know. The game does have some weird characters, but I don't think this game deserves to be that deep. I don't know. Maybe this entry wasn't so special, but the next one is. Gobble Scream 
again a PlayStation 1 game and that makes me so happy. So Gobble Screen is a game made by Antinos Records. It is a record label that would normally put out CDs. But this is a PlayStation 1 exclusive with music videos and photo galleries. I mean, let's think about this one more time. It's a PlayStation 1 game made by a record company and you could draw a flying shoe. Is this real enough? So what is this game about? And why are you controlling a flying shoe? So the game features a pop singer called Tetsuya Komuro. Well, for you not familiar with him, he made more than 70 million sales in Japan alone. The game revolves around controlling a flying shoe and discovering lost records. And each time you find one, you can use the songs in the hover to play them. And you will immediately feel the classic PlayStation vibe with the odd levels you will visit. And the PlayStation 1 was known for his great CD player's capabilities. The tomatoes are okay. Are they? And will you be after playing this? Hard to tell. Why? Because the tomatoes are okay is a horror video game. But that's not the biggest problem here. You know why? Because the Dantian Wang, or better to say the developer of this game, decided to put a really special VHS filter on the game and it's really hard to look at it. Plus the soundtrack which is almost a static noise can really give you a headache. So what's the point of the game? Really? I mean, it's simple, look at the title. You need to check out for your tomatoes. But after that, you're gonna be chased by something that is hard to identify mostly because of the graphics. But be prepared to have a headache, be chased and get a seizure. Modern Dog 4 Modern Dog 4 Trial of the Modern Dog is a video game developed by Stephen Gil Murphy, an Irish independent developer who released the game under the name The Catamatis in 2011. It is an adventure game that immerses players in a courtroom defending a murder drug. The YouTuber, super great fan, said it doesn't matter if you start at 4 because this is like Star Wars. It is best when you start in the middle. The dog is in a court for crimes against humanity. Well, he wasn't a good boy, I guess. And your mission is to help him to escape this life and death situation. Because he was charged for over 1500 cases. So yeah, a pretty bizarre game, again. And if you love animals, there are some themes and sentences that are a bit hard to digest. Just to be warned. The Astonishing Captain's Call This game was made by the same developer as the last game. This is the second game in the series and you play a weird clay animation figure. The game is definitely weird but it has some charm. It's an adventure game where you need to solve puzzles. Let's move to the next one please. Mouth Sweat Again a RPG maker game found its way on this list. This time it is a cute little game called Mouth Sweat. It is a game released in 2016 and made by Love Games. The game has an old Game Boy graphics to it and I'm a sucker for that. You play as Hess, a new worker of the company CC and C. You will do some simple tasks around the office while fighting ghosts. But the game is a bit deeper than that. The game dives into themes of a toxic work environment which is so familiar to many of us. And the game does get its point across, which is very important. The game features also some generally good atmospheric music with good sound effects. And there is a part where you will hear a cry. And that part feels so creepy and it's settling, it is really hard to describe. You could really feel the emotions behind that particular moment. Swallow the Sea was developed by Telia, Bob Murray and Nicolas Delegando. The description of the game goes like this. You are a lovely Excel journeying through a swollen sea of strange and humanoid fish. Prey on smaller life, growing larger and stronger to perhaps someday be born. The game is... I don't know how many of you guys remember the game Sport from back in the day. It's like that game in the first stages, let's say. The game has a pretty good plot twist in the end, which I won't spoil now, so you can check out the game for yourself if you find it interesting. Re Kindner 
This is the remake of the RPG game Kidner, originally released in 2003. It is a freeware horror game made by Paroon in the RPG Maker 9. In the game you play as a third grader named Shansuke. His life was pretty peaceful until one point where he comes back to his grandparents house and found that his town is destroyed by some evil force. He found his babysitter to be transformed into a monster and his mother's bloody corpse at the door. It's your standard RPG game with horror themes. And the game isn't that special in my opinion. So don't expect here something spectacular. Skin Crawlers It is a game released in 2020 made by Leaky Finger. In the sunless void, crawling abominations hunt each other through an endless web, fighting and dying over corrupted signals beamed from a place that isn't so empty, shreds of something in a world of nothing. It is a horror game where you play a spider slash TV monster and you need to hunt TV signals. It's more a demo than a real game. The setting is definitely interesting. Overall, the game is pretty short and there isn't much stuff to talk about it. No Love is a weird paint looking game released in 2019, made by Wallace Lowcraft. It's a sci fi fantasy RPG with a unique origin story that mainly is about characters and which delves into the topics regarding the human condition from a perspective of one person. The story is about Agro, who wakes in his town century and decided to leave his life behind to go on an adventure. He then sets out to try to stop the darkness who wants to destroy the whole world. The game has pretty well written characters and it has your standard but solid RPG fighting system. Atoll The Last Ghost This is a short horror browser game. It's a point and click game where you have to fight evil spirits. The game has 6 different endings to explore and it has a almost nice looking old Game Boy style to it. The game is pretty good and it has a creepy atmosphere. Bowler. Oh boy, so hmm. Bowler is best described as an absolute fever dream of a game I guess. You play as this little frog face with a cute head. It's weird, very weird. The game can be described as a side scroll adventure that is also beat em up. It's not a serious game, but maybe you will find it fun. Try it and tell me the results. The game gets a little bit weird later on, even switching the perspective. By the way, seizure and flashing lights warning if you want to play this game. Paradigm is a point and click adventure game made in 2017. The game is set in the Eastern European country of Kash. And yes, the game is surreal. And you take the role of Paradin, a music producer of electronic music. But the problem is that he is endangered by engineered slot, which spits candy every now and then from his mouth. Plus, he has a Trump wink, which makes the whole situation even weirder. I mean, I love the graphics and the art style of the game, and by the way, the game is pretty funny and quirky at times. Remember places. Which places? That place in the game where you're locked in with a sign which is telling you're not allowed to leave this place. Well, this is Remember Places, a game made in 2020 by Bruch Butcher. It's a PlayStation 1 looking game with a creepy atmosphere. You will also see that the game is set in a computer and it also features two different endings to explore. One thing that is quite disturbing is the manipulative sign. So be prepared to question everything he says. Crazy bus. Oh well, this is basically a demo made in 2004 in Venezuela and for whatever reason it is made to run on the Sega Genesis. So what is Crazy Bus? Well, it's basic as it gets. Terrible music, terrible gameplay and no idea why was this game made in the first place. I mean this game sucks so much but I don't wanna be rude, there is one positive thing in the game. You can use the honk on the bus, that's good I guess. Necrasseria Necrasseria means dead fishing rig, that's a good start. This creepy point and click flash game 
as multiple parts. The area of the early Flash games was a really weird part of the internet history. I remember playing so many weird Flash games back in the day and seeing some really unique artworks. The game is weird but also disturbing from time to time, mostly because of the art style. The music is also unsettling and the game is of course confusing with no clear direction. It's for you to figure things out. Carambola. Like the previous game, this is also a point and click game from 2017. Carambola is the story of a town of strange fruit-like people who are having troubles by a pack of evil bird thoughts. These thoughts have driven each away from another, and only the player can save them from their depression and help them to find each other again. The game is focused on solving puzzles, the art style is colorful and how they combine the black and white characters with the colorful backgrounds makes them really pop. And plus the game has unique music that sets a good atmosphere. Lost. This is once again a RPG maker game made in 2018. The plot of the game goes like this. After wandering aimlessly in a seemingly empty world, a young man finds a key laying abandoned on a path, as well as an arrangement of structures all requiring a specific key to access them. Despite what's all there to explore and interact with, the keys are the main gate to progress and the flowers are optional prizes. These areas all have a form of nonsense to them, whatever it's a lack of understanding from what one can voice or from the words of those who gone too far. What exactly could one do about such nonsense? Well, if you can make some sense of this, I am happy for you. Small Talk Small Talk is an interactive exploration game. The game is set in a really unique and wonderful world, at least from the art style perspective. I love how the colors are so soft and pleasant to look at, and plus the characters are really unique looking. Sadly, I found out that the game was made in 2017 apparently, but the sign me up button on the page takes you to a blank page. So I don't know if this game is out or not, but I hope it will come out because it looks very good. The sea will claim everything. The game was made by Jonas Kyrates in 2016. It is a point and click adventure game, a surreal adventure that blends magical fantasy with dash of a realism. The game has, I would say, not a bad art style, but, but far from weird or even surreal. But the story is quite interesting. It's apparently based on the Greek debt crisis and the game is quite complex and really wants to take your time while playing. It's a unique game, but definitely not a bad one. Bangers. I simply love to stumble upon odd and surreal games, like some PlayStation 1 titles we saw on the list. This hidden gem is a game made in 1998 by KD Lab. The story of the game is bonkers. To keep it short, humans created gateways and they traveled to different until they met an insect-like species until they meet an insect-like species which attacks them. Humans build bioweapons to defend it, but everything goes down the drain, and some of the DNA of the both species are mixed. It's completely crazy, but this game is actually a role-playing racing game which makes a lot of fun. It's a great game and definitely worth checking out. But before checking this great game out, I hope you will finish this video. Midshift. From a retro game to something more modern. The game Midshift was released in 2020 by a Red King Collective. The game is a narrative game that takes place in the halls of an industrial slaughterhouse and meat packaging facility just after the turn of the 20th century. Midshift is definitely not vegetarian friendly to give you some warnings. The game has definitely a dark atmosphere and it's a first person horror game. The game is disturbing and it has a weird plot twist. Well, the game can be also criticism to the meat industry, but I don't want to spoil too much here. Samurai 1 is a game made in 2003 by Aminita Design and it's an exploration adventure game with puzzle elements. The game was made in Adobe Flash and it was first in the series. 
The game has a funny story about a space gnome traveling to planet which is heading to his home planet. So he tries to go onto the planet and change his course. It's definitely an interesting adventure game but with quite cute graphics. But I don't know if you wanna consider this as a real game. Nightmare. How would you describe a nightmare? I mean the game nightmare you can describe by being a dystopian FPS where you take the control of a machine angle to incinerate hordes of synthetic demons, leveraging the power of time control, nuclear fission and to ascend them to digital heaven. Now I know what you're thinking, this is a doom clone. Well yes, but it's like a trip version of doom clone. This isn't immediately a bad thing at all. This is a fast and trippy Doom Clone. It's a game where you can spend an hour or two of your time. The Tender Cut The Tender Cut is a first person interactive installation exploration game. It invites you to dive into a surreal atmosphere, sharing the character's experiments. The game was made by No Thanks, and that's a great name by the way. The game is pretty short but worth checking out and it has a certain scene with the eye in the game which can be disturbing to say at least. David Leach teaches typing. This is definitely a terrible way to learn how to type but it's a great way to hang out with David Leach I guess. Well it's funny until a minute long disturbing video pops up and you are wondering what the hell you saw right now. But that's what you get when you want to learn typing with David Leach. Time is solid here. Oh, this game is something special. You probably saw already so many AI created images, music and so on. If you dig a little bit deeper you also saw the weird and disturbing ones. Now this is a game about this. The game is a horror puzzle game made by Algebra Falcon. It's a classic top down perspective type of a game where you wander around an art museum and interact with all the different types of paintings in there. The game has an interesting concept indeed, but it can be also challenging. And the guy where you save the game is just... Ugh. Milk outside a bag of milk outside a bag of milk. This name kills me. But if you remember we already talked about this game, at least the first part. Now this game takes everything the first game has and cranks it up to 11. The game is definitely not for everybody and be warned if you want to try this game out. This game can really be hard to digest because of the themes and the story. The game is atmospheric, ominous and unsettling and worth checking out if you can think you can handle the game's theme about mental illnesses. It's a game about consequences of untreated trauma and isolations. To not spoil it too much I will stop here and it would be a shame to spoil the game for you. Hypnagogia Boundless Dream Meet colorful characters, discover mysterious secrets and resemble the fractures of remains of an internal crystal as you explore a series of abstract worlds based on dreams, nightmares and the place in between. The game was made in 2021 by Soda Raptor. It's a PlayStation 1 looking exploration game that takes you on an adventure through mystical dreams which are all very unique in their own way. The story revolves around your companion Gogi has been kidnapped by a sinister force and the dream crystal has fractured in 8 shards spreading to different corners of the world. This game is very well made and it has good puzzles. I definitely love the whole atmosphere, sound, everything. I can't really describe why this game feels so good and interesting. Definitely worth trying out. How fish is made? So this game creeps me out a bit. It's definitely surreal. It's a short narrative driven experience, let's say, about talking fish and making choices. Released in 2022. Now what makes the game surreal and disturbing? Well, you place a sardine swallowed by a huge looking machine like something. Along your adventure you will try humping the ground and meet other fish. It has two different endings, each other sending a certain message. 
the game also got some mixed reviews so i don't know if this game is really worth your time but again if the game seems interesting it's up to you it's free on steam buzzkill so buzzkill is made by Perma Fire Games and it's a surreal point and click visual novel type of a game about a fly which is a bartender. There are also three games in the series. The game is uh, the game is uh, something that is not worth your while. It's a weird game but not in a good way. The White Chamber The game starts with playing a girl who awakes in a coffin with no memory about how she landed there. It's a point and click puzzle game, but it has a great anime style to it, with sci-fi settings and that's something I love, especially as I'm currently watching Cowboy Bebop. The game has great details combined with great audio. It has a mystery aspect to it, besides you waking up in a coffin, you find yourself in a space on a dead forsaken spaceship and you need to figure things out. Pen Pulse the game was made by Maroon Raccoon in 2013. Oh boy, now catch this. You play as that weird character with big feet which wants to find his mom with your abused friend. But here is the catch, your mom passed out drunk in a club. This is actually more fun than it sounds. And also the game is pretty short. All of our friends are dead. Woohoo, that's a great title for a game. The game is not a weird walking simulator, but rather a horror-like platformer game, where all rules, concepts and sense of fairness have been cast to the wind. Survive the cruelest edge of insanity, gaze upon mysterious sights of things that may or may not be. The game has definitely an unsettling soundtrack and it also was made back in 2009. It's a fast run and gun game with a great presentation and with a disturbing soundtrack. That's enough if you ask me. They speak from the abyss. The game was created by Nikki Kalpa. The game is a horror dungeon crawl. If you remember Shin Megami Tensei, I think on the first layer, it plays and looks like that game, but more dark and more gory. The page of the iceberg sends you to a blank page about this game, and the only thing I could find is a demo on Steam. If you wanna check it out, I mean. I simply cannot tell you much about the game, but it looks quite interesting. The game throws you in a world surrounded by tortured souls and it's about facing demons head on and talking or fighting your way through this psychological world. The game is set to be released in 2024 and I hope it will. Game Dog Game Talk is a game about a minigame collection of fictional off-brand handhelds featuring warped or broken takes on space shooters, dating sims, narrative role-playing games and sports. Released by a gamer we mentioned a few times on this iceberg and that's the Catamatis. The game is intended to be buggy and weird. I mean, and it is. So let's move to the next entry please. Red Chaos Red Chaos is a game made in 2012, developed by Winterlake. The game is a browser game, it's like those old text games. The game will give you a picture and text and a choice to choose from. There are few different endings, each can be unlocked by following a specific part of choices. So this game is quite replayable. They grew lungs and drowned. They Grow Lungs and Drowned is a surreal, unsettling and incredibly weird retro style first person adventure where you explore and speak to survivors in a world that where the food has run dry. It is hard to figure out what the heck is actually happening in this game, but a good bunch of the game follows this concept. What you need to know is that you are in a hospital filled with weird patients, so you need to talk to NPCs and see if you be any wiser. Saya Nota. The game was made by Nitrous Plus and it was featured on my disturbing and obscure video game Iceberg chart. If you wanna be shocked and disturbed, check this chart please out. I will play the part from that video to not repeat myself. And by the way, this game didn't even land on the last layer of that Iceberg chart. Mm -hmm. 
a good horror game needs fleshed out characters. Saya no Uta is a visual horror novel that takes you on a wild trip. After a car crash, our character ends up in coma. After waking up, the character is only seeing the world from a grotesque perspective. Everything is covered in flesh, skin, organs and the constant smell of rotting flesh is not leaving him alone. The game can be considered as body horror because of the imagery shown, but this game goes more in a psychological and existential questions. What I mean by that is that our character is tortured by demons every day and he questions every relationship he had. Many moral dilemmas start to appear about what is wrong and what is right. The game has a preset railway to follow with not many options. You are here to sit and enjoy the horror that is unfolding to you. The game switches like Silent Hill between the world depending on the situation. Maybe this game isn't the best horror game you ever played, but it's worth your while if you're in such a things. I try Nikki. Now let's jump back to 1995 to talk about a shoot em up game developed by NCS for the PC Engine. This is quite weird. It's not your typical shoot em up and why it should be. The game is rare so it is really hard to get any copy of the game and the only way you can play this is of course simulation. I mean you can buy the used game for around few hundred bucks if you want to. Uh, the plot is completely weird and I don't want to bother with that. You see the gameplay, I mean I don't know what to say, you see the gameplay. I hope this will satisfy you for this entry. Captain Blood series is a French video game made by the ARA Informatica Q, made in 1988. It was a game from the Atari ST and later ported to other consoles at the time as well. The game has an interesting plot, it's about a game designer who was suddenly warped inside a spaceship of his very own game which he designed. Somehow he managed to clone himself in the game every time he traveled to other galaxies. Now he needs to find and kill his clones. Sadly this game is still very unknown despite being quite a good and interesting game. Also Computer Gaming World gave the game a positive review for its unusual concept, execution and graphics. Rolly Poly's games Rolly Poly games were a series of Japanese educational games released in 1997. This game were developed by Outside Directors Company and published by Shinko Music Entertainment. The games were unfortunately become lost over time. While primarily intended for kids, the creator of the games, Osamu Sato, believed that the game could also be enjoyed by adults. Although a few copies of the games are known to exist, they are very difficult to find. Japanese shopping sites have listed these games. Various Japanese shopping sites have listed these games for sale. However, none of them actually offer the games are in stock. The sole known instance of a copy being sold online was through an auction in June of 2002. It remains unclear whatever any of the copies since then have been sold. Despite the game being online, it is really hard to get the game running. Mondo Medicals The next one on this list is Mondo Medicals, a freeware indie puzzle game developed by a Swedish developer named Jonathan Soderstorm, released in 2007. The game has a unique opening where the player is greeted by a character and invited to participate in a project to cure cancer. But before you start, you need to undergo a certain test. Each of the level features a grey maze and you really need to think out of the box to complete the puzzles. One more thing is, after completion of each level, a short cutscene is shown which depicts a recording of a man loudly ranting, with a really weird speech subtitled into ungrammatical English, for whatever reason. And that's how you cure cancer, I guess. The game has also a few different endings to explore. The Dream of Yourself The game was developed in 2021 by Big ATE. It's a horror slash walking simulation game. It is a genre inside yourself, where a person can literally plunge into the subconscious, getting answers to the questions that worry you. 
but you have to be extremely careful because not everything here is friendly and will put up with the presence of outsiders. You will be walking into a thing that can be described as the warm thing like creature from Silent Hill 4 or even a person if you want to, which is pretty disturbing and gross at the same time. The gameplay of Dream of Yourself does not feature any special mechanics, so just walk and enjoy the game and discover its hidden meanings. Architect Saga Remember the developer No Thank You? Well, say hello to Yes Very Much. <laughs> I love those names. There are two games in the collection slash saga and they feature again the VHS slash PlayStation 1 aesthetic. The game is about getting a taste of how it feels to live in a consumer surrounded by all of your favorite products. The game has a quite unique and interesting atmosphere and you will also get a pet later on which you need to grow. It's definitely worth trying out. And the copia. The next game was made by Andy Land and it's a point and click adventure game. There is sadly only a demo because the game isn't fully out. Andy Land put a kickstarter for the game and the goal was to collect $20,000, but they raised over the double of that amount. The game is really good and it's thought out. It's about guiding a lost child through a world of, oper of a world that operates on foreign rules. The child name is Mellow and he doesn't know much about anything other than the fact that he has a strong gut instinct. With a little help from his guardian angel, or better to say you, Mellow will able to overcome many obstacles in the way of finding him a place he can call home, wherever that may be. Downfall 2016 The final game on the layer 3 is called Downfall Redux also known as Downfall 2016. It's a story-driven horror adventure game developed by Remigus Mikalinski, I hope I pronounced that right, under Harvester Games, released on February 14, 2016. The game is definitely violent and disturbing. In the game you take the role of Joe Davis, a mentally broken man trying to seek his own redemption. After escaping the quiet heaven hotel with his wife Ivy Davis, he tries to save their marriage, but Ivy disappears. The game definitely deserves every mature warning out there. It's a sad, dark and gritty game with an amazing atmosphere and definitely this game isn't for everyone because of its theme. Again, if the game looks interesting, try the game out. Eastern Mind, The Lost Souls of Tang No. The first entry on layer 4 is Eastern Mind, The Lost Souls of Tang No. It's a point and click adventure game by a Japanese artist Osomo Sato. Well, if this name sounds a bit familiar, it's because this dude is behind the LSD emulator, which was a template for a lot of games here on this chart. So you can expect everything for this game, weird and surreal stuff, but that's the whole idea of this video. I mean this game hasn't even a proper menu, he incorporated several of his own spiritual beliefs, for example reincarnation. It's about a man named Rin who has a lost soul. A friend gives him an artificial soul that will last 49 days, with which he goes on a quest to locate a thing known as Tong No, to die and be reincarnated 9 times in order to recover his soul. Plus the game has some mistranslation errors which can be pretty funny. Drowned God Well this is a real rabbit hole again. Drowned God Conspiracy of the Ages is a science fiction adventure game that was released in 1996. It was developed by Epic Multimedia Group. In the game, a conspiracy theory is presented, suggesting that all of human history is fabricated and that extraterrestrials played a role in the development and evolution of the human race. If you're into such theories and didn't know about this game, thank me later. Throughout the game, the player will embark on a journey to uncover the truth. 
This involves traveling to different worlds interacting with both historical and fictional characters and of course solving various puzzles. The ultimate goal is to reveal the hidden secret behind the alleged conspiracy and expose the truth that lies beneath the surface. By the way, if you're interested in this topic alone, I would like to make a dedicated video about this, about the game or in general about conspiracy theories. Back to Drowned God. Drowned God draws inspiration from a fascinating backstory. It is based on a forged manuscript that was written by Henry Horse in 1983. The manuscript was falsely attributed to Richard Henry Horn, 19th century poet. I mean, it is what it is. Drowned God's concept centers around the idea that human history has been manipulated to cover up certain facts. I mean, some people will jump directly into this game, but there will be probably others that won't even bother to look it up. It's up to you to decide. The story of Kamakusheiki village. This is something quite disturbing. Even if the chart is based on surreal games, and I added weird to the title to make it more engaging. This iceberg has its fair share of disturbing games as well. The story of this entry can be considered as disturbing. The game is a unique and satirical Japanese resource management strategy game. It was developed by Happysoft and released for PC 98 on June 29, 1995. The game is a satirical take on the Aum Shinrikyo cult and the famous 1995 Tokyo subway sarin gas attack orchestrated by a cult, which is so wrong on so many levels. But it's important to clarify a common misconception. The game was not produced by the cult as a propaganda. It cleverly mocks the cult's members and even includes footage of humiliating media coverage they received. The game also uses full motion videos and real life footage. I mean the guy behind the cult went from a yoga instructor to declaring himself as Jesus and starting a religion. And this is a game based on Pondes. The game isn't anything special, but the whole backstory makes it special. Sluggish Morse. This is a game made by Jack Spinoza. It is a trippy game set into a clay animation hell populated by all sorts of monsters and demons. The game emphasizes more on the emotions of the player rather than a clear plot of the game. The game isn't big on explanations, but it's subliminally weird imagery. It is hard to describe this game. You will try to dive into your psychic and everyone can have a different conclusion of this game. Play and see what happens. Kanoguti Games So, who is Kanaguti? He is an artist from Japan who is known for making music and games. He started his adventure in the early 2000s. The biggest impact he received was by the amazing YouTuber we already mentioned a few times and that's Vine Sauce because he mentioned one of his games on his stream. The game has a distinct atmosphere and vibe to it. You can also check out his other work if you're interested. And he's also posting videos on YouTube from time to time. Please be warned again because the videos can be weird and uncomfortable. Red Bad dot S -Y -S. There is a link provided by the iceberg chart and it sent me to one of my favorite YouTubers out there and that's Mudahar from Some Ordinary Gamers. If you don't know him, please check this guy out, he's hilarious, I love him. So the game he plays, it's a weird AXA game by the name Rap Dad. The game is basically a set of very weird videos, they are all trippy, weird, surreal, everything. You will be also given a set of questions to answer. I mean of course, the questions are weird and out of place. And there are some 18 plus content out there for nudity. I don't know what to say more about this. James Games James is a video game creator, which makes creepy computer games. At least that is his statement on his page. Diving a bit deeper into his catalog, we see 7 different games. The one you're looking at right now is called Lips Like Vellum. It's a creepy game indeed. Very talk to God. The game is still a demo and it's a click and point adventure. 
with a very simplistic black and white art style. The second game we are looking is Via Negativa. It's his first game and it's like atmospheric type of a game following a similar style with haunted but subtle music to it. It's a game based on decisions and choices. Well, if the games look weird enough for you, check them out. Critters for sale. So, what is this game? First to say, this lovely game was made by Sono Shi, and the game is about 5 short stories about a snake, a goat, a monkey, a dragon and a spider, all of which occur in different eras and locations, touching on themes like traveling, black magic and immortality. Woohoo, some things we love to see and talk about. The game is a point and click slash novel game. It has a dot black and white art style, accompanied by Michael Jackson, because why not? The game is about reading and solving puzzles and trying to see behind the cryptic messages each of the story has. Last Armageddon Maybe some of you older gamers already knew about this game. I sure didn't know anything about this. Well, Lost Armageddon is a 1988 game made for the NES, but also the PC Engine among some others. The game is an infamously player unfriendly RPG set in a post-apocalyptic world. The game is a Dragon Quest like game, but it's about a story that deals with life after all living beings have been wiped out by a mysterious force. The game has standard RPG like system where you lead a bunch of demons to explore the ruins of human civilization in the search of clues about what caused the apocalypse. The illogical journey of the Zambonis. This is a dark parody of the logical journey of the Zambonis, released by Noib in 2014. Long ago, humans and Zambonis coexisted peacefully. However, a political faction who hates the Zambonis rises to power, facing exile under the threat of death. The Zambonis have to emigrate away, hoping to find a new home just for them. And I love how the game just starts with the developer singing Zambonis over and over again. Like Zamboni, Zamboni. Zamboni. At least the lyrics are quite easy to remember. The game is about the Zambonis which are trucks that clean ice. You will lead the trucks to the destinations. I mean the plot is just... Uh, and the presentation is just weird and funny. Especially his thick European accent which narrates everything in the game. Super Mario Death Row Again, one more game about the family friendly plumber on shrooms. This game was made by Pun Kit. It's again a RPG maker game. This is about the 35th anniversary a playable Nintendo Direct. You heard me right, a game where you will witness a live execution of your favorite plumber. Is this surreal? I mean if you think about it, it's a Mario based slash red room concept like game. The game is pretty basic in style. It again has your standard RPG like maker fights, I mean it also has a fight where our plumber guy fights his father or better to say Shigeru Miyamoto and we need to give extra points for that. Isonomous. This can be a bummer to some, but this game is 50 minutes long, so I won't talk too much about it because of the sheer fact to not spoil something. This is once again more experience than a game, where the developer wanted to create a thing that can be potentially interpreted in many ways. This is definitely leaning on the horror side with its clay animation. It's a click adventure with some puzzles. The game was made in 2020 by Mikhail R.F. Tishir. And I'm sorry if I butchered that. The game has overall an ominous vibe going on and it's intended to play multiple times because of the different endings. Lilith Zone So, Lilith Zone is a developer we already talked about on this iceberg chart. She is the creator behind Cryptic World. This developer has a few more games, like Cryptic Underworld, The Last Car, Betsy's Hospital and a few more. Again, the developer has an itchio.io page where you can look up all the games and even help the developer by buying some of their games. I mean, the same thing counts for every developer out there on this list. 
If you love the games, please show them some support. Now back to the games. For example, the Cryptic Underworld is a sequel to Cryptic World. If I am correct, the game is still under development because you can try to donate to the Kickstarter if you find this game interesting. The game is also much different than the previous. I would say it's much more serious in nature. I am a tree, you are not. Ha ha ha. Well, again, this iceberg covers a lot of stuff. Again, the game that lands on this list are based on their surrealism and weirdness. Maybe the order is a bit messed up in my opinion, but at the end of the day you get, if you're watching the whole series I mean, all the games you want to see. So this is a game where you are a warm. The game was made in RPG Maker 2003 by Angry Geometry. There are three different endings in the game and you need to know that the sea is safe and you don't need to leave the sea and there is no hope of becoming a tree. This was only the description of the game. So, okay, what is this game about? Well, it's a game where you take a role of a worm and the game involves a lot of swearing. Plus, the Game Boy looks like a Game Boy Color game in my opinion. If this game is worth your time, it's like ah, hard to tell. If you wanna be a warm on adventure, yeah, sure, why not? And plus, there are three different endings to explore, so I don't know. Bizarroware. Let's take a look at Bizarroware by Strangest.io. Now, this is an ongoing collection of psychedelic strange micro games. This is simply a game like Variomare. I mean, look at the name just. <laughs> but this is a bit weirder. The game is separate into seasons. You will be thrown into mini games with little to no explanation and you need to figure things out. Now, what is the difference between Bizarroware and Variomare? The thing is that Bizarroware has a scoring system and you can also use your points in the game to get new stuff. I must say that the music in the game is also quite good, but overall the presentation and the game are good and fun and definitely bizarre. Sidoni Sisus. I hope I pronounced that right. The names are just killing me. This is an adventure game released in 2018 by RRRFFV. It's a game where you, and I'm only reading the description of the game now, smoke drink and gamble your life away and kill satan i mean it's almost like a slow simulator game but except the part you fight with the devil it's a root game with a lot of swearing and crazy camera angles in the cutscenes the game is a first person adventure game where you talk to a lot of 2d characters in 3d spaces please be warned if you play this game there is really a lot of swearing in there experiment 12 was released in 2013. It's a sci-fi horror game as the title suggests. This game is kind of an experiment. Now get this, the game is a work of collaborative fiction in 12 chapters, each made by a different indie developer over a period of 72 hours. Each chapter varies widely in the art style and gameplay, but they unify to tell a story about human experimentation illnesses both physical and mental. So it's a bit hard to describe the game because of the aspect that every game varies. To keep it short, they are simple 2D side scrollers to pixelated first person exploration games and weird puzzle games. Overall, Experiment 12 is insane, inconsistent, but beautiful. Deep Sleep Trilogy Deep Sleep is a series of point-and-click adventure games created by Polish indie developer Script Welder. As the title says, there are three games, Deep Sleep, Deeper Sleep and The Deepest Sleep. The games are about escaping a dream inhabited by shadow people. To keep it somewhat short and be warm, this can be a small spoiler for people who really want a truly blind experience with the game. I will start with the first one, which is about a researcher exploring a nightmare dream world, encountering shadow figures and seeking a lighthouse for freedom. Deeper Sleep is about the protagonist returning to the dream world, learning about the shadow people and helping a boy in a coma. And the third one is about the player who awakens in a dream world, faces predators, discover they are a shadow person and encounter another traveler. 
the games are pretty well made with a dark and pixelated art style and I hope this gives you a general idea about the games. La La Land series. This is a very abstract game with subliminal storytelling which makes it perfect for this list. The game was made in 2006 by Matt Aldridge and the games in the series are short and surreal. The games are not tight. This game definitely needs a player with an open mind. The games were also like a byproduct by the developer. There are 5 games released in total in 2006 and La La Land series in 2010 for the Macintosh. The games follow mostly a similar art style and they are mostly side scrollers with little to no dialogue. Maiden Genesis Maiden Genesis is a game that I already said a few words about it on the previous layer if I'm not mistaken. So it's a parody of the Maiden games. It's one of the games that is so bad that they are good. By the way, I think I already mentioned it but I love the soundtrack. It's great. Welcome to Heaven this game was made by Vextro in 2017. The game has an interesting background about the developer's view on religion. He addresses how the sins separate good from bad people. I don't want to touch too much on religion, but the game is an exploration game where you explore various characters and talk to them. And yes, you are in heaven in space. So it's space heaven. And yes, this isn't a game that you play for the gameplay. It's like a game where you choose your own adventure type of a story. It's basically you playing Saint Peter and deciding if you will get people to heaven or not. It's short and neat overall. Soft and Cuddly How to describe this game? Soft and Cuddly is a horror action adventure game released for the ZX Spectrum home computer. The game is made in 1987 by John George Jones. I mean the ZX Spectrum was a little old console, but this game is oh god. Well, it's definitely unsettling. It has so many weird things going on, it's incredible. I mean the 8-bit really was used to its max. But what is the plot of this fine game? Well, you take a role of an armed man with a laser gun and a jetpack, whose mother was an android queen which was dismembered. So what is your task? <laughs> well, well, it's actually not funny. So you need to locate and collect all the shattered body parts of your mother and sew them back together. The early game was even more gruesome, John stated. The gameplay can be repetitive, but it's praised for being fun and a weird game. I mean, it's a product of its time, I guess. Water Boom World We already talked about the developer games. This time we are looking at the game Water Boom Worlds. Even if I looked at a few games, I skipped this one. Probably because of the name. It's just something ominous about this game. It's scary and it's definitely a hell of a trip. The game is about the oceanic feeling, which is a feeling of being one with the external world as a whole. The game touches on religious themes as you are an unnamed Catholic researcher exploring the ocean floor in a search of evidence of the place where humanity fell from grace. He believes that mankind did not originate on the land in the Garden of Eden, but within the darkest reaches of the sea. It's also a pretty short game. It's quite deep, pun intended. You will also need to know something about the Catholic religion to get all the references and to get a whole picture of this story. Classic game. One more thing that I find great on this list is all the names of the creators. I like the dev behind this game, whose name is Courses Music Dogs. Why? I don't know. Sometimes I think I was lazy with my YouTube name because of that. <laughs> Classic game is about Hermit returning to a land which is full of curses. I mean, it's a game where you consume human souls, become cursed, and the usual stuff. The game was also made in RPG Maker 2000. If this spikes your interest, you can always give it a go. Home game. This is a game from the same developer like the previous entry. The graphics and the art style are the same, with obviously a different plot. Home game is about Hermit at home. 
In the game you explore town. You will find ways into almost every building, die horribly, fail utterly, cash cans for change and regret decisions in life. Just great. This sounds like real life. By the way, you also dreamt that the world ends in 3 days. This game features magic spells, a cat, rude people, demons and death. Songs of the Lost Songs of the Lost is a magical game odyssey through a surreal and absurd digital landscape. This is a psychedelic audio-visual experience created by Apocalypse Studios. What to say about this game, other than immerse yourself into the world which crosses all boundaries, roam hidden highways, meet strangers and enter the void, on your journey to Apocalypse, the last safe haven. By the way, enter the void was the first thing that came to my mind when I heard the soundtrack. If you love surreal movies, this is a movie you need to watch. Back to the game. It's simple, connect your headphones, dive in and enjoy this game, or better to say, the trip. Fatum Betula Placed in a world without change, you must create fate by watering an Asian plant, determine a future and live with it. It's a game by Bryce Butcher made in 2020. This is an atmospheric exploration game where you will encounter some light puzzles. It has a total of 10 endings and PlayStation 1 aesthetics. To quote the creator, welcome to a world without a past. Reality slowly becomes meaningless as you learn more about what each unique location has to offer. It's a weird game and I love it. Dead Dreams is a 2D psychological horror game made by iMarks which is of course a horror game with some puzzle solving. The game follows a story of a school game dev club of four friends, which break up after a tragic death of one of their members, until a sinister force would force them back to the memories of the event and how it changed their life. The game is inspired by Silent Hill apparently. I can't say much about the art style because it's something not out of the ordinary. The game is quite long if we compare it to the most titles and it has generally good reviews on Steam. Glorious Train Wrecks This game has a really unique concept and it's to throw everything at the wall and see what sticks. It tries to bring you back to a time when you didn't care so much about production values. The game rips sound samples from your favorite TV shows, uses them and uses them in the game. It also animates pictures of yourself making goofy faces on your webcam. The game is terrible and awesome. It's terribly awesome. I don't know what to say. If you wanna have a good laugh, go for it. Baby's Dream of Dead Worlds Before we have a memory, before we know what the world is, we dream. Baby's dream of what came before, of universes that are no longer there. Baby dream of dead worlds is kind of morbid. This lovely game was made by Every Wear. It's a flash game released in 2010. The game has an 8 bit style and it's based on how human infants are the ones who dream about an alien civilization. Once again, Storytelling is the main focus here and it has a few different endings to explore. Planet Dob Another PlayStation 1 game, Wooha! This entry is about the game Planet Dob made in 1999 by Hudson Software. They made a lot of games of the years like Bomberman and Bloody Roar, but this game is quite more surreal than those two games. The game was mainly produced by a Japanese multi-genre band by the name of Date of Birth. In the game beginnings, Alien Dob flies in a golden spaceship and follows glowing size to a floating gate. He then gets caught by a butterfly net, crash lands on earth and is captured by evil scientist Dr. X. The most creative name for an evil scientist out there. So Dob's mind is explored by Dr. X assistant. To the gameplay, the outer segments are played from a third person perspective with 3D characters on a CG rendered 2D backgrounds. 
while the indoor segments are shown from a first person perspective. Apart from collecting bits, the primary objective is to locate and deliver items scattered throughout the areas. While the game falls under the adventure genre, there are a few minimal puzzles to solve, with them primarily focusing on exploring the environments. It's a psychedelic experience in being in Dobbs' head. It's weird, colorful, with strangely designed characters in a bizarre environment. Everything you need from your trippy PlayStation 1 game. Cube Escape Series the next one on this list is a point and click adventure game made by Rusty Lake. There is on Steam the Cube Escape Collection and it's based on a bundled and preserved collection of flash games. The story follows Dale, a homicide detective as he investigates the death of a woman and finds himself drawn into the mysterious world of Rusty Lake. The games were heavily inspired by the TV series Twin Peaks. It's easily seen that the games were made worth love. What is the most important thing about the games are getting out of hand. Every game is creepy and unsettling. The series is definitely quite big and definitely interesting. Electric Highways You can think about this game as a love child of System Shock and the Depeche Mode. It has that special ATPC vibe to it. The game has abstract graphics and it's set in an abstract world filled with surreal things. Well, that's a quite good explanation. The game is all about exploration. The game was made by the developer called Zakovedi and he states that everything has been created for the purpose of giving a player a certain kind of emotion. Electric Highways is set in 2072 and virtual reality has become a worldwide thing, allowing people to seek into the internet and enjoy life in isolation. Well, like this is nothing already. It's a messed up take on the future of VR, maybe it's a real one even, but who knows. Dopaminium, the hill journey. This game is a point and click game with hand draw graphics and they look quite good if I can add. So what is the surreal part about this game? Well, the game taps into human mind and trying to face a deeply rooted disorder you never knew you had. The game will look from phobias to dementia and your goal is to find the cure by putting pieces of a broken psyche together. Well, that's quite bizarre, isn't it? The game has an oppressive and chilling atmosphere which can creep you out from time to time. The puzzles in the game can be sometimes frustrating, but hey, that doesn't mean it doesn't deserve a place on this chart. Dentibus. Dentibus can be described as a vibrant neo version of Earthbound. Plus, you can enjoy trippy music in the game and fight abstract enemies. The game was made by Binalian and it was released in 2014. The plot of the game isn't the best out there and it hasn't the best hook, let's say. Other than that, that's a pretty straightforward RPG Maker game with simple battles and a simple leveling system. Cyber Pets Graveyard This game was made by Alien Melon and released in 2018. So what do you think this game is about? Well, you probably played or heard about games like dogs or cats on the Nintendo DS. Well, it's not like that. Cyber Pet Graveyard is a game that revels the secret behind a vanished cyber pet development firm and all that is confined within your desktop. So you will dig into your files and see what lurks there. This is a quite cute and little fun game. Don't Trust the Cat was made by Made Flame 991 It's a RPG maker game in which you get lost on a twist plane of existence. But the most important thing is that you don't ever trust the cat. I see in the comment section that people had some problems with the startup. Same here, I tried to at least get you some footage for this, but one of the comments said the game was a masterclass in abstract indie. So that's it. Let's move on to the next one. This software package contains 10 games and it's compiled under the name Cynical Softwares. So you see, the games are mainly arcade type games. They were published on the thick forums 
by Jin Stengu in 2015. The collection includes games like Frogman, Digger Dude, Smack My Bug Up and The Devil Dog, to mention a few. This is only volume 1 and I didn't see if there is volume 2 or if there will ever be a volume 2. The Frogman games for example make the head of the Frogman expand so he can catch fruit and fight flying monsters. The games are simple and addictive. It reminds me a lot of the games from back in the day where you would get freeware games on disc. I would always try them all out just to see if any of them is really good. I even got a gift from a friend of mine, a collection of gaming magazines and demo discs from like I guess 1997 until 2005. So maybe I will do a deep dive about demo disc and surreal stuff I found on there. Katagorum is a JRPG style game with something I would describe as clay animation. The game is a light adventure about a boy named Gustavo Estevez in search for something and that's the description of the game. So he tries to connect with other humans. The game is heavily influenced by Eredan game and Hylex. It's a colorful and bizarre game. <laughs> I mean you're seeing the footage. Molly and the gun mitts. The game was developed by Jake Clover, it's a shoot em up adventure. The game throws you direct into the battle and tells you not to worry about because you will learn on the way. What sets this game apart from typical shoot em ups? Well there is a whole bunch of weird sound effects but also a good soundtrack but the most important thing is that it's full of detailed drawings. The game gets very chaotic and it's very fast. If the game looks interesting it can be found on Game Jolt. Almari. Let's talk about a game made by Demon Klaus. He stated he made a black comedy surreal horror JRPG game. Now the game is inspired by all the games we love from Yubeniki to Undertale to Shin Megami Tensei to Zelda games. You follow Almari on his quest to collect the emotions he was born without, explore strange and beautiful monochrome worlds based on emotions and equally otherworldly monsters that reside with them. Meet and befriend many interesting characters as Almari sets off to find the secret that lie within the emotion world. The game looks very simple but ominous. But here is the catch. The game development started in 2013 and still is only a demo. If you want to check the demo out, it's about 2 hours long, so you can have a taste of the game. 14 slash 3, 14 slash question mark question mark. This one is tricky. Well, the game was posted on a site I never heard of, with a very weird URL. It's a 13.1.6 megabyte game and the version is 0.01a. The game, the game looks pretty simple, at least from the screenshots I have seen. You play as a stickman figure in a room that is predominantly black and white with some sprites of color added here and there. The icebreak chart listed the game as an exploration game. The problem was when I wanted to download this game, my antivirus somehow popped up and find a virus. So I don't want to try to mess with this and sadly this is all I can give you for this entry because I didn't find any other information about this game. Vomit Pizza Corkscraft 2000 has prepared something special for us. This game was made in only few days for the Spooktober Jam 2021. It's a short walking simulator inspired by older games, especially ZX Spectrum games. The game has a simplistic style, the story follows a powerful gamer set by God to help vomit William, and yeah that's his name, to bring Earth to its former glory. And yes this was caused all by a satanic cult that uses sacrificial pizza to turn Earth into a nightmare. Plus the chart described this game to be very crude. The Club the Club is a bizarre MMO browser game, and it's dead also. The Club takes place with a 90 cyberspace styled nightclub. It's definitely more mature than Club Penguin for example. After you pick up your avatar and name, you are thrown into a nightclub which really looks like it's been patched out by the 90s internet. There is no real objective, enjoy the music, talk to people, level up and dance. I just wanna see you. Damn.
Apartments. Apple Source Apartments. The game creator Shalom Vlagon has something for us. The game is about landlords, where they portray them as nasty tumors of capitalism society. They are lensing of humanity. In the game, the tenants have muted into anthropomorphic appeals. Now you know the meaning of the game's name. Apple Source Apartments is more about the message than the gameplay. It's a game that tries to push the agenda against capitalist society. The game is made with a rotten green and yellow art style combined with a very haunting back music. Now if this game's agenda is good or not, it's definitely too political for my channel. But yeah, that's Apple Source Apartments. Neighbor. Neighbor is a game made by Horatiu and posted on Ichio. The game is made with GB Studio and there are 5 chapters. The game is black and white with of course Game Boy graphics and it's also playable on the site. The game is about you finding your dream apartment but there is much more behind that. There are mysteries and secrets in the house of the protagonist. The game looks really interesting and it's definitely mature oriented. I love to play old GB games. And I played with this game for a bit and definitely will come back when I have some extra time on my hands. Squirrel Stapler Well that's... well that's quite a name for a game. This game is a part of a collection. In the collection there are 12 different games all made in 10 days from 12 different development teams. But we need to talk about Squirrel Stapler. Now I think the name would be enough to give you a picture of the point of the game. And I need sadly to tell you that, yeah, that thing you do in the game, you can shoot squirrels if you succeed in that, and then you can use their carcasses to staple them on your beloved wife who is dead. Well, the game is disturbing and unsettling because in the game you also killed your wife, and now you're talking to her and stapling squirrels on her. Uh, let that marinate. I also saw some conspiracy theory floating around how you killed your wife and you were low on food and ate a poisonous scroll and you start hallucinating uh, but maybe that's a bit too much credit to give the game. Plus you will meet God in the game and I won't spoil anymore. To dawn and back. First of all there is a game about prison animals with that name but that's not the game we are talking about for this entry. But instead, To Down the Back, made by Jordan Black. The game is free and available on Ichio. You are Jacob Lee and you have been set to live with your aunt in the last days of winter vacation. But there happens something terrible. This is, and I need to address, a non-violent game. It's a surreal horror game that is inspired by visual novels and immersive sims. You will talk to weird characters, explore more than 20 unique dreams determined by your actions, and the game features an abstract world filled with 2D characters with sometimes also funny dialogue. That night, stepped by Blood River. Taylor Sviatansky, and I butchered that name probably, made an emotional experience rather than a game. The game's slowly soundtrack is almost dreamlike. But is the game surreal? Yes, definitely. It's quite creative also. It's a first person walking simulator with creative visual puzzles. It's a neat experience worth trying out and I don't have much more to say about it. Just immerse yourself in this game. Mayhem Mansion The game was made by Logic Obscure Products. If I'm correct, a remake of a game that is called Exploding Lips. This definitely feels and looks like a Doom game. But the game is definitely much more weirder. In the game you explore a haunted mansion full of giant lips, TVs with legs and books and many other things that want to kill you for no reason apparently. Ain't it just wonderful? You can explore the Mayhem Mansion but you can also go into the city to clean out the infestation. I mean it's a weird FPS where you have a crossbow but also exploding gorillas. It's bizarre and definitely weird. Crimson. This entry is much more surreal than the last one. Crimson is a challenging rhythm platformer featuring industrial electronic metal music. I mean, maybe it sounds good, but in actuality it is. 
The game was made by Crying Psycho. The game is about, well, you're an unknown spawn going through a hellish world. The game is very colorful and accompanied by satanic symbols and images. I would describe this game as Doom meets Meat Boy. It's a hard hitting game, but sadly there is only a devil available at this time. What light? The game was made by a creator named Samu. So what did Samu prepare for us? Well, RPG Maker game, which promises to blow your mind. So what is this game about? Well, it's about exploration, weird stuff and talking to weird people. The graphics are pretty simple, but when you get into the fights, the enemies look hand drawn in art style. You will also need to gear up, fight weird enemies, I mean, what the hell, play the game and see why the game has good reviews. Space Funeral 2 Space Funeral 2 is a fan game developed by Health Alien and it's originally made to celebrate the 8th anniversary of Space Funeral. If you watch the second layer, you know about which game we are talking about. The game is set in the original timeline of Space Funeral and Half Alien stated that Space Funeral 1 is one of the holy trinity of the RPG Maker 2003 and that's why this game was made in the first place. If you enjoyed the first game and wanted to play some more for some reason, Maybe this game is worth trying out. Copper Odyssey This is an RPG maker game made by Kam. It's a surreal JRPG game that is full of strange creatures based on print making materials. Is that weird enough? Gameplay wise, it's pretty standard. But the thing is why we love to dive into indie titles are the weird and surreal games. Like this one. Even if the game is somewhat simple, it's made with passion, it's extremely colorful and everything pops. And it's a funny game. The game revolves around four characters. They were resurrected by an angel and he is a mastermind behind this operation and he wants to retake his studio back. Oram Pugwinga is a game made by Isopodomancer. It's a bizarre fantasy RPG where you take control of a knight of the depths. The goal of the game is to defeat the MS, a colossal floating ball of grease that will block the sky and turn the world to hell and cause an apocalypse. I mean the game is weird but I'm not quite sure if I would put it so deep on the list. But I already mentioned that the list is a bit messed up in some instances, but that's okay. The game has solid illustrations, you saw the gameplay, maybe you will be drawn to it. If so, check the game out. The Wyoming Incident So this is quite weird because the Wyoming Incident is when somebody hacked a TV station and it's supposed to be a creepypasta. But after I click on the chart, it led me to remember places which we already covered in the last layer, I think. So sadly, I need to skip this because I also didn't find any game with this name. Endlessly Empty So back to the surreal stuff, to a game made by Eric. It's a funky and surreal RPG maker game. The game is about a surreal post-life adventure. It's again focusing on art and important topics, but it tries to stay delicate. A game that tries to mix together emotions and the surreal aspect of creating a journey. It's a story about life and loss. The creator didn't have the intention to make a game about sunshine and rainbows, but rather a game that reflects our deepest fears. The game tries to raise questions about society, existence and identity. The game can be considered a bit rough around the edges and unpolished, but again, if you feel that the art style is getting to you, considering trying out. Bad vibes. Let's get a bit retro, let's say. The game was made by Pifal and it's definitely a game inspired by Doom or Wolfenstein. Now, as we look at surreal games, you can imagine that this game leads on that side, and it does. Techno and drum and bass music are coming to you while you shoot beams out of your hands, shoot some weird looking enemies in a maze-like structure and trying to avoid acid-filled pits. Bad vibe is weird and it's a wild homage to the golden era of first-person shooters. Coochie is made by Julian Palacios. Now the levels, or better to say art, made by Enzo Cucci 
takes place in 51 of his drawings and combines them in a dreamlike maze. I mean you can say it's a playable art gallery and it's definitely quite interesting. Each level has a vague theme. The paintings were scanned and transformed into 3D worlds with PlayStation 1 looking hand draw graphics, let's say. The game's plot is about you exploring the paintings and collecting eyes which are scattered around the levels. Plus, you are stuck by skulls. Just enjoy the weirdness and enjoy the fine art. Unholy eyeballs. Why are eyeballs always chasing you? What is it with the eyeballs? Well, that's the question made by Z Bill. Unholy Eyeballs explores the meta of eyeballs in horror games. The game was made for the haunted PlayStation 1 Jam Summer of Shivers in 2021. It is also his first game developed in 3D environment. It's bizarre, the game is played in a first person and for whatever reason if you talk to somebody the subtitles are displayed on your left and the right side of your screen. The music is... Uh, this, the sound is more like sound effects of wind and static noises and they are quite annoying. By the way you can also poke the eyes with a fork, that's also a thing. Atman's Hyperspace Chronicles To quote the creator of the game Scrambled Vagabond Here is a game I made for a jam. I wanted to explore the literal translation of phenomenological mechanics in a psychedelic mythos and fuse them with the element of Bhakti Yoga cosmology in praxis. Well, hmm. Okay, so the game is about Atman on an adventure throughout hyperspace in a retro funky spaceship pilot sim. If you want to go on a trip, here is a ticket. Well, if it's a good trip, well that's another question. Escape from Jig Escape from Jig is a point and click puzzle game made by Mateusz Skatnik. Your main goal is to get out of the weird room filled with old arcade machines and strange computers. Now there is also someone else with you and that's an alien hooked to VR set. It's a pretty short game, but it has some charms. It definitely leans a bit on the surreal side. The Sunday Museum The next one is a first person walking sim. Set in you, you guessed it, in a museum. It's let's say a retro experimental game in which you can interact with science or TV sets in the museum. The concept of modern art which is displayed is quite unsettling sometimes. The game has relaxing music, but it will change depending on the TV stations you watch. Where the game gets more weird and surreal is when you leave the museum and enter what appears to be a bandic building. Respite 2.0 Modus Interactive made Respite 2 and it's a virtual relaxation software. So this game has a very retro look to it, with relaxing music. As you enjoy the game it will gradually change the color palettes and the music will slowly shift. The game has a soundtrack that reminds me of Gran Turismo. It has that jazz vibe to it and it's definitely fitting for the game. The game will take you through forests, through cities at night and also the sea. But there is also some sinister in the game. But I will leave that for you to discover. Sluggish Mori series. We already talked about this on this layer, and there are games made by Jack Spinoza, and there are four games in the series. Again, the games are pretty good, they are strange and philosophical, and very surreal. It's a personal adventure that you wanna take alone and see how the game makes you feel. If you have an open mind for experimentations, try this game out and also the Sluggish Mori series are considered as classics in the surreal corner of the gaming world. Misery This little game was made in the RPG Maker by the developer Snarl Owl. The game lets you explore the dreams of a lonely space station occupant. The unnamed occupant has been on the stations for years. Needless to say, death has taken its toll on the poor protagonist's mind. This occasionally shows in his dreams, but there are still glimmers of hope. The game, much like many others, rely on the atmosphere and the mood to keep the player engaged. The main focus of the story lies in the exploration and uncovering the past of the protagonist. The game was very human inspired, which can be also said for many games on this list. 
a life gallery. Life gallery is a puzzle game with unique illustrations, style of art design that leads you into a world of profound horror. The game was produced by 751 Games and its set of illustrations. In each you will need to solve puzzles, unravel mysteries and explore the dark story that is hidden in the core of the game. People like to compare it to the Rusty Lake series for some reason. It has an amazing art style and also good presentation. It's worth your time, but it's quite disturbing. Age of Deliverance The next one on this list was made by Extra Value Menu. The game is pretty unknown I would say, and the game was released in 2014, but it was updated in 2022, which is impressive. Now to the game. It's a short RPG game. It's about how God lost faith in humanity and basically wanted to wipe out everyone. But one lucky guy escaped. The lucky John. John had a solitary life but he is now low on supplies and needs to go on an adventure to find more supplies and survive another day. Octopus City Blues. It is an adventure game set in a city which is built around a giant octopus. That's a good start, am I right? The game was made by Ghost in a Bottle. The game claims to be an authentic octopus city simulation. You assume the role of Kaf Kafkairan, a currently middle-aged octopus blood addict and a tentacle dreamer. Kaf has also bizarre nightmares about the world being populated by twisted creatures. To aid the inhabitants of his dream, he must explore the underside of the towering metropolis and learn more about the seedy lives of the citizens. Along the way he becomes entangled in a conspiracy with far-reaching implications for Octopus City. Sadly this game isn't out yet, but it should be released in 2024 and the art style looks just amazing, I absolutely love it. Bad Milk Bad Milk is a puzzle video game developed by Dreaming Media. The game is supposed to be a art game that features a number of puzzles involving full motion video and audio clues. In the game you drink spilled milk and collapse on the table. This launches a puzzle game in which the player must complete a series of minigames to obtain clues to escape their situation. It's freaking weird. Is it a good game? Mm, I'm not quite sure. It's a weird and surreal, definitely, and the ending is, hmm, well, just don't drink bad milk and everything will be okay. The game even managed to get a reward at the 2002 Independent Gaming Festival. I don't know how and don't ask me please. Darkest Corners The next entry is sadly an early access game by Spookle McPoogle. Ain't that a funny name? So, it's a weird short horror visual novel. It's about 8 minutes long at this point. The game takes you on a journey to the border between life and shadow. Discover the secrets of creation and see the light of ancient gods. It's a very dark and disturbing game with body horror. The game has almost a Silent Hill vibe to it. Also, be prepared for some jump scares. The music in the game is very low key. It's creeping in the background and you only get so much to set you in a good mood for the game. And because this is only a demo, I won't touch on the story aspect so much. Nails I'm so thankful for the link on the chart because typing nail browser game gets you all sort of games. But the game we wanna see is about a browser based experience where you interact with 27 surreal animated scenes often experimenting with movement of human's body. Well, Nails is an art project created by Hooger Bruge which combines high quality animation, surreal art and a touch of body horror let's say. It's definitely quirky and can be funny sometimes, it was for me at least. It's definitely strange and the link of the game doesn't work also by the way. A bright guy studio games. Flashing lights warning. This is what you see if your brain gets ripped out. This is the description of the chart created on Bright Grime Studio Games. The link leads me to Skeleton Zone Travel Emergence. And it's the only game from this guy I think, at least on the Steam account. But back to the game. The game is 
An FPS where you play skeleton zone and you must ensure everyone to safety from enemy forces. It's kind of a horror game with some survival elements added and it has definitely too many flashing white lights. I don't know if the game is worth playing, I mean there are some weird things going on but the lights are just killing me man. So this name translates to English to hum hum. The link on the chart isn't active. The chart states it's a top down adventure game with a question mark. Well I tried to dig up something but the only thing I found was plush dogs on Japanese sites. And after searching so many surreal stuff I found the plush dogs are relaxing distraction. But I definitely didn't find any game. So maybe if any of you know some more about this leave a comment down below. Thank you. Bubsy 3D Bubsy visited James Turrell retrospective. Well Bubsy 3D is a very infamous game from the PlayStation 1 era and it would be weird you didn't hear about it. It was a 3D platformer and it was downright bad. Now this entry is the spiritual successor to Bubsy 3D. The game was created as a tribute to the 18th anniversary. The game follows a scenario of the real life retrospective tribute of postmodern artist James Turrell. The game was more a joke, if I'm not mistaken, and it's bad as the original game. I mean, even looking at the original game, it it was kind of weird and surreal, especially with Bubsy's weird stare. But this game, when you went to the museum, it gets even weirder. Especially if you compare Bubsy's size to a normal human and see that Bubsy is actually huge. But again, the character models are out of proportions in general. Helios. This is a quite unique game. Let me explain you why. Where most games were made by humans. Okay. Well, this was apparently made by aliens. At least that's what Saint Pocket stated. On one stormy night in 1993, the game appeared on his home computer. And that's it. I hope that aliens will visit me and randomly edit my videos. That would be a quite nice surprise to see. So, the game was a MS-DOS game. I mean, the game isn't something out of the ordinary, well it has some strange things going on but overall it's just a puzzle game. But here is the catch, this isn't a full game but rather just a part. But if you want to play the full game you need to pay $25 to unlock full access to basically the same game which is just harder. I think this is only on the list because of its weird backstory. And I'm not complaining, let's move on. Ben Jettler Games Ben Jettler is a game developer which has 8 different games on each site. All can be playable in the browser. He has a very interesting design and the game ranged from a game that was made to look like a Nokia 3310. And please don't tell me you don't know which mobile device is that. He is also into pixel style for what I can tell and most of his games are like Game Boy games. They look very clean and well made and most of them are horror games. Garage Bad Dream Adventure Well this is a quite bizarre. It's a Japanese horror adventure game. The game was written and designed by Japanese surrealist artist Tomomi Sakuba. The game was limited to 3000 releases because the game didn't draw so much attention. The game is a click and point adventure with puzzle elements. The graphics in the game are pre-rendered and digitized. The game feels dark and filthy and how they combine the characters with mechanical and animal parts is quite weird. The game definitely builds upon its visual but there is also quite interesting story going on and a quite disturbing one at that. It has many adult things going on and everything you can imagine from adult themes and I mean the bad stuff. Again this is just a disclaimer if you want to dig this game somewhere up. By the way there is a remake of the game with an English patch if you really want to play it. The Dark Eye is a 1995 first person psychological horror adventure game. Experience the terror of Edgar Allan Poe who was an American writer and poet. He's also considered the inventor of the detective fiction genre as well as a significant contributor to the emerging genre of, of science fiction. So the game follows three of his stories. 
the cask of Amontillado, the Telltale Heart and Berenice from the perspective of both murder and victim view. The game is linear, it presented you with no choice to make and no points. It's more about you find the next spot where the game would progress. It's almost like a walking simulator in its earliest form. It's quite an interesting game, especially if you're in Edgar's work. Belong Nowhere. A game featuring fear, terror, trauma, parasites and machines. Does it sound interesting? It's a game that is still in the alpha phase, if I'm correct, and it still isn't out. The iceberg didn't also feature any download link. The concept of the game is how life is boring and how you feel trapped, like stuck in the past. The game is a top-down adventure game with hand-driven graphics. It's definitely not looking bad. Also, the game features some puzzles and some weird looking environments, very post-apocalyptic looking. And also you need to be warned because death lurks on every corner and you need to watch out for every decision you make. Ghost Suburb 2 Let's talk about one more surreal horror RPG maker game, made by Carrion Blue. It's about a nurse called OK. OK? OK. <laughs> I'm sorry. Let's continue. Well, it's actually pretty sad because the nurse OK is not OK, as she suffers from insomnia. So what can you expect from this game? I mean, first of all, it's visually interesting but cool looking game. It's very colorful, but there are also parts where the game is much darker and definitely bizarre. Just to mention it again, the gameplay is quite simple. But you will find things like brain failures, tumors and so on, which is definitely bizarre. Also, it's a pretty short game that can be completed in 2 hours. But the game offers you different endings to explore. Cohabitation One more game by Algebra Falcon. First of all, the game has some warnings like blood, violence, frightening imagery, mentions of things I can't pronounce on my channel and mild light flashes. It's a, it's a game you can also play in your browser. The game is set 200 light years away and the planet Alkia drifts into space. It is home to two sentient species, the peaceful Alkynes and the terrifying Hall, who live of hunting former as prey. Task with reclaiming a radio tower to help find a planet capable of harboring life. Will you help the species make their escape? Or is there some other way to cohabitate? It's a point and click adventure with a pretty futuristic soundtrack. The game starts with choices you need to answer and then you're suddenly awake. And see, it was all a dream. And I adore the cute little rat. And please don't google just the name of the game because there is a good chance you will find adult mangas but also steam games which are also adult visual novels. <laughs> Overall, it's a well-made game worth checking out, and this game can be found of itch.io if you wanna play it. Agony of a Dying MMO This game has a very interesting concept. So the game was made by Salem Hughes, and as you could imagine, it's about a game set in a dying MMO. This was part of the haunted PlayStation 1 demo disc in 2021. The plot of the game, to not spoil too much, is from a perspective of a player that plays Gardens of Widow, a game that was large and had a popular fanbase, but it's reaching its end. Various fractions in the game will have the last fight, but some are for the search for the NPC that grants you ultimate power. The game has a really ominous vibe, especially if you've ever been sucked into an in a multiplayer game of any sort. It can sometimes really feel like you're living another life. The game is considered a walking simulator with of course PlayStation 1 aesthetics and the game is quite bizarre and surreal at times, but also disturbing. It was also one of the highlights of the demo disc as far as I have read. Panic. The next game was from 1993 for the Sega CD. It is a point and click puzzle game. This game is also known in Japan as Switch. In the game, a virus has infected every world's computer system. And your character Slap and his dog Stick were sucked into a TV. And they go to a mission to fix the central computer. The scene you will see in the game can be absurd but also funny. 
sometimes you will be just staring at the screen and saying what the heck did I just witness? Because every of the puzzle in the game you will get a cutscene when you finish it. They range from funny to charming to weird and a bit disturbing. 99 rooms. And the last game on the layer 4 is 99 Rooms. 99 Rooms was a unique internet art project that mixes wall paintings, photography, animation and sound. The game was launched in June 2004. Sadly the flash version of the game doesn't work anymore on newer mobiles or browsers. The only way it can be played is with the Adobe Flash Debugger. It's a point and click adventure game where you have to escape a room let's say. It has moody music, the game has also not a proper storyline, as again it's more an art project than a game. There are YouTube walkthroughs if you want to check them out to see how the game looks and if you don't want to play around with Adobe Flash Player Debugger. Cosmology of Kyoto. The first entry of Layer 5 starts with a retro game that is an adventure game developed by Soft Edge. It's a Japanese game from 1993. The game didn't get any good critics, but it gained some loyal fans over the years. It's a game that lacks a clear goal and emphasizes open exploration, giving players the freedom to explore. The game deals with historical, horror, religious, and educational themes and feature things like karma and reincarnation in the gameplay mechanics. The game is set in the medieval city of Kyoto. I mean, it's in the title. The year is 1000, during the Heian period of Japanese history. But there is much more to say here. You will see many weird things and often you will be thinking, what the heck did you just saw? From monks flying on skeletons, people transforming into demons and seeing overall many weird Japanese inspired monsters. Keys Gather the Meteorite Motel Do you want surreal games? Say hello then to Geezer Gus, it's an indie RPG game where you play as an old man that is looking for, for an alien meteorite to absorb its power. By the way, the creator's name is also Geezer Gus. In the motel are also even occupants who are interested in harvesting its power. Now your goal in this RPG game is to make your way through the unpredictable and dangerous motel into reaching the meteorite first. It's a chaotic and colorful game with 10 bizarre acid trip like cutscenes to experience. Plus I need to add that the game has 30 unique soundtracks to blend in with the crazy art style. The game was removed from Steam for some reason and it's only available on Ichio. Just to let you know. Serious Sam Rome. Once again the iceberg chart led me to one of my favorite YouTubers out there. And that's Mudahar from Some Ordinary Gamers. This is about a 7 year old video in which Muda plays a Russian Serious Sam ROM hack. And I also need to give a big shout out to Crow Team, a game developer studio from my home country. So everyone not familiar with Serious Sam is a fast paced FPS where you need to fight hordes of enemies coming you all at once. And the game has definitely a cult like following. Now to this ROM hack. Well, the game is pretty simple let's say. It's mostly consists of running around in long hallways and in the middle of the game it gets a bit interesting in which you visit some rooms that look actually like normal serious Sam levels. But you will occasionally find that the game plays tricks on you and tries to jump scare you. And the game also has a bloody ending which I'm not going to spoil. But overall the ROM hack is meh. So let's continue to the next entry. Pucker in the woods. Jay-Z store made this little, I guess we could call it a game. Also the game name is actually spelled with a F. So you're not a pucker in the woods, but rather a fuck the woods. It's a point and click adventure novel like game with very bad photoshop characters. This game is about wacky misadventures as our characters try to make it through the last day of high school. What weird is that the characters are looking like they're almost 40 for whatever reason. It's about how a group of friends on the last day of the school lost their friend and the big question is, is the pucker in the woods? Please be warned if you play this game you could lose a few brain cells along the way. A League of Piss This game is a warning because if children play as they will go to school 
they will get superpowers and probably kill the teacher. Yeah, that's a good start. To describe this game, it's a point and click adventure slash visual novel type of a thing. But there are also a few other things thrown into that mix. John Fogel, Annie and the Purple Hat Man have escaped the scrutiny of the police so far. But when the police mysteriously disappear, they are forced into action. But things get soon complicated. And a 3 day road trip starts. Isn't this exciting? The game is wacky. Plus, I need to give credit to the creator because the music is creative. Crime Zone. The next one on the list is again by a creator we already mentioned a few times. And that's the Katamatis. The game is based on a loop, let's say. Where you every time you move, you would play as a different character. It's a first person adventure game about cops and criminals and the zone that they live in. The game has a bit crude appearance, there are no narrative twists as such, the switching of the perspective from one character to another makes a labyrinth of the story. It's definitely weird. Pucker in the Gulag What did you say? Another Pucker is lost and now he's a Gulag? Yes, you heard me right. Another Pucker needs our help. This is gonna be short, I'm only going to repeat what the creator of the Iceberg said there about this game. It's a visual novel, it's dumb, it's crude and most importantly it's annoying. Nobita's Biohazard Finally, a real game. Now you see, Nobita's Biohazard is an indie survival horror game created with a RPG maker 2000 by the author named AAA or AAA in 2007. It's a parody slash crossover of the first Resident Evil game. The game reenacts Raccoon City Mansion incident in the context of the famous Japanese slice of life manga slash anime Dorimon. I really like the game for some reason. It's very well made and it has over the top violence. The game was for quite some time only available in Japan, but in 2014, a translator called Naoi Kiriyama provided the translation of this game. Plus the game spawned many fan-made sequels, mods and so on. The game is worth checking out if you're into resi games and want to mix things up. Merry Cake Flowered Christmas This is a point and click browser game. I can tell you two things about this game. First, it's a French game, but the game can also be played in English. And the second and the most important thing is that I don't know what the hell is going on. I was trying to click on various things, ending up in getting some texts or weird songs and I was confused the whole time because I didn't know what the heck was just going on. And Tumbra. Now, Wildhead made something a bit more interesting and definitely much better than the previous entry, in my opinion. Now, Antabra is a creepy, scary horror game and it's incredibly hard. The game is something a bit special as the creator stated he made this game from all his nightmares, fears, anger, sorrow and misery. But let's be realistic, how many game developers stated the same thing, but okay. From the gameplay, you are seeing that the game is something like that old dungeon crawlers text based games. But the game is quite dark and also surreal and it has a scene where Jesus was eaten by Pac-Man. Screamy Bingus This is a game made by Cyclas. It's a flash game and inspired by hit 3DS classics. It's such a weird game and it made me laugh. You basically see real life photos and you need to shoot various things which the game points to you. It has also funky music in the background. I don't know what to say, it's quite weird, it's a simple game. Maybe you will have a few minutes of fun with it. Illegal Crime Game Angry Geometry is a game developer we already mentioned. This time we are talking about his game Illegal Crime Game. It's a very crude and basic looking game. The game was made in RPG Maker, and I mean of course it is. The goal of the game is to explore the city and commit crimes. So it's simple, collect money and commit crimes. Despite the MS-DOS looking graphic, the game was pretty well received and many praised it to be funny and cheesy at times. Ghost of Aliens This is a pretty old RPG game, like from 2008. I mean, it's not that old, or is it? <laughs> 
follow the adventures of Atom and an old man named Gwaldon. On October 1st, 1963, an alien spaceship crashes on the planet of, of Appalachia in the desert near the town of Roseville. For five years, the alien was living inside of the ship and eventually died and becomes a ghost. Gwaldon the old man tells a prophecy that a hero would crash from the sky down to the world of Appalachia and defeat the five doom beasts that are scattered around the world. It has definitely an interesting story and a pretty neat art style, but from what I can tell, it's a pretty unknown game, but hey, maybe some of you guys will give it a go. Dream. I hope I pronounced the name of this game right. So, the game was made by creator Leon. And the iceberg chart said it's a very bad FPS game. At first glance, it looked very surreal and many things looked out of place. After playing it, I realized it's even worse than initially thought. And it didn't help the fact that everybody screamed at me to die over and over again. Skip this to not lose valuable brain cells. Prosperity Pad. This is quite interesting. Well, it's a collection of video games or levels designed to coach you through a mindful training process that will cleanse your karma and attend to a multitude of life problems. Sounds interesting. Uh, well, I don't know, it's weird as hell, let me tell you. It feels like those early life simulation games or online chats like Second Life or Worlds.com. The game also states, imagine what it would be if you would be free from relationship issues family problems and concerns. It's time to get a handle of all of that. Have the freedom to do what you need to do. Be who you need to be. Well, if this game really lets you succeed at that, it's a hard question. And if you somehow succeed, let me know. Bugger World Imagine that clowns have invaded your home. This is the story of Bugger World. You need to cross many worlds to defeat enemy clowns. Pay and bring peace to your domain. You, I mean, you play like a little dog, which looks a bit spaced out, but hey, that's enough for me. Also, the music in the game is a trip. <laughs> Other than that, it's a standard RPG game, and it's made by Sebastian. My hole is a mouth of dirt. A lonely, clocked being called Mole services instructions from what he believes to be the voice of God. As he wanders a desolate, outworldly underground, his fate is tested and he must deliver a baby. The game focuses on bringing your mind to a dark place for about 50 to 80 minutes, presenting interesting and strange scenarios to immerse yourself in a world where you explore a twisted underground. The game is quite interesting with dealing themes like trust, faith, love, hate and fatherhood. And the atmosphere is also quite good. But the game tackles also religious themes, so if you're sensitive to this, maybe consider skipping this game. Gobo Goes The next game was made by Roman. The game is a surreal isometric game like Bastion. For example, by the way, I have a review about this game somewhere on my channel. You can check it out if you have some time. Back to Gobo Goes. It's an adventure-like game, but much more surreal than Bastion for sure. It's sort of a point-and-click game also. This game is thought to be the spiritual sequel to Funny Pizza Land. Haha, <laughs> if you still remember that game. <laughs> Overall, I don't know. If you love puzzles, sure, but the goddamn soundtrack is killing me. First of all, there isn't any, and the whole soundtrack contains only wind noises combined with some clicking noises, and it's very annoying and irritating. League of Scumbags It's a browser game found on Game Jolt. It's a very crude game. I mean, I won't sugarcoat it. I mean, the game hasn't good graphics, it has a repetitive jingle, and it's about you going to the church with your friends. But then you were pushed by some random guy, then you land in a trippy world where you meet a huge bee that tells you you need to receive his word. Then you wake up and your adventure starts. I was not positively surprised by the game, but maybe you feel otherwise. Chu Tang. It's a Japanese point and click game by the director Osamo Sato, the sequel to Eastern Mind, The Lost Souls of Tang No. 
If you paid attention, you'll know that he is the creator behind LSD Dream Emulator from the PlayStation 1, which we mentioned in the first layer. The game was released in 1995, but it was considered lost media until 2013. Even Osamu Sato didn't have the game, and it was basically rediscovered by a random dude who thought he had the game in his attic. And then, after searching it, he actually found it. And the game got a fan translation. The story is about you first encountering Nanshu. Nanshu explains he was set to guard Chu Tang, but a dark entity named Chao In broke him into pieces. Like the previous game we mentioned on the chart, the game is very surreal and that's a thing that Osamu Sato is known for. Strawberry Cubes The next game was made by Lauren Schmidt. The game has maybe a cute name, but what is the game about is a better question I think. Well, the game tries to represent your nightmares. The game is mostly a 2D side scroll with SNES like graphics. The color and the art style are mostly based on red and black color palettes. And yeah, you will run around trying to make sense of what is happening. But I guess that's how nightmares work. As we already been talking about nightmares, sadly the game is very unstable and it has many problems with crashes and glitches. Soup 0.9 The next one on this list is a Dreamwalker game. Well, the game starts with day one and you are thrown into a weird looking level and from that point you are just exploring until the game decides you to throw into another world or another level let's say. Every level is different and unique and they do get a bit unsettling as you move on. And also every level has unique music in it. Ectastica is a survival horror game for MS-DOS. Again, one more retro game. This game is played from a third person perspective. The setting is in Northern Europe in, in 928 AD. You are a traveler who came upon a town named Tirich, hoping to find food and shelter. However, the town appears to be invaded by demons. The traveler must help the town's people and lift the curse from the town by freeing the young sorceress Ectastica from her possession. It's an early 3D game, so it's somehow limited. You will need to sneak or run away from different enemies. Later you can also fight back. Overall it's an interesting game, but it aged quite a bit. The world has been sad since Tuesday. Do you know why the world has been sad since Tuesday? Hmm, good question. This entry was made by Fred Brednarski. The game was inspired by the short story called A Very Old Man with Enormous Wings by Gabriel Marquez. This is a quiet and short game. There is a plot going on, but I won't spoil it. The game is pretty simplistic and it's worth a try if you're into short, story driven games. Paranoia Escape. Finally, we see one more PlayStation 1 title on the list. Released exclusively in Japan on the PlayStation 1 in 1998. It's the only game developed and published by Matilda. The game is definitely weird and it really baffles me what the heck is going on. But I need to mention it one more time, that's the whole plot of this video. There is an interesting backstory here if you want to dive a bit deeper. Because the man behind this was a special effect and makeup professional artist who actually was behind the first Predator movie. His name was known in the USA as Screaming Mad George. And he's also known for his bizarre handmade things. And one of the things he did was this little project. The more bizarre thing is that this is a first person flipper game. It's totally wacky and over the top. Ultra Business Tycoon 3 So I didn't expect to see a text based game when I saw the name of this game. Well, but it is what it is. This game is what a corporate executive life looks with a gram of happy powder. Ultra Business Tycoon 3 claims to be the part of the 90s business simulation game and it does a good job replicating text games. This isn't a game for everyone indefinitely. Some will be entertained but I can see some people would just 
close their focus playing through this game because it's just made of text. Parade game. The next game is a RPG game from the game Jolt Page, but it's a quite old version. And the creator stated there is a remastered version on the way, but this was one year ago. And it's in Spanish. You're playing as a guy with a pyramid head with the eye. That's not in the slightest weird. Other than that, it's a quite normal RPG maker game for what I can tell. The only thing I can add is that I didn't find any download link to the game. Not even on Genjol from the older version of the game. Increpair.com So this site contains basically a collection of games. The games have mostly a pixelated art style. Now, why is this site on the list? Well, well that's quite simple. The list of the games you find on this site range from simple games to simple adult like games with dark humor, hate symbols and so on. And yeah, this is still an active site with free games plus there are a bunch of these games on this site if you want to check them out I mean. So really that eh? This is a Portuguese puzzle game. It's a surreal cult adventure. You will talk to bizarre creatures, solve puzzles and learn a lot about surrealism. The game was released in 1999. In his 20s, the artist led Andre Brayton got together a crew to create a new form of art. It's a point and click game where you need to solve puzzles in exotic environments. From what I can tell and the reviews I read, the game is very interesting and it has a lot of love put in it and the game has also English translations if you want to play it. Maka Maka So Maka Maka is a 1992 RPG game for the Super Famicom made by Office Kukan. So let me a bit explain the story and what the hell is going on. It takes place on Earth, where Ultraman-style aliens, a alien princess and a evil faceless Ant-Man are completely normal, and the main character is reincarnated form of an alien prince who defeated an evil demon one millennia ago. Now completely resurrected and gained full of his power, the demon king wants revenge and organizing the Maka Maka Society to conquer Earth. It's a standard JRPG game full of quirky Japanese humor that makes you wonder if the designers were of something while making this game. You don't know the half of it. Fins of the Father Welcome to the big race, Selventa. This is the one you've been working for. It is the race that ended your father seven years ago. Now you can finally make peace. Are you ready? This is the description of this entry. It's a top-down car race with licensed music somehow. And I love how the fishes are on everything. Well, after the top-down race, you will be a fish driving a fish motorcycle and shoot flying squids from the sky. I let you to decide if this is real. Weird and unfortunate things are happening. This game was made by Saphir Dream Games. The game is about join Alicia as she tries to save her niece from a city warped and twisted by otherworldly beings in this eccentric horror RPG. The game clearly drives inspiration from games like Earthbound but also Yumaniki. It offers a cute art style combined with sinister elements to set a good atmosphere for the player. All of this is wonderfully combined with a lovely soundtrack that sets the mood just right. Also, I need to warn that this game is work in progress and currently it's around 60% complete, which is around 8 to 10 hours of playtime. Or, 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 however you pronounce it, is a game made by developer or always great that you name your game after yourself heck the next video will be called just snorky then but back to ori it's a walking simulation game with low poly aesthetics and we saw a bunch of these already but is there ever enough of them really the game just throws you in without any explanation of what is going on and you will find yourself in a gritty apartment building the game doesn't include music at least in the beginning, 
only footsteps which echo in the empty hallways. The game is very praised in the comment section, but also it is a bit slow. The walking speed can be annoying and the lack of interaction. Also, the game was made in 2020, but it's still in the beta phase and it was last updated just last year. Keep that. I was kind of sad when I saw that the game had only 370 views. Maybe some of you can help with that, but after playing it, hmm, let's say that Heat of Death is an experiment to make the player experience something new. And how many games on the list just stated the same thing? So the player travels 20,000 kilometers to reach the goal in the surreal monochrome world with various challenges and hostile areas. The developer behind the game is called Steam Blood, and the game can be found on Game Jolt. I found out there is a game with the same name with a roguelike space card game, but he that is a bit weirder than that. Well, back to the game. It's black and white, and it has somewhat an ominous soundtrack, let's say. Other than that, the game is played in a top down perspective, and it's played with the mouse. After playing 10 minutes, I couldn't progress to the next section. Sadly, I don't have any more comments of the game other than the character which you are playing, which looks like a zombie, I guess? Neftalia. Neftalia is a weird one. So, it's a free PC game developed by a Japanese game developer called Forte. It's about a white stick figure who is exploring the lands of, you guessed it, Neftalia. And here he needs to find 14 movies. If you succeed in that, you will win the game. There is no text in the game outside the menus. The game is more about exploring the environment and less about directly searching out the movies. You will meet people along the way, but they won't talk much. And the creator stated there are a few very hidden surprises in the surreal world of Neftalia. Painted Tomb The better question is who painted the tomb and if it's an ongoing thing, because it would be a weird hobby. The game was made by Arthouse Game. The game is about a story of companionship, betrayal, misguided incarnations toward revenge and ultimately the road to do something else, although the pain and the memory of misgivings may linger. It's quite an interesting game, it has simple graphics and it's a bit trippy. There isn't any simple way to explain the game, you need to make sense for yourself. Help me. No, really, help me. It's simple. If you enjoyed the video, there is a little button down there which you can press. But what isn't easy is to digest the game Help Me. Okay, it's not that hard, but it catches you off guard. Help Me is a unique adventure game where choices matter. You need to get out of a house, but can you do it? The game was released in 2021 and was made by Veles Lovecraft. It features hand-driven graphics with a black and white art style. It is a bit scary, but sometimes it's funny but also morbid. You will need to play the game over and over again until you find the right part. Also, the game has three different endings to explore. Wallace Lovecraft Let me help you to get to know Wallace Lovecraft. So Wallace Lovecraft was the creator of the previous entry, but he has also a few more games up his sleeve. Games like The Art of Killing the Dragon, No Low and holidays. Like Help Me, the game follows a similar art style and gameplay, and most of the games are positively reviewed. All of these games can be found on Steam if you're interested to check the creator out. BLBMO Games Another creator landed on the list, which isn't a bad thing. And I love giving a shout out to indie developers, even if it's a just mal help on my side. But I probably guess they don't mind. This creator is known for making and producing free games and flash animations. On his page you can find 10 weird games. Games like Bin Below Bay, The Writing Circles of Legopless, Graham are just a few of them. The games are simple but most importantly feature weird visuals. The game you're looking right now is Beam Below Bay, a top-down shooter where you play as this green little guy. It is simple and fun. Let's move to the next entry. Mastaba Snoopy. Going a bit retro with this one. This entry can be accessed directly through the iceberg if you want to try it out. It's a browser text-based game. 
This iceberg chart also states it's a visual novel with body horror, but as I played it, I didn't find any visuals at all, only text, so maybe it's a mistake by the creator. The story was created by Twee. It starts with an unknown alien creature which acquires a children's forgotten book and mistakenly believes that it depicts the proper protocol of interaction with the human world. Subway Midnight the game was released in 2021, and it's apparently the ultimate subway explorer. I mean, if you ever search for such a game, it's like a haunted house style spooky, cute game set on a ghost infested train from the mind of Bobby Darkstar. The game premise is simple, board the train, run away from weirdos, solve some puzzles, make friends with some ghosts, and try not to become a ghost yourself. The game is a very visually focused game, which isn't something too surprising. It features also a very enjoyable jazz-like soundtrack. Like some of the game on the list, this is a quite good and interesting game. And most importantly, it's a full game, which can't be said for some titles we have encountered on our adventure. If the visuals and the gameplay wake your interest, you know what to do. Left way, one night in Bangkok. Nampung found herself in a strange place. What is really happening? The game was created in 2017 by Tong San. Left way is a horror adventure game with a creepy mystery where you can't guess what are you encountering? You will face unusual things and it seems like your character is not in the world she used to be. Left Way is based on puzzle solving in order to pass to the next scene. The game has some mixed reviews on Steam, which can be a warning. Mostly people will complain about the monster encounter problem and some complain that the game can be a bit lacking. On the other side, if we take a look at the graphics, they are simplistic and black and white. They have a clean design, which is a plus in my book, but it's highly debatable if this game is surreal. Portal Souls Portal Souls is a mystery adventure game. It was released in 2019, made by the studio SOT. It features again black and white hand driven graphics, which are in 2D. You take a role of a pharmacologist. You manage to get a valuable and mysterious stone after a hard journey. You decided to take a break at the hotel solves. But the next morning, something terrible happened. Somebody stole the stone. And this is how your adventure begins. It's a really relaxing game with silly dialogue. It's simple, but it has a captivating story and a relaxing soundtrack. Katray. So, if you didn't know, Katre means catfish in Vietnamese. And the game was made in 2019 by Tobidu. There isn't too much to talk about this game, it's a first person walking simulator. It's a very short game with low poly aesthetics. And it has an ominous vibe going on. DAD Driving It's finally something totally wacky. DAD Driving meshes a few things together. Mostly adventure-like elements but are also arcade. You drive around in a submissive car, bump into strangers and enjoy your vacation. Plus the game has three different endings and paths to explore. It's a short game that can be beaten 20 or 30 minutes. It's a game that doesn't take itself seriously and it features dogs in it. And most of the time you will be wondering what the hell you just saw. But that's the great part of this game. Urban Dream Bog Can you guess what is this game about? Let me tell you, it's a short 15 minute walking simulation game in a dreamlike urban environment. Created by Raykes Game Maker 5, released in 2021 by Pixel Power. The game features electro music and MS-DOS graphics. Ain't that a great mix? And now this game has cats in it. That's always good. Try the game out and see if it suits you. The moving speed can be a bit slow, but it's definitely nailed at 90s aesthetics. Sunken Heads is a surreal first person adventure exploration game inspired by the 90s point and click games. After returning home from a hard day, you will return to your apartment to find a mysterious note on your bed. 
Shortly you will find yourself in a surreal dream world full of strange creatures. The game was made by Horsehead Interactive and I love how his icon on the page is just like a Bojack Horseman but totally freaked out. I know it sounds weird but I love those early 3D games. It's copying that 90s style and it's very nice. The game is interesting with a good atmosphere and it can be found on Game Jolt. Sluggish Morse Pattern Circus Another game made by Jack Spinoza. The creator of the iceberg stated that he really enjoyed this game and that's why this game is its own entry. It's a clay animation 2D adventure game set in a dark and cryptic future. Another time expression a temporal interference phenomenon has been predicted leaving those to govern anxious. You will discover its effects on the lives of 8 playable characters. A hunter, a dreamer, an artist, a child, a racer, a fighter, a scientist and a detective. Like the previous game, its experience, you need to sink your teeth into this. And enjoy this game in its full glory. Mummy Sandbox did you ever just woke up and decided to be a mummy? Well, if the answer is yo for whatever reason, then Mummy Box is a game for you. But here is the plot twist. You need to rebuild your body digging through sandboxes. This is a first person game in style and game mechanics inspired by Minecraft. A demo was featured on the haunted PlayStation 1 demo disc in 2021. Storms Storms are short games about losing your keys and being overwhelmed by terrifying forces beyond human understanding. It's a very short game and can be beaten in 30 minutes. Uh, also one more thing, Storms is also a game that was blocked by my browser because it contains harmful content. Also the game has 3 bad endings but maybe there is a 4 bad ending if it's really malware or something else. Moldum Melumon. It's an absolute blast of a game you need to try out. The game was made by Manson Alindra, so it's a 2D metroidvania style like game. The main focus of the game is of course its trippy visuals. The game has a burst of various colors, weird monsters and there isn't any story, at least I didn't get to the part of that. It's definitely a fun game but sadly it doesn't feature any soundtrack. And yeah, the game can be played in your browser and the game was designed in 72 hours for the Ludum Dare 40 game jam. Blood Eye The game has a very pleasant art style. Blood Eye is made by Simon Weber. Blood Eye is a 2D action puzzle game in which the player simultaneously controls numerous eyeballs to explore the vast array of hand-driven environments. The sad thing about this game is that I got again a warning from Chrome that this can contain harmful content. Skulls is a surreal choose and pick adventure, quite unlike anything you've ever seen probably. The game was made by Pizza Makes Games. And it's a just great thing that somebody has this name. This game is not only exclusive for the PC but also iOS and Android. The game has a pixel art style with a creepy atmosphere. Again, it's a point and click horror adventure game where you take a control of a skeleton. Liminal Space Visual Novel Sadly the next one on this list is only a demo but this won't stop us on our way. So Liminal Space is like the title says a visual novel in which you can explore liminal space. Boom! Mind blowing am I right? It's set in a space that doesn't exist, where you're outside of time itself, lost in time, all alone trying to find out what is going on. Traverse many 1990s and 2000s settings while trying to unravel the mystery of when. If you love backrooms and weird theories, the game is for you. It has a pleasant and good art style and it's mysterious. By the way, the game was made by Joe Capo. Hyper Death. This little game was made by Death Orgon and it has a warning about visually remixed articles from the internet. Well, is this a good thing or bad thing? Like always, I'll let you decide. What I know is that you are the object. You freed yourself from the subject, the subject needs to reincorporate you in a symbolic order. You wish to escape the simulation, you pray for hyper death. 
run. Woohoo! Crazy theories are unfolding. Ah, you wanna hear a bit more about the game? It's a acid trip where you're met with various colors and objects flashing around you and I hope you won't get a seizure from this game. Nero. Listen, you are Garrett. You are worthless. But you don't want to be worthless. You decided to go on a journey to find your worth. Nero is a game made by my first game jam. It's basically a small prototype game made by Meat Baby. Nero is a heavily sparked game by Space Funeral and it takes a lot of ideas from it. So if you enjoyed that game, maybe this game will be up your alley. Color Out of Space is a game that you won't see often. It's an eerie, cult like team arcade game. I mean, I don't know what to say. It's made by Randy Baker. I downloaded the game, launched it, but the game didn't run properly. Somehow the buttons in the game didn't work. So what to say, I tried to find some info about the game, but sadly I didn't find anything. So let's go to the next entry. Cosmic Osmo and the worlds beyond the macro. Something we don't see so often is a child game that can be enjoyed by grown-ups especially on this iceberg chart. You're a strange creature called Osmo. You explore the galaxy in your spaceship and all the planets you will encounter are very bizarre as the Osmos themselves. There are seven worlds for you to explore. Cosmic Osmo is a game about exploration and discovery, not winning or challenges. You can't say that the game doesn't look good. The game is on Steam if you want to check it out and it's made by Kane Worlds. Dominique Pamplemouse was made by Squinkle Fur Productions. The first thing I can say about this game that it creeps me out, mostly because of the weird characters with the huge eyes. Ugh. The game is very unique and it has an offbeat stop motion. It's a detective adventure game about gender and the economy. Also, one more thing is that all the characters frequently burst into a song. The game features a black and white art style and clay animations which I am not a huge fan of. It's quite unique but I find the whole game just a bit weird. Maybe you will feel otherwise. A Blue Sunday is a quite sad and kind of morbid game made by Duke Bot. Blue Sunday is a sad story about someone who struggles to understand his past. He found himself in a weird world with plenty of familiar faces around him and a silent despair will take him away from the real world. Don't die. Get out and remember. You will dig up graves, talk to the dead and try to make peace. It's a quite nice game with a chilling atmosphere and it's definitely worth checking out. Cursed Tomb Devo Sadly this game isn't online anymore on itch.io but I couldn't find any trace on Google either. I found some stuff on YouTube and the game looks like a Game Boy Color game, at least at the beginning. But as soon as it starts it looks like an early PC RPG game. So it's kind of a mix of both. It's definitely creepy and it's played like those early RPG games where you move only a square at a time. It definitely looks interesting and good overall and I really hope we will see this game will come out. It would be a shame to abandon such a cool project like this game. Pucker in the Ashes We had a lot of Puckers on this list and this Pucker is in the Ashes. Pucker in the Ashes is the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. I give you an idea about this series, there is no point to dive in too much, but to give you just a small idea about what this part is about. One day in the green zone and Raikuse and his cast of Pulse reflect upon the misadventures of recent memory, discover the origins of Raikuse, get lost in the infinity black alleys and relive classic moments in HD graphics. Can you handle all the plot twists and the gamer feels? Or will you collapse in heap and cry for no reason at all? Will you ever return? Man has it all in his hands and it slips through his fingers from sheer cowardness. It's a game by Jack Spinoza and it's definitely intense and can be also described as disturbing. The game also features some body horror elements. 
I mean you saw Slugmores. This game is also very weird. I don't know even how to properly describe this game. It's crude, it's messed up, and there are two games in the series if I'm correct. Let's move on. The Adventures of E326 The next game on this list is a Flash game. It's a point and click adventure that can be also played directly through your browser. You will need to have a flash player obviously to play it. The game has a very clean and interesting art style looking like those old coloring books. I mean I think that's the best way to describe it. The game also features a very pleasant atmosphere with good music. And there are quite a lot of these games if you wanna dive in. Mangus Imago The next game was made by Sons of Welder. So, what has this creator prepared for us? Well, Mangus Imago is atmospheric journey through a mysterious world of characters, traces and symbols. The task of the player is to solve puzzles using proper combinations of objects and finding them in the environment around him. Like the last game on this list, it's a point and click adventure game, but this time it is not so colorful, but rather black and white, predominantly with sprinkles of colors put here and there and it's made in a hand-driven slash comic sketch style. The game presents the adventure of the main character as he learns the truth about himself in a mysterious world in which he lives in. The story told within the game has ambition of touching philosophical theological aspects which can be quite interesting. Liminal Exploration the painful adventure of a salamander through different worlds as the unknown pushes you forward. A game brought to you by TM. How to describe this game? First of all, liminal spaces are a subject of the internet aesthetics portraying empty or abandoned places that appear eerie. This game features also weird VHS aesthetics and blocky design. So how to describe the gameplay? Well, that's a good question. I would describe it as, as a Spider-Man game. With the left click you can punch, but the right click you can shoot out something out of your hand which really looks like a web. Other than that, there is a huge talking frog and I couldn't progress in the first section of the game. Mostly because I was busy swinging around. A Room Explorer 2010 The next entry is completely wacky and created by Squam. The game is best experienced with sunglasses because it does have some flashing lights going on. It is an experience of trespassing in the house of the creator, at least that's how he describes it. Other than that, it's pretty simple in style, but the game is full of weird videos, sound effects and it's funny as hell. Super Bogus World 2 This is a kind of weird entry because it's not a game but a combination of games. This was made by Hubol and it was developed from 2014 to 2020 in collaboration with his longtime friend and mentor The Odd War. The game features loosely connected sub-games that, that communicate a story starting reoccurring characters. It's a great collection of funny, wacky and surreal games. They are most like-hearted and funny games that are good in short bursts. Definitely worth checking out. Reap and Sow. Now from a happy game to something a bit more serious. And somehow I think we talk about this crate already. Reap and Sow is a mixture of farming sim and a dungeon explorer. The creator states, explore your own mind by entering your dreams. You will need to take care of your farm and the art style is quite gritty and dark. And the story is on point. You and everyone in the village you live have all been turned into living skull dolls. You have no memory of how or why this happened. Your goal is to find out what happened and if there is a way to reverse it. Somehow you feel that your dreams can help you to accomplish this. Taiwan 2001 well, this iceberg is all over the place. It features game compilations, weird games, real games, creators, but also lost games. I mean, sure, let's dive in into another rabbit hole, shall we? So let me introduce you to Taiwan 2001, a game created by Kuso Soft. Kuso being Japanese for crap, and I'm sorry if I mispronounced that word. This is all vital information, trust me. 
The game in Taiwan is a spoof of the 1995 homebrew shooter game Concom 97, which is very infamous, and we already talked about it if you remember. The gameplay of Taiwan 2001 is very similar to Hong Kong 97. However, Ubisoft claims that it is intended to be worse than the original game. Because this is a rabbit hole on itself, let me know if you wanna see a deep dive on this theme. So I will stop it here. Room. Again, we are looking at the game with clay animation, but this time I found it good. Somehow the colors look very nice and pleasant. And it really looks well made. War Room is a weird point and click adventure game set in a clay animation world full of surreal signs and strange surprises. I mean, what did you expect me to say? <laughs> what I can add is that the game has very interesting music and it's very experimental with the sound. Nemuru Mayu. And we are ending this layer with a bang. Well, we have one more entry. But it isn't a PlayStation 1 title and that makes me a happy snorky. Woohoo! So let's begin. Nemaru Maya or Sleeping Cocoon was released in 1999 and tells the story of a demonic tomb hidden in a city of Tuscany, Italy that has entrapped the souls of four knights. You control a human that has been sucked into a book and it was given a name the accursed one, who must explore the dungeons associated with each of the sleeping warriors, so that all can be freed from the demon influence. Sounds sick, am I right? It's a dungeon crawl game like the first Shin Megami Tensei game, but much more surreal. You can't tell me this creator was sober while making this game, I just refuse to believe it. Because there isn't any strategy guide released for the game, there are many passionate gamers who are trying to uncover every bizarre thing hidden in this gem. Mario 19 is a game made by Vibing Leaf. So this is a ROM hack if I'm correct, of the original Mario for the NES. It begins like a normal Mario game. It obviously has some difference from the original game. But when the shish hits the fan, it hits hard. After you see your first exploding enemy, it gets dark, weird and ominous. It fades to black and the madness starts to unfold. And this is where this game shines. It's really something you don't expect, at least not from a normal Mario game. Let's be honest, there are many ROM hacks out there. But this game will be unsettling and mind bending. It really puts Mario in a new light. And I mean it, it's quite interesting and it's a worthy end of this layer. Seven, eight, six, four, one. So let's kick this layer off with a point and click adventure game, released back in 2009. It was developed by a few talented people, among them was the lead programmer Jesse Kernowitz. The graphics are quite good, we can't deny that. The game has that 16-bit SNES style, but they will change a few times in the game. Music is also top-notch, it features a very cheerful and funky tune. Now to the story, and oh boy. Now you are saw that you are a frying pan, so you can see the game is set in a wacky world. But can you guess how the frying pan is earning his money? We can say he earns his money the hard way. Because he is selling, well, how to say it to avoid YouTube's attention. Let's say pleasure devices which do look like fire extinguishers, only smaller. Well, it's a weird and wacky game with a humor that can be dark and out of place for some, just as a small warning. Dwellmer of the Drill Faced Goddess. So what has the second entry on this layer prepared for us? It's a game that was made for Retromania in 10 days. The game is a visual novel inspired by Lovecraft, a writer who was inspired by Edgar Allan Poe. Do you know which gift Lovecraft left for the humanity? Well, it was actually a novel called The Call of Cthulhu. Maybe some of you heard it about it somewhere. The artwork in the game is done in shades of red and green and it's very unique looking. The game begins with your character standing before a cave. 
driven by a dream about a, an earth effect called Hecabone. The cave, however, causes discomfort and pain when looked at directly. You can choose to leave, leading to a winning outcome, but with a sense of loss. To not spoil too much, the game does feel a bit rushed sometimes. But if you dig the vibe of the game and what's going on, it's worth checking out. Find me a good one. We are really switching things up here. The next game on the list is a surreal plaza platformer. Your mission is to seek out, communicate with and guide dream characters to reunite with his brother. Together you protect him from the nightmares lurking in his bedroom. Get ready for a unique dreamlike adventure. The game was made by Andy Max and it definitely leans on the surreal side, but it's quite nice and a calming game. Where they cremate the roadkill. From a quite nice and calming game to one in which the title is already weird as hell. It was released by Gunseed Collab in 2017, with a very short and morbid description. Death is a dream. To get the most important question out of the way, is this game surreal? Definitely, the art style and the presentation is nailed down with the ambient music and is definitely something you don't see every day in games. But is this a good game? Well, even the creator of the iceberg stated it's his absolute favorite. After digging a bit, I found very mixed reviews about the game, mostly because it's really hard to understand what's going on, it has some grammar errors, and the gameplay is a bit underdeveloped, and there are some weird dialogue choices. But don't skip on this game just because of few bad reviews. Many of these games on the list are adventures you need to try out for yourself. Ghost 94. This entry is a post apocalyptic stealth game. Now, sadly, I didn't find any download on the page, or I was truly blind. I tried to find something besides the info on the page provided through the iceberg, but sadly, no luck. It has only a few reviews of the game, so perhaps this game maybe is a lost game? So, I will combine the text I found on the page. Now, the game is a 3D stealth game that takes place in a big post-apocalyptic dystopian Japanese city, patrolled by ninjas like soldiers and heavily armed robots. The game possesses the late 90s inspired combinations of 2D sprites in which you're walking around a low poly 3D world with low resolution pixel art textures. To the next one please. Void Pyramid This game was made by Willy Electrix. Void Pyramid is a post-apocalyptic RPG set in a space-like Egyptian empire. The game is set in the far future, where the mechanical prime Pharaoh rules the wasteland of the earth, and anyone who opposes him is exiled to the Void Pyramid. This outer space prison is populated by criminals, beasts, and mutants. No one has ever escaped, but you must try. It's a very nice game with cool looking pixel graphics, but is the game surreal? Well, the lore is quite interesting, the visuals are debatable, overall it's a well polished game with a good lore. Disillusion is a game made by the creator with the same name in 2021. The game is also available on Steam. It's about an odd tower filled with odd characters in a lane you don't remember ever existed, almost like it's a dream. It's a first person dungeon crawling RPG with an emphasis on interacting with characters around you, heavily inspired by games such as the LSD Dream Emulator, Easter Mind, Lost Souls, which are two classics. What important is that the graphics are pixelated, it has good atmospheric music combined with weird things to see and explore. Frog Days The year is 1995. Computer technology is advancing at a rapid pace, and the demand for personal computers has never been higher. Oh yes, we are diving into another wacky entry with this one. Your computer is special. Mysterious functionality allows you to explore virtual worlds hidden within the operating system. In every new piece of data you discover, there lie special clues to one of the best kept secrets of humankind, which is all connected to, you guessed it, an ancient alien conspiracy. It is such an interesting and quirky game. Sadly, this game is still in development, if I'm correct, and hopefully we will see this game get released soon. February 2003 
This was an ongoing project for more than 5 years, where you play as a ghost that got sucked into a calendar of February 2003. Now what's the deal with this game? Well, it's a compilation of games from various authors which compiled their games into this entry. There are crazy things to discover here, as you can guess. Also, the games were made in RPG Maker 2003. There are so many weird and wacky things to discover here. It was just a blast to play this game and I can't wait to go back and try out the other games. This is probably one of my favorite on this list on today's video. And you need to check it out. And I just love the cheerful soundtrack in the game. It really reminds me of Digimon World 3 if somebody remembers that game. I want to stop the other robot. The next game on this list is an evolution mobile game. Again, when I clicked on it, it got blocked by my browser. I tried to do some digging around, but I couldn't find anything related to this entry, sadly. So, I beg you guys, if you know something about this game, comment down below and share your knowledge. The uncle who works for Nintendo. You're 11 years old. You're sleeping over your best friend's house. You and your friend like both video games. Your friend has a lot of cool games. And believe it or not, his uncle works for Nintendo. As he's coming to visit you at midnight, you feel and see something strange. Well, this entry is a visual horror game that can be played in the browser, created by Stool. It's a quite bizarre story structured around the story about, well, the uncle who works for Nintendo. You choose your friend's name in the beginning and the adventure starts. Or better to say the sleepover, as the hours passes, you will hear and see bizarre things going on. You will need to play a few times to explore the different endings, and you can guess it, it's quite a bizarre game. Central Station Central Station is a turn-based RPG with hand-painted enemies and a surreal atmosphere. What is a bit odd that the creator of the iceberg chart scanned the media file and it says it's safe. So like, was I right about some entries on this list? Were they actually viruses? Oh well. So this game is filled with weird dialogue and strange ambient soundtrack. The battle system is very simple and mostly consists of you traveling between buildings to collect keys and progress. It does feature some weird stuff, definitely, but if it's worth your time, hmm, hard to tell. Video game. Game information. Video games may cause brain damage, play at your own demise. That's a great start, don't you think? Some games on the list do have the tendency to try to be everything at once and can settle for one direction. This is exactly why this apparently Xbox classic game is now free and available on Steam. So it's based on many different games being thrown at you as you play as a cigarette smoking mushroom. I would tell you more things about the game but I suffered the brain damage because of this game. Death of Agnub An adventure awaits. Find the necessary equipment to neutralize an Agnob. A game made by Jake Clover. The game is definitely surreal and I love how in the comment section even one stated that the creator was on mushrooms while making this game. The funny part is that the game actually features a lot of mushrooms for some reason but it can also be disturbing sometimes because you will need to squish bugs but they will also try to turn you apart. The game features a hand-drawn style with a mix of pixel art and it's very colorful. Dungeon Exit is a narrative game. It was created in August 28, 2011. The game was created by Adam Dickinson along with his friend Stefan or Tecatematis. This game was in development for 48 hours. For the competition Ludum Dare, the site is down and the download link doesn't work for me. After I tried to do some research, some articles provided got me to some weird fake Windows site which was warning me about Trojan horses. So I risk it all here I guess. The saddest part is, again I didn't find anything to show you guys. The creator stated that the game was a short and narrative experience in a fantasy setting. I hope this will satisfy you. Heartraiser 
I think this is the oldest game on this list yet. The game was released in 1984 in the UK, in two parts, Prelude and Final. Another rabbit hole right here. They could enter a competition in which they could earn a bejeweled 18 karat golden hair pendant featured on the cover. The prize was worth £30,000 at the time and would be awarded to the first winner of the game who would find a hidden location in the real world. There is a whole video which is 30 minutes long about a presentation which is dedicated to this game if you wanna dive in. It's a weird puzzle game but I think the jewelry prize was the reason why this game is on the list. Survive the Desert Another game by Adam Dickinson and now he even states he wasn't satisfied with the game, mostly because he ran out of the time to make this game properly and he was learning the engine stencil. But the good part is, for whatever reason my flash player doesn't work on this game so I couldn't get it running. But if the creator states that the game is bad, perhaps it's a good thing to skip this entry. A lab serotonin phobia is a web puzzle game. Well, it's a whole website structured with a very cryptic infrastructure. And it seems quite fun to dig around. There are many games over here to explore from the browser. Games which are played with the hypertext markup language, to flash games and also to downloadable games. There is even a game that lets you play like a body examiner, in which you need to decide how the person died but the page is more structured like an ad to me, but never mind that. I mean, it's a very real site you need to check out. I mean, it's a rabbit hole in itself, but don't expect too much here. The Midnight Station Now bear with me for this one. Imagine a top-down shooter, add sprinkles of weird aspects, like for example the aesthetics of Earthbound's Moonside section with that special eerie atmosphere. And to top it all off, ZX Spectrum's graphics. Ain't that a hell of a mix. The game is a twin stick shooter horror RPG like game. It's weird. I mean, that's why are you here. Also, you're something like a Medusa head for whatever reason. And it's a hard game to like, but it's interesting. A Surreal Climb a Surreal Climb is a leather adventure game that takes you on exploration on different worlds inspired by the painter Salvador Dali, developed by Leon Tandlim. They can be accessed directly from the iceberg and played in the browser. Now the game is weird as hell. So the game has Atari style graphics and it doesn't have any sound for whatever reason. And you are a little white guy just climbing a ladder. After climbing the ladder, you wonder if the hassle is actually worth, because there isn't any end apparently. As you start questioning, is this all worth it, the things get a bit weird. I climb to the top and it restarted the game. Maybe there is something hidden in the game and I didn't found it, but I don't know. Try it out for yourself. Top Banana This entry is just amazing. Why, maybe you ask? Well, the creator stated that the game is actually a joke. Well, let's talk about Top Banana. It's a game for the Amiga, if I'm correct. And the game makes very weird sounds every time we jump. I think the only reason why the game does this is to annoy you. You play a small girl with big eyes and you shoot hearts. You jump your way up and battle various things from machines to animals. The game isn't so good and I'm not quite sure if you will enjoy this game. But the game deserves some points in the surreal department. Yep, the game gets a bit weirder later on. Maze Brew is a game released for the Macintosh back in 1993. I know, I know, we could make a whole iceberg about all the weird 90s game. And don't dare me to do it, because I will. But let's see what is Maze Brewer. First of all, it's a point and click adventure game. You wanna hear more? I know what to say, or what the hell is going on. You click on various things without any explanation, weird sounds appear that are totally out of place, and there isn't any music. Hard to tell if this game is worth checking out, but hey, maybe you find the weirdness somewhat likable. 
big bang another banger do i really mean it of course not <laughs> the deeper we get the games get from weirdly good to weirdly bad and this one is bad the game developer behind this game is psycho core and it was released in 1995 on a 3.5 inch floppy and if my facts are right the same developers were behind top banana so you know what to expect yes a very weird platformer the strange thing is even if the game looks pretty cute at first the game tends to get weirder first of all the background music could be ripped from some playstation 1 horror game but the game has its fair share of psychedelic things going on and i love how you jump the head of the clown gets separated and winks at you yikes thanks to god i didn't get my hands on this in my childhood beauty within its flaws its flaws is a game about being ugly weird and bizarre with its visuals controls abilities and its possibilities and sometimes it decides it doesn't want to be any of those things and just to be itself and do what it's want to do. A game made by Rosden Shadow. I try to dig up more stuff about the game besides the few pictures I'm showing, but the file is contained with something that my browser didn't like. So if you have a plan to download this game, please double check it. Ruder is a game about going to a party and having a psychedelic experiment so it's basically about tripping way too hard it's a rpg maker game from what i can tell the game was made by extinguisher girl the game looks very crude it starts with you playing a girl with black hair and you're basically going to a party and after sipping something it starts to get weird and despite being pretty simple it feels very mysterious sometimes f head do you know what the meaning behind this name well this is an experimental video game in which you play as an exploded head good mature content check does it get surreal well it's set in a black and white landscape in a search for an anti-anxiety suppressant good surreal check maybe it has some mature themes well yes exactly this is a game that can be seen as a interlude between sexual frustration and boredom this experimental game was created by jars it has hand-driven graphics things to censor but let me tell you this is a very strange game i have that gut feeling that something sinister is hidden behind this game but i don't know what the game is a side platformer and it has houses in which upon you enter you need to avoid some flying things to collect pills i didn't have patience to do them all but maybe you will have it but again mature content warning Acludia. the town where your dreams are mine Acludia is a game made by dukebot you will play as basically dead who delivers prescription drugs in several lockdown environments where everyone tries to develop their self-being in their own way. The game has very pleasant and atmospheric music with acoustic guitar, and the whole atmosphere is creepy but it feels somehow real and relatable. Don't get me wrong, the game is disturbing and it gets a bit unsettling at times. It's worth checking out if you can handle the themes of the game. Boring in Paradise was made by Timothy and it combines two games anti-pain and anti-trolley there isn't too much to talk about this game they're very bad i think this is someone who just wants to troll some gamers i think and collect a few bucks from steam because it costs 99 cents and from a huge written review on steam i don't think the game is even worth 99 cents black room black room is a browser-based narrative game about falling asleep while you're on a computer and on the internet. I know, a weird concept, but it's real. Do not forget to mention, the game was made by Cassie McCutter. You play as an insomniac on the verge of sleep, moving through shifting states of consciousness. It sounds weird and interesting, but in reality, it really is. It's a quite interesting adventure to try out. I love the randomness of the game and the things you will encounter. It's weird, ominous, disturbing, but also funny at times. You wanna see this, trust me. Go play it, but after the video, please. 
Dujana. It's a special game made by J. King Spooner. This game was based on how the creator's grandfather went to war and when he finally came back, he was a changed man. He was dark, bitter and angry. And he even tried to hurt animals. Well, at least that's how the about section tells about the game. It's hard to describe the game, it tries to dive into deep themes, but occasionally it throws some jokes at you which are a bit out of the place. But if we put the story aside, we will find an atmospheric game with amazing looking clay animation and it really stands out and it's combined with a good soundtrack. And that's coming from me who actually hates clay animation. The game will dive into political themes which aren't everybody cup of tea, just to mention it. Karateka Voodoo Check this out, the game was in development since 1993. The game went to a 5 year development phase and then 4 years of adjustment. And what was the result? Well, Karateka Voodoo is a uncategorized Japanese adventure game with fully hand drawn animation. Fight monsters and solve puzzles to cook dinner and save their family before the airplane crashes in their haunted mansion. And the story goes something like this. You're a hero with a sword and shield, who by coincidence arrives just in the time to the haunted mansions before the plane is going to crash. It was occupied by a family, completely oblivious to the danger they are in. Other than that, well, are you looking at the footage? Take it or leave it. But I need to mention that the game has pretty good reviews overall. Simpsom Demo Was made by Stefan Pinto. The game starts off quiet and lonely. It has that liminal atmosphere vibe to it, so to say. It starts with you in an office. It looks like an early 2000s game from its pixelated style. And it's played in the first person. As you explore the office, you will see it's quite boring and uninteresting. But before you know it, things start to change and the game gets a bit darker and that is where the game actually shines. And the game does get quite disturbing, grotesque but also creepy. Exactly how you like it. This is definitely a horror game if it wasn't clear and I don't want to spoil it too much. It has a bit Silent Hill vibes to it, at least from the monsters I would say. Let's move on. Infinity. Challenge your mind in a psychedelic genre of puzzles and meaningful encounters with time, poetry, memory, technology, war and fidelity. This is a game by Barnacue. What can I say about this? It was released for the Nintendo Switch and we didn't see that often on this list. You will play as Hope and the game is totally abstract. It is an adventure slash puzzle game where you navigate through screens to find the loophole to find the way to the other screen to progress further. It's a weird concept, but after you start playing it, it makes a lot of sense. It's definitely surreal and it has good puzzles in it. Internal Gomez Games This is a game creator behind a game we already talked about and had some problems with downloading it. The game was called 14 slash question mark question mark. But this creator made also Neftelia and a few more games you wanna perhaps check out. So if you have some spare time, check out his page and maybe you find something that suits you. Rupture Spin Off We have another RPG Maker game on the list created by Omnipene. So before we start to talk about this, the creator stated this is a fan based game on Mortis Ghost Off, and to get the most out of the game you should first play Off. The story goes something like this. After the world was purified by a better, the space apes have been busy planning a devastating plan and all of the zones are gone. Instead, the tower stands in nothingness, looming menacingly for all to see. You play as a Rian, a boxing superhero on a mission to destroy the tower and save the world. Questions like what is the purpose of the tower, what happened to the survivors and the victors of Better's crusade and just where is Better anyway are hidden in the lore of this game so you can check it out. Sadly as far as I have seen it, it's an ongoing project. Which is not complete yet I think. Hell, this is quite simple. Hell is a short point and click walking simulator. It can be beaten in less than 5 minutes. Made by Achtino Flume. 
It's a game that looks like some very early PC game with the simple black and white art style, but it really looks clean. It features a creepy and mysterious atmosphere and I mean come on, the game is only 5 minutes. You really wanna hear some more spoilers? Let's jump to the next one. Mixin Woods This is a dream walker and it came with a warning to be careful while downloading it. Well how in hell should I do that? But anyway, it's quite simple. Or you download the game or you don't download the game. But it was a link from a Google Drive and I really don't want to catch any viruses. But I found some footage of the game so we can talk about it. So the game was made by Ben Valley, and I found myself in the same spot where I need to describe some hot mess. Well it's obviously played in the first person. It has some weird echoing sound effects sounding like almost like judger bigs for whatever reason you will walk into pictures and you will find yourself in different environments so you want a weird here you have it hideous cave goblin games we have one more developer entry on this list and i don't mind giving a shout out to hardworking developers from my understanding this game was down and you couldn't access it but they are recently live again and they can be played through itch.io the developer is a russian and you probably know already about the whole conflict and what is going on in the country he also states if you want to donate money it will go to russian charities to find more about this visit his page and let's keep the political stuff out of this video we are here because of his games. So there are quite a few games you can try it out if you want to. They are quite interesting but also dark. And if you find some of the footage I showed you interesting, check out his page. It's that simple. Galah Gala. So the next game was created by Jeff Clover, a name we are already familiar with. And be prepared because we are going to dive into many of his entries in the next layers. Now this game has a very weird concept, so he thinks that watching videos is sometimes more exciting than playing the actual game. He wanted to create a game that stimulates the feeling of watching unfinished game videos. I mean, this is a clear indication that the game is definitely weird. I mean the gameplay is in the second plan here, it's all about the experience. You will play different characters in different areas and trying to make sense what is happening. The stage. This is a vignette project by a guy we already mentioned a few times, and that's Jack King Spooner. Well again we need to put the gameplay aside, ok? Now imagine Kirby being made of clay and in black and white. You are stuck in a room with a statue and your goal is? Well that's a good question. After you start to walk, a frame will appear on the statue and it zooms slowly as you walk around and some hooded figures starting to appear on the screen, left and right. I don't know if this is because of my browser, but I also didn't have any sound effects or music, which made the game more unsettling than it actually is. Try to make sense and tell me what did you find out down below. Satan's Pepper I love the name of this game. This little gem was created by Ghost Wolf. The game was inspired by Andy's Land. And I really can't remember if any lands was on the list. There were just too many entries on this iceberg. But I do love this game for whatever reason. Is it because of the aesthetics or because of its unsettling vibe that is going on? I'm not quite sure. So what can I tell you about the game? Well, it's a visual horror novel where you start in a grocery store and things start to happen. I won't spoil it too much because it's a very short game and it would be a shame to spoil it. El Sueño de la Rose. We have one more Yuminik inspired game, which is a completely new inspiration for a game. Ok I'm just kidding here, but we don't wanna be harsh. So let's talk a bit more about this game. It was created by Arlequin1980. To get it out of the way first, this is a demo and the last comment was in 2016 where a user asked if this will be only a demo or if this game would be ever completed, but sadly the creator stated he doesn't have any plan to finish the game. 
The game follows a little girl called Anne, who locked herself in her room. The reason? She is obsessed with her inner demons, named Grey People, which slowly corrupt her mind. The only way she could defend against these creatures is to meet them face to face in the world of Anne's dream and to touch them. If not, Anne would be meant ill. Does this sound interesting? The game is up for you to try on rpgmaker.net. All are ages. The name is just weird to sell at first, but also the game follows in a similar fashion. And I should make a list where I only rank the name of the games in this list. Melos Hantani, if I pronounce that right, has prepared for us a walking sim which can be found on Steam. And we can't get enough of walking sims, am I right? Now let's talk about this, shall we? First of all, the story is about Control Yuito as you explore his dying father's memory world. What supernatural things will you discover? I can tell you that you will dive into a low poly PlayStation like art style combined with lo fi music. It also dives into identity, race, and nationality. So keep that in mind. And also, the story can be a bit dry, and it's definitely not for everyone because of its theme. Kung Fu. Going in retro, so be prepared. I really need to dive into the 90s gaming era because there are so much wacky stuff in there. But to Kung Fu, it is a platform game released for the Amiga in 1996, and it's the first and only title from Dutch-based studios Great FX Development. Also, in the game, besides you playing a kangaroo. You will use things like boomerangs, but also machine guns to fight your enemies. The critics at the time stated, it's a complete mess because of its color palettes used in the game, which adds points to the weird aspect. But the creator of the iceberg also stated there is some body horror and dead animals in the game. Well, the only thing I found out in the game is the game over scream, because there is a skeleton of some animal, I would probably guess a kangaroo, in the desert. Because they use real images in the game, this can be off-putting to someone, definitely. And I won't show it on the screen, but just to have it mentioned, if you are planning to play this game, Auto Cannabisilum. You are probably asking yourself, Auto what? Well, Auto Cannabisilum. And it's censored because of Uncle YouTube. You know how this goes. Well, this entry is basically a short story wrapped in the pseudo platformer. This game was developed by Crimelo, which tells the story of a starving tribe in search for food. It's definitely a game that is a settling. The gameplay is very very simple, and the game can be almost mistaken for the game Pitfall for the Atari in some areas. It's not a complex game, but it was suggested by apparently everyone. Down Dusk Dream Super Bind your soul to the mortal flesh of the Astral vermin. The sewers are calling. They spoke your name in hushed whispers through the countless interwaving pipes. This game was made by Rafael Batista de Lima. This is a very cute looking isometric puzzle game. The color palette is definitely pink and everything is blocked in the game. It has a creepy vibe going on, but nothing too serious. But the visuals combined with the music do deliver a trippy atmosphere. Acephalic. Oh, what do we have here? Another visual provoking game that is more experienced than a real game. Well, we didn't see such games for quite some time, I think. Jokes aside, this experience is made by Dead or Gone. First, I need to warn you about it because content warning says there is blood, gore, sacrifice, glitch, porn, hair, work imagery but also videos after my thorough analysis. Now let me tell you, this freaking game. This is a FPS, but more like a walking scene, where the sounds, music and the overall presentation is very over the top, intense, but also heavy. Low bass noises, flashing lights, disturbing and grotesque sights and adult videos. If it sounds chaotic, it is chaotic and this game is definitely not for everyone. But I still would say I would recommend this game. Carpovo. 
imprisoned for life, you're only destined to proliferate. Take control of the infernal sorting apparatus and pick the valid spaceman of your pitable offspring. So, in a nutshell, pick up eggs, put them into tube, bounce the hatchlings while avoiding soft blades. Try to get the little guys into the creepy mouth and that's the gameplay. So I would like to tell you more about this entry besides what I just saw online because not only is a downloadable EXE game, it's somehow, again, I don't know how this happens but my browser detected something bad here. Again, just be careful by downloading files from the internet and check everything through your antivirus. I breathed. Another game lost to history sadly. This game was made by Matthew, made in C++ if I'm correct. The game is a role playing game often criticized as a nonsensical. It comprises over 500 rules presented out of order. These rules include math equations with undefined variables, references to social and political topics, pop culture references, cross references to non existential things and other game rules, alongside problematic content such as misogynistic statements. Remarkably, the game asserts its ability to accurately model the real world physics reality. If you wanna go on adventure, here is a rabbit hole for you. Kaisei Pistol Show The next one is a free RPG Maker 2000 game. It's an adventure exploration game made in 2008 by Parun, the creator behind Rekinder. We got one more game with a wacky story. So let me explain the story to you. So Heart, a hitman with a Lolita inspired fashion sense, faces betrayal from his former lover. Seeking revenge, Hart and his lawyer companion Pistol decide to leave the organization behind. However, the escape is showed by the pursuit of the three top-notch assassins who follow their every move. It's a vivid and emotionally complex tale, blending elements of vibrant colors with a bittersweet narrative. The game is only in Japan, but it got an English patch. One more thing to mention is that it has some dialogue about suicide and child abuse, so you just to be aware if you're sensitive to these themes and of course there are also some flashing lights in there. Botulism. This is the last entry on this layer. The game is a puzzle platformer. Again, it's a media fire side with an Excel file that was blocked by my browser. Yeah, I'm sorry. I will get some old PC to try these games out. But that's a battle for another time. Let's go to layer 7. Mangia. The layer starts with the Atari 2600 game. Mangia was released by Spectrovision in 1983. Also, Mangia is an Italian word for eat. And the North American version of this game is the rarest game for the Atari 2600, if you didn't know. I mean, if the game is surreal, it's highly debatable. Well, it is a game where you control a boy who eats pasta served by his mother, because Italians, I guess. They can throw the pasta to a cat or dog throughout the window to avoid overeating, but if the mother catches him, she serves even more pasta next time. I also need to mention if you eat too much you can explode and your gut will be blue for whatever reason. I mean, what should I say, it's a bit of a weak entry for this layer in my opinion, so let's move on. Punishment. This entry is a quite nice platformer in which you are set in a frame and everything around is tilting and you need to platform your way through. It's definitely a fun game you can try out. It has some weird visuals and settings, but nothing too out of the ordinary. Gideon Towards God It was released in 2011 and developed by Paul Stan Studios. In Gideon Towards God, it's all about the story. And it has not a complicated gameplay. You play as Alan Sparks, a historian from the US, searching for the city of rain that reminds him of his dad. As a kid, his dead stories matched real history and now Alan keeps finding similar connections. In the game there is another story from Alan's diary. It's like a doodle world 
where a guy looks for his rain city, solving puzzles and meeting characters. The game has hand-driven art style, all in black and white, and it has a sketch style to it. By the way, if it wasn't clear, it's a point-and-click adventure style of a game. What is really good is the music. The main theme song of the game could be easily thrown in a game like Witcher or Skyrim with its acoustic style and quality to it. Geosynth From a story-driven game, let's dive into something much heavier on the presentation style. Kizion presents itself as a horror game with its trailer. But at closer look, you see it's a 2D platform horror game. The game was made by Amon26. The game has just a gorgeous art style to it, there is no other way to put it. It has somewhat pixelated art style and a dark tone. And the background music is a chilling atmospheric tune that consists of weird gruntings accompanied by moaning noises. And finally again it has also good gameplay aspects and it feels very polished to its animation. You will burst upon dying and the enemies have also satisfying death animation. One more thing to mention is that you also have a gun and a shield which can be used in combat so you have the ability also to block enemies attacks. This game is worth checking out. Gradient Addiction Let's talk about one more game from Jack Clover. We can't leave this guy just alone. So what has he prepared this time for us? Well, it's a weird exploration game where all you do is fly around as I would guess to be a half-robot guy in a weird city. Heavy bass music and overall quite interesting soundtrack. There are a lot of glitches in the game and it contains over 22 unique locations which can be accessed through secret portals scattered around the city. The game is quite a mess to be honest. I mean, it's a weird exploration game with interesting aesthetics. Why and I? So, what the hell is just this? <laughs> this game surprised me a bit. It's a game made by developer Proofy. The core of the gameplay is based to be set in a perfect world in which everything is like a fairy tale. It's definitely a quite interesting concept. The game is an infinite sandbox slash fantasy exploration game, but there are also some minigames thrown into the mix where you can collect coins and spend them on cute magic spells creating fairy blocks or in the fairy shops to buy flowers and fruits. From what I can tell, the developer put much love and passion in this game and it's definitely a surreal game with its cute presentation. And it's definitely a change of pace from all the dark and gritty games we already saw. Glock Billet. Another game by, you guessed it, Jack Clover. I love how this game is branded as adventure for the family. You play as a thing which can be described like those balloon animals and it looks like a dog I think. But the game is also a shooter because you can do the most amazing thing ever. So you can shoot your enemies with pies. Why? Please don't ask me. This game is definitely set in a weird world and if the game is made for the whole family is a bit debatable. I just love how you are thrown into the game and you need to discover what the hell is going on and what are you supposed to do. And one thing I love about the combat is how the enemies are just blobs that burst upon dying. Because it's really satisfying to see them burst. Chambers of Stars Finally, a really artistic game with a great atmosphere to be enjoyed. Imagine having your own little world with characters shaped by everything you see around. Your friends fans, even the local shopkeepers. Each person you pass by is like a universe in itself. You create stories about them and they have stories about you. And this universe is just keep growing. The game was made by Eric. The Chamber of Stars follows the 2018 Endless Empty game. It follows the story about Star, the rock and roll hero, across six distinct worlds. As you explore, make choices and perform, Star's journey takes shape. This game blends traditional adventure, puzzle solving and one-of-a-kind reader game performance all set in this imaginative surrealistic world. It's a quite funny game but I know if this game is really so surreal that it should be on the layer 7. Are you a stunning single? Do you long for true companionship? Are you attempting to populate a newly discovered planet, but you're worried that your offspring won't be genetically suited to survive in new environment? 
I know, weird questions. But this game is about a new dating app which shows you hot singles in your area which maybe possesses the right genes to spawn a race of superior people who will survive on this harsh planet. The game was made by BenBot. There isn't much to say about this game. It has pixelated graphics looking like an early 90s PC game in which you can choose various dating partners. Based on your decision if you want to mate or not to mate with them you will get a child based on your combinations. I mean this game is more a joke than a real game or anything else. Mementos Mori This is a kind of creepy entry to say at least. In 1999, Perfetti, Van Mele and the Baudulere estate collaborated on the Mementos Mori campaign to introduce a limited edition Mentos called Ale Mints with a naphthalene flavor. Each ale means had a gloomy message inside, which matches the eerie taste of the Mentos. They even made a website to promote the product, but it failed and was removed. Recently a copy of the website was found on a CD-ROM owned by a guy named Mr. Guy Dupre, a 82 year old man with no surviving family. I mean it sounds weird but I didn't check the facts. And the whole concept of the game let's say is based on looking on gory old pictures where they put random mentos in the pictures with morbid messages. Also this restored website can be also played to the iceberg chart directly if you want. Premic Parasite Make sure to back up your soul before experiencing the cybernetic transcendence. The game was made by Muhammad Kamas. Well this is definitely a trip to it, but not in a good way. The game is talking to you in a way that your body is like a computer and how your input is valid and you need to restart and I don't know I couldn't just pay attention because I got motion sickness from the game because first of all the walking speed was painfully slow and it's not like you're walking in the game but rather like hopping and the camera is jumping all the time. Also the music can be annoying and the weird default noises which is speaking to you also annoyed me so much. I don't know, if you want to try it out, be my guest. Lisa the Insane Well, I wasn't aware that Lisa had so many fan modes out there, this is quite insane. Well, Lisa was created as a joke game by the developer Loser. So why is he a loser? I don't know. But the Loser stated that we follow the story of Pini, a very strange looking man, which is alone. But he has three equally strange with which he needs to defeat the unnamed blue haired man and his army. And it's an interesting game but sadly this isn't released. And I only found the trailer about the game which you're looking right now. And yeah I can tell you that the release date of the game will be in 20 million years from now on. Just great. Heart of Sophiloman. Let's dive some more in the 90s era of gaming with this horror adventure game released in 1993 for the X68000, a home computer created by Sharp Corporation. It was released in 1987 and was sold only in Japan. So as you can guess the game is only a Japanese game and there isn't any English patch for the game. The game is a dungeon crawler game in which you can fight different weird things like reptiles, monsters but also zombies and you fight them in a traditional RPG fashion. I also would like to explain the story but I couldn't find anything. The gameplay footage I found was in Russian which I could understand some words but definitely not enough to explain something. So I hit a wall here. But the game does look impressive for a 1993 game. This is an interesting little game set in a somewhat surreal world where you can go around and collect clothes, items and talk to NPCs who don't have anything meaningful to say. The game was made in 2008 I think, other than that it has some cheerful music but somehow I got bored with it pretty fast. So let's jump to the next entry. Garfield's Armageddon Prophecy the world is beyond salvation, but maybe, just maybe, you can still manage to play the role of a hero. It all rests in your hand. Yes, my dear viewer, we have a Garfield game on our hands. 
made by two makes one of a kind. It starts with you encountering Garfield, who after a brief conversation throws you in the trial room and your horror adventure begins. The gameplay style is like those early dungeon crawlers where you need to find your way to Garfield. There are two endings to explore in this very surreal world of Garfield and there are two games in this series, if you can't get enough of this game. Ugetsu Kitan Born in this world, death visits us one day and the life of one person continues without ever stopping. However, even by death the spirit never dies only receiving new lives, as their diversion repeats. Finally, I knew we would have at least one more surreal PlayStation 1 game on the list, and here we are. This is a very bizarre, nightmare-inducing visual novel game made by Tonkin House, first released in Japan in 1992 for the PC-98, but it was originally ported in 1997 to the PlayStation. It was based and adapted on the 1776 Japanese novel Ugetsu Monogatari, which is a collection of 9 supernatural stories by Ueda Akinari. As you point and click your way around, you will find yourself in a baboon forest which is filled with many weird looking characters. Again, I found it hard to explain what's happening in the game because it was in Japanese. Also, the game isn't one of the best games, it definitely looks weird and it can actually be quite unsettling and gory to the point of discomfort. Better Dead Ratification The next one on this list is apparently a lost game because there isn't any download link but if you go to my abandonware, which is a cool site you need to visit and explore, where you can find old and quirky games, you can also find the download link for this game. So the game was released in 1995 by Art Sector 1. The game starts with you in a bar and after sipping a drink you will find yourself looking at some weird guys speaking on a video call on a PC to you. And then you're in something like which I would describe as hell and talking to the devil. Again, I hit the wall here because of my language barrier and if you know something more about this game, comment down below. Super Spray and Slay 3D is a surreal and nonsensical dungeon crawler with light gun gameplay. Spend a normal day as a maid Anesthesia Wellington Claymore as she makes sure the hotel is clean and presentable. Does this sound fun? Then you can thank Eric for making this game. It's a game with retro aesthetics where you will kill some weird looking monsters and collect key to progress. The gameplay can be a bit annoying and slow but hey, that's what you get here. Patrick is a MS-DOS Tetris game whose special appeal is that the pieces are made of screaming flesh of damned souls. I mean at the end it's a Tetris game with some weird looking faces on the blocks. And I don't know why I didn't have any sound in the game. It's really just Tetris. Let's move on. World Image Soundplay So, what do we have here? A PlayStation 2 game? This gem was released in 2004. This obscurity not only remained unpublished outside of Japan, but was also distributed in limited quantities. One interesting thing is that the game was published by Sony Music Entertainment and not by Sony Computer Entertainment, which we normally would see in games. The game was only available in Japan, but its developer, Tomato, is actually British. Tomato is more than a game studio, it's an art collective founded in 1991, made up of artists, musicians and writers working across digital realms for artistic or commercial purposes. This is an art project more than a game in every sense, and I don't know what to say. This is definitely something you wanna try to spend your afternoon with. And I'm somehow happy we have a PlayStation 2 game in here. Zoku Segeri Aichiri And the last game on this layer is another PlayStation 2 game. Yes, yes, ladies and gentlemen, we have another PlayStation 2 game. Which makes me really happy. The game was released in 2002 and it's a sequel to the 1990s Shigere Ijiri on the PlayStation 1. It is based on a collection of weird minigames you can play from the hub world, let's say. The graphics do look pretty decent for their time and the game was developed by Enix, which would be later become Square Enix, 
You play as a guy with an arrow as a head and it's totally Japanese and quirky and I love it. It's totally wacky and I don't know what the hell is going on and I really want to leave it this way because it's so over the top it really made me laugh. If you can figure some way out to try to escape, please do. generated pizzas. The last layer starts with a category. So do you know about auto-generated pizzas? It's about Ash G who makes these pizza projects. Bits is a tool to create old school stories and games made by Adam Ledoux. Ash G uses Python program to make these pizzas. It is still a work in progress, but it can do quite a bit. There are even bigger plans like having the program generate stories on its own using real news or blogs and they are thinking about making the program more user friendly with, with a nice interface. Right now you run it in a code editor but they want to make it easier to use for a wider audience. Hope this gives you an understanding of this entry. Produce. Let's dive into Produce. It's a horror sim game starting teenage psyches. Gilbert, Toshio, Tina and Sayaka. But there is drama. Toshio likes Sayaka. Who is into Gilbert? The twist? The spooky house wants friends on the top floor and offers to help Toshio with Gilbert. So here is the deal. You are not leading an escape. You are Toshio in for revenge. Control psychic creatures projections and guide them up. And of course, time matters, you decide when and how long the creature will appear. No harm from these projections, but fear level does matter. If the fear meter is too high, they could have a heart attack. So what is the goal of this game? Reach the top of the floor before the dawn with no casualties. It's a tough game, but also super unclear. There is no learning curve, act quick or lose basically. The game is eerie with unsettling monsters and a spooky vibe. Plus, heads up, there is some nudity. Psyche E is a point and click adventure game. It's very strange, very stupid and very smart. You will adventure through bizarre lands with your ego. This will be the first game in a eventual series, says the creator Resni. And it is hard to form an opinion about a game in which there are so many private parts and a decapitated baby's head. It also has a mature burning on the iceberg chart, so I warn you before playing. The game combines many different art styles such as pixel, hand draw and collage. It's a surreal game that tries to tap into themes like existential questions. But the game did turn me off with the farting noises after that serious speech at the beginning. Uzumaki. Every entry is getting more interesting. The next one is Uzumaki Nebis 7 Invertible Girl. The game is a horror exploration game. And it's not a quite long game where you will need only 40 minutes to finish this game. You will start off in a room where you are playing as a young girl. When you exit the room you will land in a strange corridor without any lights. After you flicker the lights on, a door suddenly appears. Which will set you in a weird dimension filled with traffic lights and the whole dimension seems to be in a loop somehow. This game is again in Japanese. And besides that my PC didn't load any text in the game. So I can give you a proper explanation of what the game is besides the visuals and the music. For what I can tell the visuals are quite dark and the music is quite well because it's playing on a classic piano at least at the beginning. Later on the corridor levels the music is getting more ominous and creepy. Gen Ski Games let me introduce you to Jen Ski. Yes, we have another creator entry. He's a very interesting game creator. Jen has four games on his site. First is Cowboy Bebop, Nope, Cuphead, You Can't Run Away From God, Enter the Void to the Holy Mountain, and Bad Dude vs. the Whole World. Immediately at first glance, you can see that the games are inspired by other games and media like movies and TV shows. A special shout out to Cowboy Bebop and Enter the Void, which is just a trippy movie to watch. Yes, of course, you can call these games ripoffs, but there is so much here, it's freaking amazing, trust me. The games are 2D shoot em ups, and they are freaking surreal 
and dump everything you know about these games and media into one pot and mix them together, combined with some of the best tracks featured on this chart. Yes, some of the games are remixed songs of the original, but trust me, just go to his page and immerse yourself in these hidden gems. But again, please, finish the few entries you have. The Jingle The teachings of His Excellency Jingle This is a game made in 1999 by, you guessed it, Jingle, because why not? This is a black and white game where you play a guy who repeats the same sentence every time you talk to someone, so what the hell is going on here? Well, I'm not quite sure. Every time I enter the battle, the game quit. Then I just tried to avoid the enemies, but I couldn't get too far because of that. If some of you wanna try this game, let me know if you had the same problems as I. Komeda Low Mail Well, this is quite a weird experience. It starts with you simply talking to a clown, saying he is here for you and you don't need to worry and he's trying to be on your side. And then suddenly he tells you to touch his balloon. After you touch his balloon, for what I can understand, you're trapped. And you meet this guy who is also trapped there, I guess? And that's the point where this visual novel really takes off. For what I have found on the fandom wiki, Komeda Lowmail is a Tumblr blog created in early 2015. It is run by large, consistently shifting numbers of mods, all going by the name Nagito Komedea. Starting as a positivity blog for sharing low mail, it's growing into something quite unique. There are mods and posts about everything made like thoughts, daily life, stories, art and updates about the Komeda kind. They are even asking questions and taking submissions. The blog's design and their vibe has changed a lot of the years, sometimes following specific themes. There are also secrets hidden between the pages of the post. Well, this is completely wild and I want to look in this a bit more. Remaster Cycle The Game The game is inspired by Matthews Barney The Cray Master Cycle. It's a five-part multimedia art movie. This video is only a record of this game existing. No updates since 2017 were made and certainly no downloads have surfaced. So, we can consider this game a lost game. Sadly, I tried to gather some more info about it, besides the developers' names, which are Constantianos Dimitrimaidis, and I know I did pronounce that wrong, and by Mirna Marianovic. I can't find anything else to give you, so I'm sorry we need to skip to the next entry right here. Again, if you know some more about this, just comment down below and share your knowledge. Space Spy. And yes, we have arrived at the end, at the deepest parts of this surreal iceberg chart. This was quite a ride. So let's talk about the last entry, Space Spy. It's a puzzle game by Vasily Zotov, the mind behind White Soulless. It's a set of five stories happening around the Kodak Theater in Hollywood. The graphics aren't exactly good, but they are eerie and surreal and that's all what matters here. Gameplay is about pushing objects on the grid to certain spots, solutions get pretty obscure here which are maybe deal breakers for some. But also the sound is a bit lacking and the movement can be slow. But I mean, it's the surreal experience but count and I hope you didn't expect too much from the gameplay here I guess. Cubivore, survival of the fittest. The first entry on this extra layer was developed by Saru Brunei with assistance from Intelligent Systems. It was originally intended to be released on the Nintendo 64 before winding up on the GameCube in 2002. Yes, we have our first GameCube entry on this chart. In the game, you will be playing a small pig. So, in the Cubivore's world, there is a big shot called the Killer Cubivore. He and his buddies have basically chopped down everything, even the land's essence called Wilderness. It's gotten so bad they even turning into part of the landscape. And guess what? Nature's fading and there are fewer beasts around. So basically, you are the hero here and you need to figure things out how to stop them. You are trying to take down the killer cubivore and fix up the wilderness. The game isn't that surreal, but the surreal part is maybe how every time you eat something you would mutate and there are quite a lot of things to play around here with your mutations. Chibi Robo 
It's a charming and a unique game that brings a tiny robot to life in a big world. I mean it's a quite known game I would say. As player you control the lovable chibi robo. They embark on a heartwarming adventure to help the struggling family. The game premise revolves around cleaning, interacting and solving puzzles and it's surprisingly addictive and engaging even. The mix of the household tasks, quirky characters and a touch of sci-fi creates an indulging atmosphere that is hard not to love. With adorable visuals and imaginative gameplay, it's a definitely quite fun game, but again, if the game is so real, mm, because we had some really banger games on this list. Muscle Marsh V. Again, something more mainstream here, and it's a game for Nintendo V. Muscle Marsh for the V is a wild and vague experiment that is hard to forget. This quirky game combines elements of rhythm, action and sheer absurdity to create something truly unique. And that's what are we all about. So, what do you do in this fun game? Well, you control flexing bodybuilders chasing a thief through various absurd scenarios. And because the game is played with motion sensors, it tests your reflexes and coordination in hilarious ways. The over-the-top character design and exaggerated animation add to the game's charm. Muscle March is a game that doesn't take itself seriously and that's sometimes just okay. This is a game we really needed the game in space. So do I really need to explain what do you do in this game? It's a simulation game for Nintendo Wii, written by Genesis Project and Nuance. The point of the game is to make the boy, well, hit the toilet so you don't mess around and hit the floor. I mean there is not a lot to talk about here and I don't wanna mess with YouTube and show you some uncensored footage, you know how this goes. So let's move to the next one. Mushroom Man The Spore Wars We have something trippy here. Uh huh. I just couldn't resist. This is a fascinating and imaginative world where the smallest creature take the center stage. This is an action adventure game that offers a unique perspective where you embody a mushroom sized guy. I was always a sucker for games where you play something little in the normal world. Toy Story for PlayStation 1 would be a great example. So, what is your goal? Where you are on the quest to save the fungal world. The game does possess charm, especially because of its quirky universe. Montcage. Montcage is a stunning vignette puzzle adventure developed by Optiolusion. The game takes place inside a mysterious cube, with each side of the cube housing a unique world. It is a quite unique game with a, such a nice and pleasant art style, accompanied with calm music which truly really sets you in the right mood for mind-bending puzzles. I mean, it's obvious that the game is based on optical illusions, in which you try to discover the hidden links to solve the puzzles. It's a short and neat game. Hatterful Boyfriend If you would give me only three words to describe this game, I would say it's a bird dating sim. Yes, you heard me right. But you play as a human which is accepted as the only human student at the prestigious St. Pigeo Nation Institute, a school for talented birds. You will roam the halls and try to find love in between the classes. I mean it's a dating sim, you know how these games are. And this game was quite popular because it was streamed like 10 years ago by every big YouTuber out there, including PewDiePie. Hello Charlotte. Hello, new puppeteer. Meet Charlotte, a puppet you will control. Meet her alien friends, maggot cat and a certain observer. Dive deep into the horrors of junk food, TV world, religion and romance novels from middle-aged women. Keep your puppet safe at all times. Or don't. Have fun dying. Yeah. A very morbid message. This game was developed by Eterne and released in September 2016. The game is something special. Hello Charlotte can be also considered as a psychological and surreal journey. You will step into the shoes of a character named Charlotte as she navigates a world filled with strange things, surreal landscapes and complex characters. The game's narrative unfolds through conversation and interactions that leave player down a path of uncovering the truth. What makes Hello Charlotte stand out is its ability to seamlessly blend disturbing and dark themes with themes with moments of unexpected humor. The visual style is something rather standard with RPG Maker games. But sometimes the game will show you some hand draw style with overall black and white aesthetics. 
accompanied sometimes with bright neon lights. It's a game not for everyone, you really need to try it out and see if the game is for you. Afraid of Monsters So the next one is a thing I always love to see, even if this list isn't about mods, but here we are, so why not to cover it? This mod was developed by Team Sykes Color, released in 2007. The game has a great atmosphere, it's almost like you're completely alone, but you're not alone. The game can also be a bit claustrophobic with their corridors, but the navigation can be problems sometimes. It's a mod you wanna try it out if you missed it somehow, but if you're into Half-Life modding, this is a quite popular mod out there. Cry of Fear has originally started out as a Half-Life mod in 2012, but then in 2013 it became a standalone release. It's a psychological single player but also a co-op horror game set in a deserted town filled with horrific creatures and nightmarish delusions. The story follows a troubled young man named Simon as he tries to make his way after getting caught in a car accident and waking up in an alley. However, as he tries to make his way to the train station to return home, he finds himself face to face with monsters and a mad doctor. And in the meantime, he is questioning his own sanity. You will roam through the city as he slowly descends into madness. The last entry was good, but this is in my opinion a bit better, mostly because of the newer engine. I mean if you like fear where paranormal things are happening, this is a quite nice game to get into. Crackle Cradle is a 2D side-scrolling platformer shooter developed by Foxtail, released back in 2010. So what's the deal with this game? Well this is definitely a very gory and disturbing game. That would be more appropriate to be in the disturbing video game Iceberg which I covered some while ago. In this game you can choose from 3 different characters to play. There is a short introduction via text, which I can't read because I don't speak Japanese. But after that you jump straight into the game, you have a pistol and go on, survive. There are many different monsters that you will encounter on your way. But that animations are so gory to the point I'm even impressed by where did I find the inspirations for them. You have been warned. Demonophobia. To not repeat myself, here is a part of my dark and disturbing video game Iceberg, which you can watch after this. So enjoy. Well, Demonophobia is a game where you play as a 14 year old girl named Sakuri who awakes in a librand in hell and now she needs to escape to not die. For whichever reason, she is naked most of the time. And I don't know why and what that brings to the game, but okay. By the way, they also included over 60 death animations in the game. You must fight your way through 7 floors, each with a boss and monsters. The game has a pretty basic story so to say. It is a game where the developer just wanted you to die and die again for no good reason. You're a helpless little girl trapped in a hell with vicious creatures. You are terrified and you don't know why this is happening. It's again a game where people are going insane and saying that this is the pinnacle of what the horror genre has to offer, where some say it's just pure crap. It's a try and error game where you need to die over and over again to see how the enemies behave so you can escape, because of course you can fight back. Is this a cheap game in that gameplay element or not? Decide for yourself. A great thing I need to admit is how they portrayed hell as a labyrinth instead of a lake of fire, because in this Concept, every character has his own demons to fight for the sins they have done in his life. That begs the question, did Sakura do something that she deserves to be in this place? Icicle Emerging from stasis into a world devastated by a nuclear conflict sounds like the worst day ever. But try to waking up in a frosty wasteland, naked, with only a tiny bicycle to rely on. Yeah, that's even worse. It's a quite interesting game where you can only move in one direction and that's forward, so you need to plan ahead. The game presentation is overall good and let's say it's very neat and nice with hand painted aesthetics and the atmosphere of the game captures very well a post-apocalyptic world. Thank you for making to this part of the video and everyone who did partake in this extra layer. Now it's the time to find a new project or series for my channel. 
If you have any wishes, state them down below. Again, if you find this video interesting or any good, leave a comment down below, share the video amongst your friends or just leave a like. That would be a huge help. Also, if you want to see more videos like this, hit that subscribe button. There are also things like my membership program on YouTube or Patreon if you want to take that extra mile to help the channel. And yeah, that's all from me now and I will see you in the next one. Snorky over and out.